Check one, two, one, two. Can you hear me, Paulie? All good? Well, big welcome to Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. Yes, and we're live for the very first time uh, in a long time for a multiple uh, race meeting, or, or a combined race meeting, I should say, of both the regional and extreme uh, national championship series racing. We're going to kick things off with Toyota Gazoo Racing's GR Cup. GR Cup is boosted this weekend with uh, a couple of extra cars thrown into the mix. The old Yarises have come to join us here in the early morning sunrise up towards West Bank Corner, or the old West Bank Corner now, of course, Leocorp, heading up into that corner. You can see uh, basically each of the categories out here today have got an opportunity to uh, get onto the circuit for 20 minutes. That 20 minutes basically starts as they roll out of pit lane. So the two pit lane areas that we've set up here at Kyle Army, of course, are the main grandstand and the main building's pit lane, which is where all our international competitors have been uh, placed in the past. And then, of course, if you've ever been to Kyle Army and seen a regional race day or one of the big race days that we've had in the past, there's a second set of pits. And that second set of pits is up at the top section of the circuit, at the old pit lane. So, uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a, a change up here for how we normally do things. And if you are joining us uh, on the live stream so early in the morning, a big good morning and welcome to you because we're about to go racing. And I hope you guys are going to enjoy all of the race action with us here today. It is a bumper full day today, that is for sure, at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. So look forward to entertainment coming. As I said, out of GR Cup, we've got in Best Camp Formula 1600s, Paybar Volkswagen Challenge, Sunbed ZX10R Masters Cup, the Astron Energy Polo Cup, BMW M Performance Racing Series, Triple One Sports and Saloons and Super Hatch. We've got South African Touring Cars in the SATC Super Cup. And we've got extreme supercars driven by Dunlop. That's the action that you're going to expect all day long as we get into this first heat of racing and uh, make our way down in towards uh, Crowthorpe for the first time. Now, look out for action amongst the uh, 86 League. That's basically the junior category drivers from Toyota Gazoo Racing. They will start things out and head down towards Turn 1 for the very first time. And as they go down towards Turn 1, you can see a little bit of chopping and changing. But out front, as expected, Darby Fanamava should be the man that everybody will be hunting down and trying to find an opportunity to, to beat here today. Behind that is the media challenge. The media challenge basically made up of the majority of our uh, normal competitors in the new Toyota Corollas and the old Toyota Yaris's. So Davi Fanamava, Nico Zafiris, they'll be fighting hard at the front end. Looks like a bit of a change up at the front end in the media side of things because uh, as they head down towards turn one, Hannes Fisser looks like he might have got the whole shot there. And just outgunned Sean Nurse, but Sean Nurse comes alongside him, coming up into Barbecue and Yuxke for the first time. Nurse with the green colours, and the orange colours there will be oof, around the outside. Yeah, nice bit of manoeuvring there. It's actually, uh, it uh, looks like it's, it could be the 89 car that's up there as well. So Alex Shahini is actually the car that uh, got to the front end there from Car Magazine. Out front, of course, it's uh, all about the 86 League. That's uh, the junior development drivers who've come through the process here with T Toyota Gazoo Racing. And had an opportunity to, of course, come through to the karting ranks and then step up into the Gazoo Racing 86 League. Uh, as you see, the hazard lights coming on those cars, showing you, as we always do, and as we always try and explain to people how these cars work, they do have all of the standard road-going option features on these cars. So uh, when those hazard lights come on, it means that the ABS system is kicked in, <coughs> and uh, the all-wheel drive cars now making their way up to the top as those rear-wheel drive cars are making their way down into the bowl. A little bit of a gap there between the 86 League and, of course, a chance to uh, see them get a little bit of a gap over the media challenge here in the Corollas and Yaris's as they head down in towards uh, that very, very tricky left-hander at the bottom of the mineshaft. It's an even more trickier triple left-hander at the top end. Three apexes at the top end of the circuit there. Sean Nurse hits the front. So Nurse has got to the front. And Shahini has dropped back down into what is now third place in that battle. Paul DeFoss in that mix as well. Nice little run. Oh, Shahini running a little wide though as he came out of Crocodiles. It's now through Cheetah to Ingwe, the final corner here at the circuit. Sean Nurse leaving things out there. And as you can see on his tail there, a bit of pressure coming on uh, Shahini's tail from Hannes Fissa. Uh, Mario D'Souza in the mix there as well. Good to see him stepping up back into this category. As I said, with the 86 league out front, that is our junior category. At the, the back of that, the media challenge and the uh, invited drivers for this weekend are sharing uh, the drives. A couple of them sharing uh, those Yaris's over the two heats of racing today. But our media challenge, of course, are in those black GR Racing Cup Corollas. At this point in time, we see them heading towards sunset. 
it's not really sunset here today at the moment it's sunrise so uh, the uh, rear view mirrors will be full of sun as they come through that very fast right hander and it uh, looks like Ryan Nyker losing a little bit of position there over the first couple laps he's dropped down to fifth place so a bit of work to do there for Nyker and it looks like it's uh, Satsaba Mashiga also with a bit of work to do not quite where he normally ends up out front though no worries at all for Dog van Amava he's got Saad Variawa and uh, now we missed Saad Variawa in the first race in Cape Town he wasn't involved in the 86 week so uh, he's now going to have to try and fend off and uh, try and uh, maybe change up his championship number one board from last year because remember last year he was in the Yaris's they changed up the Yaris's for the media this time and they've given the uh, junior drivers the 86 Toyotas which are rear wheel drive or rear wheel driven I should say as they uh, head up towards the top of the hill once again Nurse just uh, sorting things out there in terms of the media challenge Shahini starting to close him down coming up close and personal there along with him just behind Shahini is Paul DeFoss and Mario D'Souza could be uh, Machikazi he's down in 13th overall but it's about 7th overall in that media challenge in the background there between the GR Corollas and the Arises. Davi leads things out though over side Variawa as they come down into the final corner on their tail is Nico Zafiris he's going to try, to try and close things down if he can but uh, seems to be that sort of an equidistant gap there until you get to about uh, Ken Swartz and Setsaba Mashigo. Setsaba Mashigo, Ken Swartz and is that uh, Ryan Nyker? Yes, Ryan Nyker in the mix there as well. So Ryan Nyker having a good run there for fifth place. Fourth place coming up into shot now just behind this car. The 70 car, of course, is Nico Zafiris, but the car just behind him might get him in shot on the, re on the reverse angle. Yes, there we go. That's the man all the way from Bulawayo, Dylan Praji, having a fantastic outing in his first uh, run here with Toyota Gazoo Racing. The Zimbabwean doing a superb job down in Cape Town, finishing up in that top four overall. And now looking for a chance to do the same thing. He's fourth at the moment. Maybe he needs to find just a little bit of extra squirt in that machine if he can. To try and close the gap down on Zafiris and Variawa. Saad, at this stage though, has got no answer to Derby, as you can see, coming out of sunset. So Saad Variawa pushing as hard as he can to try and close that gap down on the leader Derby Fenamava, who of course took two victories in Cape Town. That's Ryan Nyker under a bit of pressure. Pressure's coming from Sichaba Mashigo. He needs he needs to get by. Sichaba Mashigo, remember, won the media challenge last year, so he's been give, gifted the opportunity to uh, make his way up into the, uh, the challenge now for what is the 86 league this year. And, uh, of course, if you've been following this, this series, it's a it's a massive input that Toyota has brought along to circuit racing in South Africa, starting two seasons ago, just with a couple of Yaris cars and a couple of 86s. Now we've got whole bunch of 86s, a whole bunch of Yaris's rejoining the party this weekend and of course so what we saw in Cape Town is the uh, introduction in the media challenge of the Toyota Corollas. The GR Corollas there, absolutely amazing to see them in full flight. Now so Chubb Mashigo applying pressure down into Crocodiles trying to find a way through there on Nyker. Ryan Nyker having a fantastic run so far and he's up into what is fifth place but just watching that gap close down as well between Saad and uh, Darby Funamava, first and second, also getting a little bit closer than what it has been all race long. So that's good to see. Remember, this is a 20-minute session, so we, we don't really work on laps. We've got to try and work on the 20 minutes, uh, you know, uh, being uh, or ending. And once that 20 minutes has ended, the flag will come out. So at this point in time, we're at uh, 3 minutes and 50 seconds. So looks uh, like a little bit more race action to come your way here for the first heat of the day. As I said. Lots of action still to come your way today. We started early this morning, and if you have joined us so early in the morning, a big welcome. Maybe it's, a, it's time for a bit of a coffee with us. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Tiny is in the house already in Cape Town, so watch out for that. If you're watching from Cape Town, you can uh, pick up, of course, on Tiny's pit box. I'm sure he's sharing the, uh, the live stream feed yet. So speaking of uh, live, well, it's getting real live, up close and personal there for the media side. Look at that, Shahini on the inside of Fissa. Looking to dive on uh, the man from Latville, but not quite able to get there. So Car Magazine is putting the pressure on to Latville. Sean Nurse out front, though, just soaking up that pressure. And then it looks like it might be Paul DeFoss and Mario D'Souza, first of the two Yarises, tucked in behind those Corollas. Behind that, it's Kumbi and then Yaka van Amava. So uh, not quite on the pace of these first five cars. First three seem to be uh, just equally matched in terms of position as well as power and uh, the uh, ability of the drivers 
but uh, keep an eye out on DeFoss and D'Souza. They might just uh, throw in something to just rattle the cages there of these Corollas out front. Corollas into his life. It's great to see that. Absolutely awesome to see the Yaris is back in the mix as well. And just boosting this field up into uh, what is now going to be a field of 18 cars in total. Down into the, down, well, down, the downhill section of the mine shaft, those guys are headed. So our leaders are already coming through crocodiles, heading up towards Cheetah and into Ingwe. <coughs> As they get up into Ingwe, of course, that's a, a tight little right hander that catches a couple of drivers out. Yesterday, caught out uh, one of the most uh, talented drivers in this field uh, of racing cars today and uh, racing bikes, of course. We have got ZX10 our Masters Cup that'll be here with us today, too. 11 and a half minutes completed as you can see as they go across the line there. So uh, still about nine minutes of race action to come your way. Breaking down into turn number one. Crowthorn corner 05 is Saad Variawa. He was the number one car last year when he won the junior category in this class. And that was in the Yaris's that are now back on track. A little bit of pressure coming onto the back end of Sachaba Mashigo there as well from Kent Swartz. Swartz finding some late race pace here. Looking for a chance possibly to dive through and find a way into uh, what would be now uh, sixth place on track if he can get ahead of Sachaba Mashigo. Pressure also coming onto the back end of Fissa and of Shahini. And looks like there could be a little bit of fun and games between those three as well as Paul DeFoss and Mario D'Souza have bridged that gap and got a lot closer to the Toyota Corollas. Here come the Corollas now out of sunset. Sunset now shows us Yaris's versus Corollas. Pretty evenly matched in terms of their uh, power output on these two cars. Just slightly different derivatives, of course, of the two Toyota brands that uh, GR Racing have brought to the party this year. Uh, Toyota Corollas have uh, sort of been gotten to grips with by our uh, media contingent this year. I'd like to see them all having a chance to get their uh, wears and tears out into the circuit. And as I said, basically you're looking at, you know, uh, a media challenge and uh, a junior category challenge because it's all the development drivers for Toyota Gazoo Racing that are out front. This is the battle for what is about fourth place going through the S's now. Here comes the first four. Actually, it's about sixth and seventh place, that battle we just saw. But lead cars for the media challenge head down into Crocodiles. The uh, Corollas, of course, are a six-speed manual. Um, and they have a 1.6 uh, three-cylinder engine. Uh, similar to sort of the Yaris uh, configuration, three-cylinder 1.6 turbo. Uh, about 200 kilowatts come out of these cars. And, of course, they're all-wheel drive. So uh, that's, uh, that's how close and evenly matched they are. And you can see just from the... The way that the Yaris's have now caught the back of the Corollas and are already in the mix there with the Corollas, just how evenly matched the cars are. As we've got about nine minutes of racing to go as they cross the line. The 86 is out front. When we get to see them, we'll go into the sort of setup of those cars. But here comes Shahini. Shahini diving on the inside and looking for a way through. And also inside now goes, oh, big move there from DeFoss. Paul DeFoss has got up as he got through on Fissa Fissa. Tries to come back at him though. Hannes Fissa being caught out there slightly, shuts the door though. Doesn't let him through. So a little bit of a chopping and changing there between Hannes Fisser and uh, Paul DeFoss. Opposite numbers there, 21 and 12. But uh, it's the, the 12 car that stays in numerical order for now. <coughs> Maintains still third place on track. But DeFoss is certainly putting pressure onto the back end. Here we go. Down towards Clubhouse. Sean Nurse having a fantastic run. Shahini is on his tail though. Alex Shahini would love to make his first victory at Kyle Army. Tatted to him yesterday and he was saying, you know, he wasn't quite up to pace, didn't quite have everything sorted out in his head and uh, had the opportunity given to him by Toyota this year to run in the car colors, car magazine colors there. But uh, to catch your nurse, you're going to have to have your wits about you because he's uh, certainly probably got a little bit more experience uh, than most of the other media drivers just behind him. And that's the reason why he was a double victor in Cape Town at the first round of this championship only a couple of weekends ago. Down the hill, waiting for them to come through the big left-hand sweep. 
and into crocodiles. It opens up massively here. The track widens to about three or four times the size of a normal circuit as they go down into crocodiles. The old bowl here at Kailami. Shahini not quite bridging that gap again. He got up close and personal with Sean Nurse, but I think it was just something where maybe Sean didn't quite get out of this final corner the right way. They're both late on the brakes into Ingwe Corner, the final corner. So it's Auto Trader versus Car Magazine as they come across the line and complete another lap. So if we just pan to the left hand side there slightly, you'll see probably about seven or so minutes of racing to go. Out front, do we have any changes? Possibly there. Yeah, the 93 car seems to be moved up slightly. And Dylan Praji now under a bit of pressure from uh, Ryan Nika. Nika and Sachaba Mashigo have found a way to close things down there on that 286 of Dylan Praji. So uh, the top two have got away. In fact, the top three even. Z Nico Zafiris have got away. Oh, that's Darby running slightly wide. Just caught that car getting onto the rumble strip. A little bit of a tighter line there. And looks like, oh yeah, also starting to get a bit wide is Nico Zafiris. So Zafiris in third place. Here comes the battle for fourth though. Look at this. Dylan Praji puts his car right in the middle of the track. Doesn't give any opportunity to Ryan Nike to possibly dive up his inside. So Chaba Machigo has dropped to the back of that pack. So there's still some work to do there for Machigo. Media Challenge winner last year now steps up into the 86 Development League. It's to run with the slightly probably quicker and sort of more race-weary, race-worthy uh, competitors in the 86 League. Take nothing away from our media boys and girls, but uh, I can tell you something. When you've got young carters thrown into some rear-wheel drive, uh, four-cylinder boxer engines at the 86's run, it's just uh, a whole nother ball game. Darby, he's kind of in a class of his own though, but with Saad coming back again, Saad Variawa will now realize that uh, he was not going to have it all his own way this season, unfortunately. And it looks like Darby is going to make it three out of three if he continues on his way, the way he's going at the moment, to try and hang on for a possibility of your three wins in a row. Two down at the Kilani International Raceway one here at Kyle Army, but he's still got five or so minutes to go just yeah, just over five minutes to go of race action still to come your way here for Toyota Kazoo Racing and the opening race of the day of a really bumper full race day if you haven't got to Kyle Army and you're watching on the live stream and you still want to make your way out here definitely do yourselves a favor come and join us here it's 200 bucks to get in and it's certainly worthwhile because you can get up close and personal with all of the cars there's two sets of pit lanes we're heading up towards the second one now. It'll just be on the left-hand side of uh, the shot right now. But as we go to the reverse angle, you'll get to see it uh, just on the right-hand side. So they are past the pit lane now. It's on the right-hand side of these cars. The pit entry is actually right there as they come through the, the left-right flick on Barbecue and Yuxke. And there you can see it just on the left of the shot. That's the top pits. Up at the top pits, of course, you've got Mobile One V8 Supercars, Paybar, Volkswagen Challenge. You've got a couple of the Triple One Sports and Saloons. And uh, Super Hatch competitors, they're all up top there. And then uh, when they come back down into the main pit building, of course, most of our national championship and challenge category competitors are down there. Do we have a change up here? Looks like we might see... No. Praji's hung on. So Dylan Praji hangs on for now, keeping Nika and Sachaba Mashigo. Mashigo, someone seems to be smoking slightly there. I think that was coming out of Ryan Nika's car, a little bit of smoke. Or was it Mashigo's car? It might be Mashigo's car. No, it's Mashigo's car. Mashigo's car smoking. The 777 car at the back there, unfortunately. Not uh, exactly. Could be some... Oh, actually, might, looks like it might be a bit of a brake issue there. And a red flag. Red flag out. Is it Alex Shahini that possibly had a problem? I think it might be. Shahini's dropped right out of the standings there. And I'm not quite sure where the action has taken place. We'll try and pick up on where it's gone wrong. But Alex Shahini was pushing hard to try and get there. But the red flag comes out which means that we're going to end this race a little bit earlier than expected. We've got double yellows. That's where the incident is. So if we uh, just get a pan to the right-hand side, we'll probably see where, where the issues are. It looks like it might be coming. Is it down in? It, it's down into Crowthorn. It's into Crowthorn. That's where the problem is. So uh, has Alex Shahini just run ever so slightly wide into Crowthorn Corner? Shahini could possibly the man be in trouble. Is it? We'll wait and see. He did drop completely out of the standings there on the timing monitor. That's why I'm assuming it's Alex, but uh, until we see exactly who it was, we'll have to wait and see who it is. The Corolla's coming in. The 86ers will be coming in first, led by race winner, uh, Darby Fanamava, Saad Variawa, and Nico Zafiris. Praji, I think, has hung on for uh, fourth place to beat out Ryan Nike and Sashaba Mashigo. Ken Swartz will make up the seven 
86ers. And then it was Sean Nurse, Alex Shahini, and Hannes Fosser. Hannes Fosser, I should say. And uh, the reason that they'll still be in the top three is because if a red flag comes out and uh, the race is stopped preliminary, um, they go back one lap. So even if Shahini did make a mistake and has gone off circuit and they've red flagged the race, he's possibly still going to get a chance of being classified into what would be second place in the media challenge in the Toyota Corollas. De Fost, De Souza, and is it Johan Sneijman are your top three in the Toyota Yaris Cup. And of course the media challenge there, as I said, one out by Sean Nurse, Alex Shahini, and Hannes Fisser, your top three. So that's how we think, that's how we start things here at Kyle Army. If you've just joined us on the live stream all around the world, a big welcome to you. I see uh, East London is in the house. They've woken up. Morning, Jody. Uh, Tiny's already been with us since the uh, race start. We've got a long day's racing ahead of us, though, guys. It's uh, lots of race action to come your way. As I said uh, earlier on, just picking up on the morning sessions. We've just done Gazoo Racing. We're going into Invest Chem Formula 1600s up next. Pay Bar Volkswagen Challenge. The Sunbed ZX 10R Masters Cup. Astron Energy Polo Cup. BMW M Performance Racing Series. That's the entire class. It's nearly 60 cars on track for that category. Triple One GT Sports and Saloons and the Super Hatches combined. We've got South African Touring Cars and the SATC Super Cup. We've got Extreme Supercars driven by Dunlop. That takes us to sort of about quarter past 11. And then we go into the second heats of the day for all of those categories, but also the second heats of the day or of, of the weekend for Mobile One V8 Supercars and DOE Formula V. They had their first two races yesterday. And we'll bring you those results, when we, of course, when we get into those, those category cars a bit later on. So that's how we stand here coming into the first part of the day's racing. And I can see uh, Jody's also sharing it to everybody else who lives in East London. He's basically shared the post on to the entire population of East London. But we appreciate that, Jodes. Thanks for that, mate. Always great to see uh, support from all around the world. And even if it's just here in sunny South Africa, it is a sunny morning here. At Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit, we're expecting the temperatures to get up to about 26 degrees Celsius today. So not too hot, which is quite nice for uh, race cars. Not quite lacquer for uh, race tyres. You need a little bit more pressure, a little bit more temperature on that. There is the reason for the red flag. Wow. Oh, that is a big moment there. The 12th car of Hannes Fissa it was. Not Alex Shahini. And if anybody uh, knows how to get a Toyota Corolla GR off a tyre barrier and possibly a catch fencing that would come into some serious uh, assistance right now how he got up there only he knows but uh, I know he's got an onboard camera on that car so uh, we will be putting this uh, production out later on about probably about three weeks time and uh, the Latville man certainly let that veal go a little bit wrong <laughs> I hope he's okay I'm sure he is uh, these cars are very well built and uh, of course the, the, the team behind Gazoo Racing including uh, Bucket List and Fast Developments will make sure that all the safety features on these cars are uh, certainly in the uh, correct positions that they need to be. I haven't seen Hannes around the car but it doesn't look like he's in the car anymore but that's uh, certainly not the way he would have liked to start his day. Parked up on the tyre barrier, up on the catch fencing so it looks like the tyre barriers and the catch fencing have certainly done the job that they were put in place for there. But of course it brings us to the end of uh, the first race of the day there. And just to run through it one more time. Darby van Amava winning out over Saad Variawa, Nikos Zafiris, Dylan Praji, Ryan Nyka, Sachaba Mashigo and Kent Swartz. Those are your top seven in the 86 league. Then it was Sean Nurse, Alex Shahini and Hannes Fisser. He will still be classified even though his car is stuck up on the crash barrier there. Uh, they were the top three in the media challenge. And then Paul DeFoss, Mario de Souza, and I would say Yanni, uh, Johan Sneijman, the top three in our uh, Yaris League for GR Cup. Yeah, just getting a little uh, insight there from our uh, director who, of course, called the race there for us, Claudia Audio. Johannes, uh, he just said to me, um, possibly maybe six rallying, eh? <laughs> Do that in a rally car, you're going to know all about it, though. But, uh, yeah, hope he's okay. 
It certainly looked like he was. Uh, the car is up on a very precarious position. But I think uh, other than that, it's all good. So now we just stand by for uh, them to clear that car. How they're going to do that is going to be pretty interesting. I know that they do have a... I think they've got a Manitou here, if I'm not mistaken. So they're going to have to try and make a plan to get the Manitou there to maybe lift that car off the crash barrier. I'm not quite sure where he went through the kitty litter though. I'm just looking to see. The kitty litter here is normally very good and can stop top uh, you know, top quality cars like the machinery that runs at the Kyle Army 9 hour in those GT3 spec Lambos and Porsches. But it uh, looks like he might just, uh, he might have to keep him there. I don't know if he's, I don't know if they're going to be able to get that car off. <laughs> I can hear my director in my ear having a good chuckle about it as well, thinking, how are we going to get that car off that crash barrier? Or are we going to just leave it there as a bit of a statue <laughs> for the race day? Because, yeah, that's not going to be an easy manoeuvre. That is for sure. And I, I'm not quite sure if anybody uh, other than Kyle Army may have a Manitou crane system to, to get that car off the barrier and maybe onto the back of the flatbed. Paul, while I'm here, uh, I don't know if you can hear me. I think you probably can. Uh, I just wanted to check. There's no way I can mute my headset. But uh, should I just double check this other mic for you as well while we're at it? Just to, in case anybody jumps in with us. Just testing, testing, one, two, three, four, mic two. There we go. Thank you for that, Paulie. As I said, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to mute myself if I have to mute myself. It is Toyota Gazoo Racing GR Cup and uh, <laughs> ended slightly differently to what we expected in terms of uh, race action. But uh, hopefully, as I said, Hannes Fisser is okay. And if that's the case, he uh, hope, he's just hoping that they can get that car off the crash barrier and back in the pit lane to get any repairs done to it in time. Uh, set up next, we go into the first part of our single-seater action. And it comes in the form of the Investcam Formula 1600s and Formula Ford Kents. And we'll run through that list as soon as they go through there. But I can tell you that Jagger Robertson was quickest in the Formula... 1600s and uh, Andrew Horn steps up on behalf of uh, Ian Schofield who unfortunately had a death in the family so we wish him and all the family all the very best and send out our condolences to uh, the Schofield family they unfortunately won't be here this weekend and of course that means that Andrew also will not be in the Sapphire car uh, which of course is a brand new South African Touring Car Championship for the BMW missing in action today but uh, suitably substituted by a multiple South African Super Car Champion and Karting Champion Michael Steven so look forward to that later on when we get into the first part of race action for the SA ATC Super Cup category see so yeah, see down there at Crowthorne having a good look going this is going to be fun. <laughs> How do we get that car off the fence? Um, I see Jacques climbing up there as well from Kyle Army Marshalls. He's going to sort of have a, a squizz or two uh, possibilities of finding a way of doing it. They may need to winch the car down and maybe drive it over the tyre barrier straight onto the flatbed. But it's a case of uh, whether or not they've got enough. Maybe they may going to need some manpower there as well, or even some lady power. Some of the lady marshals down there too, looking at this situation and going, "What do we do here?" 
if we had a Manitou, of course, it'd be an easy situation. They'd just uh, pull up there and use the crane system. But uh, there's no necessity, usually, for a crane at national championship like racing level to remove vehicles. I know they had a couple for the nine hour. But, uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's a whole nother ball game that we're looking at right there. Try and get that car sorted out. I would love to try and get Hannes <laughs> Fisser up to our studio here and uh, see whether or not he give us insight as to how he managed to back that car up into the position it's in. It does mean that we are going to be delayed slightly as well, which we really can't afford because uh, we're running quite a tight ship here today in terms of the race action. It's going to happen all day long. Uh, 13 classes. And with that, means it's kind of back-to-back -back race action all the way through the day. As I said, every single class has got exactly 20 minutes on circuit. So that's from rolling out of pit lane, warm-up lap, into as many race laps as they can get into before the uh, 20 minutes is up. The faster classes, of course, will probably get a little bit more laps in because of their ability to get around the track quicker. And the slower classes, as you can see there, uh, what did they complete? They completed six laps. They actually, got, they were on the seventh, but uh, had to take a lap back there with the red flag. So probably would have done, probably would have done eight laps uh, for the Toyota Kazoo Racing GR Cup. Yaris League and Yaris Cup. I'm going to send Rion a message actually from Toyota Gazoo Racing at the same time where we're killing some time here and see whether or not Hannes is okay. And if he is, I'm going to tell him to get his butt up here and come and tell us all about it. What actually went down getting towards uh, Growth Thorn Corner there. The voice one because it'll probably be easier, so listen to the voice. Good morning, Rian Esther Hazen from Toyota Gazoo Racing. This is Greg Maloney, the voice of choice. I'm sitting up at the uh, old Goodyear Tower, and uh, if there's a possibility, could you ask uh, a certain Hannes Fisser to pop up to our studio to have a little chat about his uh, precariously parked uh, machinery down at turn one, and uh, maybe just give us a little insight as to what happened in that one. If he can, you can send him straight up here and uh, we'll put him on, even if we're in the middle of a race, just to have a quick chat about uh, what went wrong. I'd appreciate that. Thanks, Ryan. Send. Send, send, send. Let's see if that gets through and possibly get him here. That'll be quite cool to find out. Directly from uh, the uh, Hannes' mouth as to what went wrong in turn one. It's not the first time someone's got it wrong in Turn 1. There's been a couple of big incidents in Turn 1 in the past year at Carl Army at uh, various race meetings that I've commentated on. But uh, that certainly is one of the oddest positions that a car's ended up at the end of uh, a crash in Turn 1 at Crowthorpe. So just a heads up in terms of uh, things that are happening, not only here at the circuit, but... Uh, other circuits around the country with uh, the Extreme Festival. It's a premier road show, of course, the, pro, the uh, circuit racing road show that goes all around the country. We're at Carl Army this weekend. But we've uh, also got big action coming up in uh, May for the regional side of things. That's at Swatkops. The national side of the Extreme Festival makes its way to Swatkops in May as well. It's the middle of May. So uh, do yourselves a favour and make sure you don't miss out on that one. It's on the 18th of May. The 11th of May, of course, is the regional side. We've got uh, a couple of competitors that will be uh, participating down at Samola. They're all here this weekend. And some of them even testing their cars here at the Extreme Festival to get them ready for the Samola Hill Climb. We go to the end of June where we head down to Quebeca for National Championship. Um, Extreme Festival, that's on the 29th, and then on the 8th of June, we're back at Swatkops for some more regional Extreme Festival action. So that's uh, heading up into the halfway stage of the year. Other big ones, of course, coming up um, at Swatkops, which is, of course, the main promoter of the Extreme Festival. We'll go next weekend. 
<coughs> I beg your pardon, two swipe ups for historic racing. It's the historic and inland championship. We've got the brunch run challenge on the 28th. That's the day after Freedom Day. Unfortunately, it falls on a Sunday, so we don't get an extra um, public holiday with that. Uh, there's also going to be some endurance racing, I believe, at Swat Cups on Freedom Day. So uh, make sure you check out that action. Uh, we've got um, Swat Cups. The big ones, of course, later on in the year will be none other than uh, the Top of the Hill Challenge. Uh, that Top of the Hill Challenge, of course, is on this 5th of October. And that's where we're going to run hill climb and time attack cars at Swat Cups for the first time. And running in the opposite direction to what they would normally do at Swat Cups. So that's uh, one to certainly have in your diaries if you've got them around you right now. Uh, the other big one uh, happens at Swat Cups. I'm just trying to get the date there. It's Swat Cups Annapolis, there it is, on the 20th of July. So 20 July is the other big one to have. Diaries, the Swat Cups Annapolis 500 miler they run there. So, an awesome, awesome time to be involved in motorsport when you see these kind of events being put up all around the country. Uh, Paulie, are you there?
Well, it certainly looks and sounds like we might have some cars making their way to the circuit again. And I'm hoping that they've got that car out of harm's way at Crowthorn. If they did, it'll be an amazing job from our race control and Kyle Army Marshals to do that. Uh, it'll be Investcam Formula Fords and the Investcam Formula 1600s that will be making them into the circuit right now with Jagger Robertson on pole position alongside Casey Ensel Smith. That's how they'll be rolling around to take up their position. Remember, as they roll out of pit lane, that 20 minutes starts. So they can't afford to sort of waste too much time. Otherwise, they lose out on race time that's uh, available to them for the 20 minutes of race action that each class is provided here today. Um, we went through Crowthorn, so I would assume that they've either moved that car off the tyre barrier somehow, or they've just left it there as a statue to remind everybody of what not to do down at Crowthorn. They have got it off the barrier according to Paul in my ear. So that's an amazing job there from the Kalami Marshals, as always. And I know that uh, a couple of guys out there that have been sending me some information from their various points on track in between saying that they're working hard they've been working hard all weekend uh, started on Thursday remember with uh, our practice and a couple of uh, sessions for each of these categories yesterday was all about qualifying in a final practice session and today is all about race action so it is Jagger Robinson Casey Enzo Smith Caraba Malamela and Jason Kutsia making up the first two rows of the grid then you've got Sia Bongo Monkonkwana, Alex Foss and Nicholas Van Wheelie. Shrinaru not quite getting to grips with things yesterday. There's a little bit of issues there as well coming out of Renzo Ribeiro and Jörn Holzhausen. Storm Lanfier. The back of them with uh, Mikko Third note behind that. Uh, it's uh, a slightly different look and feel to the Investcam car. The front end of uh, the Formula Ford Kents with Andrew Horn piloting his car to pole position it's usually driven by of course Ian Schofield but uh, as I mentioned earlier on a massive uh, condolence to all of the Schofield family for uh, the death in the family and the reason why Ian and Andrew are not here this weekend. Andrew Horn will take over those duties alongside him will be Alan Mayer, Rick Morrison, Ron Van Wheely, Duncan Foss and Graham Hepburn and that's the fight expected in the Kent class just a bit further back in uh, proceedings there so yeah it is the nine car of Ian Schofield and Andrew Horn will be piloting at the front of the Kents. That is Nicholas Van Wheelie in the magnificent paint hardware machine. We'll try and get up from seventh place on the grid. Slightly higher up than what you would well, like to be slightly higher up than what he is right now, that's for sure. They come to the line and form up. We go racing literally as everybody's formed up here. No messing around with uh, grid uh, antics and rolly babes, etc, etc. None of that will be happening today. It's uh, literally round from their uh, start positions in the main pit building on the right hand side there. Warm up lap, form up, and we go into race start procedure. So five minutes, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, and five seconds. It's usually within the space of about 30 seconds that though. So there you go. See, the clock is ticking. We are sitting at about... 15 minutes to go. So, red flag at the front, green flag at the back. Two minute board goes up. And we stand by for race action. Is it going to be a fight? I expected, I think it is going to be one between Casey Enzo Smith, Jagger Robertson, Caraba Malamela, and Jason Kutsia. Sia Bongamonkanquana will certainly be looking to try and get into that mix with 15 and a half minutes to go. We're about to go racing. Cape Town looks like he's been working on those. So Jagger leads down into turn one by the looks of it. As they get off the line and head through the little kink towards turn one, Crowthorn corner. Van Wheelie goes side by side with Foss as they come down onto the breaking point. And it is Jagger Robinson who holds shots. Karaba Malamela gets up one place. He sneaks just ahead there of Casey and Smith. Sia Bongo Monconcuana's had a good start as well. Looks like he's slotted up into what is now fourth place. Malamela is second and already pressure coming from Jason Kutsia. Gets up close and personal, nearly a little bit of a touch between the two of them coming out of uh, barbecue. Onto the back straight away now and into sunset for the first time. 
Looking at the Ken class, Horn Dog looks like he's hung on. So Andrew Horn hung on to stay just ahead there of that category. Alan Mayer was right there with him. But you can see the mix-up here. As there's a big dive on the inside from the five car of Alex Voss. Trying to find a way through early on. And Jason Katia fo forces him wide onto the rumble strip ever so slightly. So uh, Jason Katia under big pressure there from Voss. And they're going to the S's for lap one. Behind him, Storm Lanfia. Lanfia's got Van Wheely on his tail. Start coming out of Jürgen Holzhausen as well. Watch out for him in the Safair car. He, of course, took over that Safair car from Andrew Schofield. With Schofield moving up into the South African Touring Car Championship in a BMW. Two little fights there. Andrew Hall pulling away slightly now as well at the front end of the Kent class. You'll see him just behind these three. There he comes. Down the hill towards Crocodiles for the first time. Van Weedy going very wide. Can maybe come, come back on a... No, there's a problem there. Van wheelie has got a big issue. He ran wide and stayed wide. So we expect to see possibilities of uh, Nicholas Van Weedy maybe peeling into pit lane. Unless he's been able to sort out the issue. No, he stays out. He stays out, but he loses that position there to Lanfia and to Renzo Rivera. Oh, from Jason Kutsia and Alex Foss. Shrin Naidu has made his way up slightly as well up into what is now 6th place just ahead of Lanfia and uh, Van Wheelie. Holtzhausen and Ribeiro behind that. That's your Formula 1600 field heading up onto the back straightaway. <coughs> Make your pardon. As they head into Sunset Corner. That's all the Formula 1600s. We might just get a shot. There you go. Andrew Horn, yellow helmet in Schofield's car, leading out the Kent class. That's the original Formula Ford Kent. Oi, Foss running wide out of Sunset. Just setting things up there for a possibility for uh, Shrin Naidu to sneak through. And I think Shrin's going to take that opportunity. Heading into the S's, he's got the inside line. Can he make it stick? Yes, he can. So Shrin Naidu gets through on Foss after he made a small mistake coming out of Sunset unsettled the car slightly also maybe just rattled him a little bit opened up the door and uh, yeah Shrin said thanks I'll have that so Shrin Naidu makes up a place a bit of changing as well there possibly coming from is that uh, Storm Lanfia yes it is Lanfia now trying to put the pressure on Talix Foss Jagger out front exactly where we expected him to be he was fastest basically all week long so far Malamela under a bit of pressure now from Casey Enzo Smith that you can see a bit of a fight on as well become coming a little bit closer between Monk and Guana and could see it. as they head towards turn one on the timing monitor. Lanfia not quite there yet. But he's still applying the pressure onto the back end of Foss. Bit of pressure now coming on Malamela from Casey Enzo Smith. And a bit of pressure from Kutsia on Monkonkwana as well. So three-way fight for what is second and third and then fourth and fifth on track. And that Jürgen Holtzhaus and Renzo Ribeiro also in a two-way fight. They're currently fighting for just inside the top ten. Looking for single digits between those two. Kutsia comes out of clubhouse corner pretty rapidly. Close that gap down. And also try and find a way through, which is not an easy thing to do on Tia Bongo Bongo Bongo. He's good here at Kyle Army. Van Wheely now in the mix with Lanfia. Can he find a way through? They come up onto the shelf up at Leokop. Triple apex corner here. Trying to double the corner though. Missed the one apex completely. And then it's a long flat out and uh, everything she's got through the sweep. Heading towards Crocodiles. Here we go. Inside line. Great move from Lanfia. Foss is going to have Lanfia on the inside the two race driver SA and Investigam cars were side by side there and eventually Lanfia decided no, not this time backed out of it 
tucked in behind Alex Foss and will follow him through. Robertson goes quickest. Robertson with a 52-4. 52-8 out of Malamela. 52-9s out of Siobonga Monkokwana. And then 53s coming out of Jason Latia. He won't be happy with that. Took his first victory in this category in his home circuit only a couple of weekends ago. And now sitting down in what is fifth, fourth, fourth and fifth place battle is not where Jason Katsia wants to be. Looks like we're not picking up on one of the cars in that one. Manamela, Siobonga, Monkonkwana, Katsia, Shrinadu. So it's Casey Ensor Smith that's not coming up on the timing monitor. He's there in uh, the third spot. Maybe a bit of an issue there with his transponder, but he's certainly there in that... Uh, or mint, minty style coloured car. There it is. In blue. The light blue machine there in third place just behind Malamela. They might have to just start uh, putting him on manually onto the timing. As they come out of Leo Cup one more time, heading down the hill, it's Robertson that they're going to catch. And he was quickest on the last pass for the last two laps. So Jagger getting into his own, getting into a rhythm. Man who's had uh, quite a bit of experience considering his age in terms of race cars. He's uh, driven almost every kind of race car you can imagine. And uh, decided this year to uh, have a go at single seaters, official single seaters. That uh, in extension is not considered a single seater because there's only one seat in it, but it's not really a single seater like we see in front of us right now with uh, wings and slicks. engines Maria, the fifth some fantastic race battles and that'll be of course in action next weekend at SWAT Cups in an historic championship making their way to SWAT Cups International next weekend Jag will probably be in uh, one of those as well along with his fellow family member Devin Robertson the first outing for those cars in fact it was Tyler Robertson uh, not related in any way and she'll be in action today in the Astron Energy Polo Cup but um, she took the first couple of victories in that class. Jagger hangs on. KC looking for a way through, but can't find it. Jason's lost ground now. Looks like uh, could see us looking to have an answer here to Monk and Kwan's pace on this. He can find something special over the next couple of laps. So Jagger from Caraba Mela Mela. It's a 52-3 now. And Jagger Robertson sets up on that last pass to go even quicker. So every time he crosses the line, as these tyres come into their own, you can see them finding a bit of race temperature now, despite it only sort of being about 13 degrees Celsius here at uh, Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit at the moment, which means you've got track temperatures probably about 20 degrees Celsius. And uh, that's not ideal to try and get heat into the rubber, but uh, take nothing away from the uh, attempts of these boys and their uh, chances of getting the maximum use and maximum mobility out of those tyres. Casey Ensor Smith actually was quickest on the last pass, so he's decided to turn the wick up slightly, which is also working. The timekeeper's up to say to him, yeah, there's, uh, there's another car we need to tick up as we go through there. That's Renzo Ribeiro in the Metal Use Spares machine. Currently sitting down in uh, 12th overall. Remember, it's his rookie season, so still quite a lot to learn there for Renz. be a man to watch out for in the in the future. Speaking of watching out, let's watch out for a move, move here from Kutsia. Sneaking up the inside of Sia Bongo Monkokwana and up in the fourth. So Sia opened up the door, but it was a good run coming out of the final corner then, and a bit of slipstreaming that happened there with uh, Jason Kutsia to find a way through on Sia. Can he return the favour now? They head towards uh, Sunset Corner. Sitting just yet, still on the rise. From my right hand shoulder. And sort of be just behind these cars as they go down towards the S's. So I guess still maintaining a about two and a half second gap over Caraba. Lamela maintains about two seconds as well over K. 
Casey Ensel Smith, but uh, that uh, gap could come down now in the latter part of the race. We're watching Ewan Holzhausen just behind the Calbusade note. Enzo Ribeiro just behind him. The battle of the rookies of the class there at the back end. And that would be for 10, 11, and 12th place overall. Haven't seen much of Andrew Horn, but of course, if he's uh, out front, I'm not quite sure. Maybe Graham Hepburn, who did have some problems yesterday, had to take the car all the way back to uh, Alberton to have a bit of a repair work done on the back end of the car. He'd be the only man to give Andrew Horn a run for his money in this class, I think. Yeah, Carl Army. Oh, flags out. Okay, I was going to say. Uh, how much time do we have left? We don't have any more time. Because, uh, the flag is out for 20 minutes and have passed. Jagger Robertson to take the first victory of the day for the best camera for the second beating Casey and so Smith to the line quickest again on that last lap down to 51-9 Casey and so Smith Austin Garcia in fourth Kwana in five and Shri Nadu just ahead of Nick Van Wheelie Alex Foss and Storm Lanfia and then Ewan Holtzhausen will make up the top ten for the best camp for the 1600s We've got the Ken class to come to the line, of course. Andrew Horn, Graham Hepburn. There he comes. Horn Dog heading into the final corner there of uh, Ingwe. As he crosses the line, he's got quite a big margin over the rest of the pack of those uh, Ken category cars. Which ending up ahead of Graham Hepburn, and you can see Hepburn is still with a little bit of smoke coming out of the back of that car. Hepburn beats up Rick Morris and then it's Duncan Foss and Ronald Van Wheelie who will take the top five honours for the Kent category for the first race of our two single-seater categories here today. We've actually got three of them if you, if you really want to be pedantic. It's uh, Formula 1600s, Formula 4 Kents and a bit later on the second heat of DOE Formula V. Up next we're going to pay bar Volkswagen Challenge. That's going to be interesting to see how they wrap things up on the Carl Army Grand Prix circuit because usually classes A, B and C in Pay Bar Volkswagen Challenge are split but of course with the big circuit and the amount of cars that you're able to put onto the track we've got classes A, B and C starting together and there's also a couple of experimental class X cars which uh, the organizing body and um, committee of Paybar Volkswagen Challenge are playing around with, seeing whether or not they can uh, maybe just change things up ever so slightly in the way things are done here in Paybar Volkswagen Challenge. Hoya Moira, Moira, thanks for the coffee, good to see you here, big uh, clean up from the marshals being uh, also shouted out there from Moira and I've got to say once again a massive uh, thanks to the marshals there for a great job in removing Hannes Fisser's car off the tyre barrier. If you haven't seen it yet, remember what you can do with our live stream feed is that you can stop it right now and you can rewind and go and see what happened in the first race of the day there with the, the Gazoo Racing GR Cup. And I have sent a message down to Rion Esterhazen from Toyota and we also tried to get our camera guy in pit lane to see if he can find Hannes. And once we've got him, maybe get him up here for a quick uh, chat to find out exactly what went wrong to um, his Toyota Corolla GR as it ended up on top of the tyre barrier up against that catch fencing which you can see just on the left hand side of your shot so to park a car up there takes some skills and uh, the Latville man certainly uh, showed us he has some of those skills pay bar Volkswagen Challenger up next they will be waiting I think in the pre-race area which is up at the top pit lane and we'll see them roll out shortly and be back with action on track here at Carl Army Grand Prix Circuit for the Extreme Festival of Motorsport
So it's Paypal Fox fucking Challenge who are back on track now for their first heat of the day. And if we look at the way things uh, turned out in terms of qualifying, Wayne Masters, Bevan Masters on the front row, ahead of Dean Ross and Miguel Diaz. Mighty Fana, Rory Atkinson, and Mike Baglia, Luigi Ferro, Stuart Mack, and Mo Carodia. A couple of guys that you're going to hear uh, throughout the day in both classes of the Volkswagen side of things. Paybar Volkswagen Challenge and the Astron Energy Polo Cup. We'll see a couple of drivers uh, having uh, four heats of racing today. Not in the same cars, of course. These uh, Paybar Volkswagen Challenge cars are not the same cars that they run in the Astron Energy Polo Cup. But a couple of the drivers that are involved in the Paybar Volkswagen Challenge run in the Masters side of what is Astron Energy's first outing in the Extreme Festival as the headline sponsors of Polo Cup. Rory Atkinson was actually quickest yesterday in qualifying, but he, of course, is running in an X-Class car. So uh, the X-Class cars that are in mixed here with Class A are not scoring points today. They are literally just out there for some uh, experimentation to see how they're going to be changing up the, the front end of Paybar Volkswagen Challenge in the future. Got some information yesterday from um, the uh, powers that be that, of course, are behind the scenes for uh, Paybar Volkswagen Challenge, saying that uh, any of the Class X competitors that you see on track, which will also include Luigi Ferro and Mike Bobaglia, will not be scoring points in Class A. They are just Class X cars in the mix, which they are, uh, as I said, playing around with in terms of uh, setup and how the, the future of this category is going to look in the very near future. So once they've got all those ramifications and uh, settings done on the new cars, they will then publish, of course, a, a new set of rules that allow those cars to be the front end of what would then become Class A. Car to watch out for as well, which had some problems yesterday, will be Ian Walker in the Mellow Velo and Cycles United machine. He had uh, a big crash in his practice session yesterday. He had to take it back to his uh, workshop. Uh, overnight work has got uh, the stalker back on track I've got a car pulled to the left hand side of the circuit there as well so somebody with a problem on the start line as they come to take up their positions now and you can see uh, as always class A, B and C should have about a uh, one row of the grid gap between themselves so uh, they do start slightly staggered it's about 10 seconds between each of the classes but you can see class A, B and C running almost to the back end of the track and around Ingwe Corner. Uh, I know that'll probably happen in the BMW M Performance Racing Series later on. We'll probably see cars around the corner for uh, the start. Two minute board changes to one. And as they're doing this, of course the time is ticking on the left hand side there. They are running out of race time. Looks like they might have about 15 minutes or so to play with as well. So look for about six to eight laps of race action coming away now from the first heat of paybar volkswagen challenge lights on in here we go lights out here we go for the first time that's the first part of the start and it's class a that heads down towards turn one about a 10 second gap we'll see class b head off and down towards uh turn one for the first time as i said watch out for uh, ian walker coming from the back of the pack he uh, didn't qualify yesterday so he's gonna have to do a lot of work to get through on biggest field in this this class class a is a very strong field but there's slightly more cars involved in class b as uh, class c now get off the line and head down towards turn one so that you're going to keep it we'll try and keep an eye out on all the action between each of the classes out on circuit as i said parked on the sideline but uh, it looks like it's uh, got going again or it's just been uh, moved it's it could have been walker Ian Walker right at the back there, having uh, not get, got a great start to the weekend, but uh, just getting a shot of him heading out of uh, Crowthorne. That's the mid-pack there of Class B as they head down, as Class A are already out of clubhouse towards the S's. It's Masters who leads things out. It looks like it might be Dale who's uh, moved up, oh, I think, or possibly is that Rory Atkinson. I think it might be Rory Atkinson in Chris Dale's car. Have a look and see at that one. Yeah, I think that's exactly what the case is there. So uh, as they head up towards uh, the top of the hill, there's a move from Wolford on the inside. 
Josh Wilford, of course, joining this class. Good to see the young Carter now stepping up into a saloon car. He's side by side with uh, Piazza Musso. So Sharice Piazza Musso just uh, coming side by side there with uh, Josh Wilford. Nice to see that as well. Makarodia, slightly different version of the Polo there. He's in the Polo Classic, of course, as opposed to the uh, hatchback version. I stand to be corrected, but I'm just waiting for the timing monitor to correct itself. Ross being eaten up as they go into Cheetah Corner there, side by side. One was Bob Aglia, the other I think was Ferro that went left and right of him. The X3 car is uh, well, it's not according to the numbers I've got on the board here, but uh, needless to say, there is an X3 there up in second place. Stuart Mack will possibly lead out Class B. Does they come across the line? Yes, he does. So Mack leads out Class B. It's Masters from that X3 machine, and I think that's Rory Atkinson in second, yes. Although it says X3, it should be number 15 on the side of the car. Which is probably why they've got a slightly different maneuver. Yeah, the X3 car there of Rory Atkinson, remember, is the experimental car. Fighting with Masters and Masters. So Bevan and Wayne are in a bit of a fight of their own there. Stelio Nusias in second with Corodia on his tail. So Mo Corodia in the uh, classic polo. Trying to find a way to close things down there on Mac. Is that uh, Shrin Rajpal? Yeah, Rajpal up ahead of Lessing. Anthony Lessing, ex superbike rider, having a super run. He's uh, up into the top five or six of Class B. Bob Aglia fighting with Mighty Mfana and Luigi Ferro. And then it's Miguel Diaz behind them. That is currently for about five, six, and seventh place on track. As they head to the top of the hill. Wayne Moss is under pressure now. As he goes inside of Leokop. His brother Bevan trying to go inside of Rory Atkinson as they come out of Leokop and down onto the mine shaft. The par car parked on the inside of the S's there by the looks of things as well. Someone's had a bit of an issue there in the first lap. I think it might be Adrian De Beer. Adrian De Beer parked on the sideline there. Class B starting to heat up a bit in the mid-pack. Ethan could see it trying to make up some ground. Not quite where he wants to be, that is for sure. Peterson behind Zafirio there as they come through the S's. Zafirio's got Gossman just ahead of him. And then you've got uh, is that Tate. Yeah, Tate just in the mix there as well. They line up just behind that. So it's look, battles all the way through this class, really. It's what we expect to see in Payball Volkswagen Challenge. Guys of similar abilities and similar lap times there is confirmation of the 11 car Adrian De Beer trying to get it going again he's just on the exit of the second S he was uh, on the entrance of the first S earlier on but looks like he moved slightly forward uh, from that first position he was in we spotted him on the sideline Mighty Mfana trying to close that gap down for what is fourth place battle this is the first three cars on track Two Class A competitors in Bevan and Wayne Masters. And uh, green flags waving down into Sunset, just telling them whatever the issue is has now been sorted. There might have been a problem at Sunset Corner or possibly at Clubhouse. Maybe even up here into Yuxke. It's a big field of cars out there. Not the biggest one yet. The biggest one will come later on. That's Stalker's car, I think, parked on the sideline there. So Ian Walker's weekend has gone from bad to worse unfortunately there for Ian Walker hasn't quite worked out for him that's for sure but Masters leads out over Atkinson Bevan Masters is actually fastest on track in third and then we see this fight heading down towards Sunset top three are out of uh, Leokop heading down the mine shaft Raj Paul trying to close things down there on Karodia Rodia hasn't quite got the gap just yet now as he looks up the road. Oh, he's got uh, Lessing on his tail. And a little bit of maneuvering happening there coming out of Shrin Rajpal as well. Try and find a way through there on the Fast 5 Motorsport car. As I said, nice to see a slightly different version of the Polos out there compared to all of the hatches that are fighting hard. Judd Berthold. Tate just up the road there as well. Chris Tate having a 
last run here in Pay by Volkswagen Challenge. Shuttle cars coming through there, the 117 machine, or 177 was Nicole uh, Peterson, or possibly that might have been Cody Peterson with some pro some problems there. Um, I think it actually was Cody Peterson, as opposed to the 177 of Nicole Lombard. Another lap completed here, Wayne Masters continues to lead things out over Atkinson and Bevan. And it's uh, the sort of fight we're expecting even more out of Stuart Mack. Stelio Lucio, Smoke Corodia, Shrin Raj, Paul Class B at this point led out by Mac. Here comes Corodia trying to come up the inside and find a way through on Stelio. And does so. So Stelio Lucio drops down to third place in Class B. Raj Paul closes in on him as they head towards Barbecue and Yuxke. So the classic polo up into second place. Sharice Piazza Musso and Lessing coming along for the ride, not too far behind them. Ethan could see it in no man's land right now. He's pulled slightly away there from Wolford, Tanane Kube and Diaval Turon, who are fighting for 15, 16, and 17th place. Oh, sideways there from uh, Stilio. Trying to find uh, some place to uh, get back ahead of that Fast Five Volkswagen Polo Classic. That's a miss on Lessing just behind that waiting for something to go wrong. As they come through the S's, just looking to see him probably on the right hand side if he is still there. Uh, Adrian De Beer, unfortunately out early on along with Ian Walker. Lock up of the brakes up into Leokop. And Skorodi is having to go defensive to keep out the intentions being shown there. Uh, his closest rival, Shrim Rajpal. Bevan now ahead of Wayne. Wayne has made a mistake somewhere on track. And comes across the line with now Rory Atkinson leading things out. Remember Atkinson, as I said, is in a Class X car, so it's an experimental machine that he's piloting today. Won't score points in Class A, but uh, certainly he's got to the front end. It's the same car that Chris Dale piloted in the first round of this championship. So uh, I'm quite sure why Chris is not here today. Uh, Rory Atkinson being given the duties to get those new cars sorted out along with uh, Luigi Ferro and Mike Bobaglia. Oh, the class X class. Class B across the line again with Max still ahead of Mo Corodia now ahead of Stelio Nusios. And then it's uh, Shrin Rajpal, Sharice Piazza Musso has moved up one place as well, getting through there on Lessing. Tony Lessing trying to come back at the uh, lady driver able to do that just yet behind that Josh Wolford having a fantastic run in 15th ahead of Tanane Kube and Diaval Teron quite a long way back but I would say possibly going to be looking at I'm just trying to pick up on there possibly is it Gossman who will be leading out Class C yes it is Andy Gossman down in 22nd place leading out Class C at this stage difficult to pick up on all the uh, classes today because of the action that's happening, of course, in the classes. We normally have some time to flick between all three when they are split, but it's not easy to do when you've got... Uh, there we go, there we go. First time we're going to see the uh, Class C competitors having some fun and games of their own. Yes, it is Gossman. So Gossman just ahead there and uh, trying to stay out of harm's way. And harm's way coming in the form of Michael Zafirio, Chris Tate and Judd Bertold. So we did see them a bit earlier on, but we only saw them from the rear end. Then it's Philip Cruiser. He's the man, of course, who told me all the information about that Class X experimental class for this weekend. And as Gossman comes out of sunset, he continues to uh, keep out the fight from Zafiro, Tate and Berthold. Those three all looking for a chance to be on the top step of the podium, at least for Class C in uh, Volkswagen Challenge. Atkinson with about four minutes of racing to go. We'll be looking to stay at the front end ahead of Bevan and Wayne. 
Won't be scoring points, as I said, but uh, needless to say, that's not a problem. As long as he's taking race victories, he'll still maintain his confidence. That's uh, taken him to a couple of titles in this class in the past. There he is, out of sunset. Coming up on the 117 there, I think that's of Peterson. And then as they come out of Clubhouse Corner, Masters and Masters fighting for what is going to be the win in Class A. At this stage, Bevan with the advantage, the CPS Warehouse car. Ahead now of the Performance Masters Polo. Masters uh, in second there, Wayne still with some work to do as he's on pole for the Masters category of uh, Astron Energy Polo Cup later on. Looks like he's going to get victory done here. Gal Diaz and Mariam Fana at the back end there of what is about 7th or 8th place for Class B. Nice little fight between the two of them though as they head out of uh, Leokop. Michael Zafiria putting a little bit more pressure now onto Gossman. But in doing so, running wide, maybe just uh, compromising his drive out of Crowthorne. Heading towards what is uh, Barbecue and Yuxke. And yes, runs wide again. And the reason for that is because Chris Tate is putting him under massive pressure. Chad Bertold waiting to pick up the pieces. If something goes wrong there. Ferrer and Bobaglia as the flag comes out. So it is going to be Rory Atkinson for the win. But of course he doesn't score points in that Class X car. So that means Bevan Masters will look to take the victory and does so. Ahead of Wayne Masters for the victory in Class A. Class B, it's all about uh, Stuart Mack, who's gone across the line there to beat out Corodia and Stelio. And this is Class C. Oh, here they come, in fact. Class B still coming to the line. Thought they might have gone across the line, but not just yet. Here comes Mack to the line now for the flag. Corodia's pulled slightly away there from Stelio. Oh, and here comes Rajbol. Shrin might give uh, Stelio a run to the line. Does he? No, not quite. In the slipstream, but not able to use it to get across the line. And, uh, up one place on that final lap. So Class B goes across the line there with the uh, win going to Stuart Macaroni in second, Stelio in third, hanging on. Here comes Class C down towards Crocodile for the last time. Michael Zafiro looking for a way now. Two corners to go. Can he get anywhere near Gossman? Maybe to have a pounce into that final corner. Tate goes a little wide, even wider from Judd. Judd Bertold running very wide out of Crocodile's back nicely now as they cut into Cheetah towards Ingwe. Cars rolling down into pit lane. Of course at the top pits is where they are as we wait to see Class C heading to the line. Here they come and there's no change. So first four there. Finishing up with Gossman ahead of Zafira. Zafira ahead of Tate. Tate ahead of Bert. Bert on the bigger bot as uh, he finishes up ahead of Philip Cruiser and wraps up the first heat. Hey ball. So a nice run there from those guys and girls. But, uh, of course, uh, still some race action to come your way now. And uh, the next part of the day's racing, of course, we head to the two-wheelers. It's Sunbet ZX and Isle Masters Cup. And they'll be coming out of the main pits. And uh, lining up, I think, at the end of the pit lane as well. Paulie, I'm not quite sure if they spoke to you yesterday. But uh, I believe they might be uh, rolling to the end of pit lane a little earlier than expected. And uh, maybe just... Uh, this shot here, we might be able to get um, a shot of all the ZX-10R Masters Cup riders parked in uh, unison as a little uh, tribute to Peter DeFoss who, uh, and Hannes, of course, who have been involved in this series right from the word go, who unfortunately lost their mom uh, on Thursday. So uh, big condolences going out to the DeFoss family as uh, Sunbet ZX-10R Masters Cup will be making their way onto the track shortly. We'll uh, see if we can get that shot for you. But other than that, we'll be back shortly with action here from the Extreme Festival of Motorsport. Regional and Nationals combined at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit.
The next in our Masters Cup riders onto track. The first bit of two wheeled action for the day. Only two wheelers out there, of course, the premier class in motorcycle racing in the country. Incredible to see you know, steady riders on the grid this weekend. To see the championship battle raging here. Some ground to be made up after that man there, Kinsella, was so dominant in Cape Town. Despite a big off, in a big crash down towards uh, Turn 5, Cape Town corner. And even with that big crash, still got back up onto the bike and managed to take two victories on the day. So uh, the King Price, Kawasaki, still in with a chance of uh, leading this championship before we uh, get into race action proper on circuit. It's uh, ZX Tenor Masters Cup. Not on track right now. Getting their warm up done. And if they uh, get around quick enough, they might be able to get a couple more laps in compared to everybody else. Because uh, uh, the big cars, the uh, Celebrant Touring cars, and the Super Cars, and the uh, Mobile One V8 Super Cars, and the bikes all probably get a couple of extra laps in due to the fact that they can lap slightly quicker than the other saloon car and single-seater categories that are here. Seller quickest by almost a second. So uh, certainly the man to catch this weekend will be Clint Seller. But Jason Lamb, Trevor Westman, Damien Purificati and Adrian van Dalen in for the chance of a big fight for what would be second place on track. Graham Van Bredaar didn't quite have it all his own way. They were battling yesterday with a of issues on that motorcycle with a bench chassis according to uh, Peter Lubbs Kachny of course who's the man who helps out with uh, the setup on that motorcycle and uh, they try to try and get it as straight as possible after Graham had a big crash of course also down in Cape Town corner at the first round of the extreme festivals a couple of weekends ago at the Kalani International Raceway so ZX10's roll to the line to the line of course we get ready to go for race action here for the first bit of two wheels it's seller lamb and westman on the front row behind that purificati van dalen and han mcmahon slucky there in uh, the sixth spot van bradar varinga and apana ganapathy make up the third row of the grid and it's uh, renatus finnick behind the rear 
the Ridge Road Race Bar machine back on track there with Agliati. It's Teddy Brook and Byron Rothkall with James Bison, who are on the fifth row. And then uh, it's Dieter Hazeman, the big man, ahead of uh, Lubz and Sana. And Ian Harwood, Sue Golgotchi, Peron Parasiman back again. Nice to have him again. Pierce Knut, who had a fantastic outing at uh, Cape Town. Not quite getting to grips with Kyle Lamy as well as he does at Kilani. But watch out for the man that comes from London and comes racing here every single time. We've got ZX10 on the track. Behind them will be Aubrey Murray, Charles Cruz and Stuart Christie, the Dog Doctor. Raymond Kill, Michael Lowe and uh, Sapelo Siate at the back. With uh, Martin Perry making up that final row all on his own side. Five second board means the lights are about to go on and we've got about 15 or so minutes of race action coming away now from the, Z the Sunbed ZX10 R Masters Cup in association of course with uh, Red Square. Red Square Reload have been with this category for a long long time and Sunbed of course have enjoyed lots of uh, great action from our live stream. Great to have both of those sponsors sticking on board and of course there's some new sponsors coming on to a couple of bikes out there which is good to see too as they go through both on for the first time. Just sorting it out at the moment there. Mid-pack, Graham Van Bidart tucked in behind a Panaganapathy. Not quite what he wanted in terms of the race start. But exactly what Kinsella wanted, that is for sure. Jason Lamb in second place. He's ahead now of Westman. Just adjusting my headset there. Apologies, guys. The headset just going a bit wonky there on me. But uh, now into the mix for the first time. And ZX10Rs are uh, fighting hard up in towards the S's now. Out of the S's, they climb a hill. And Sella getting away relatively untroubled at all at this point in time. Jason Lamb in second place. He's got uh, Trevor Westman and Damien Purificati. Up close and personal. Mr. Hazeman having a bit of a fight there just in the background too of that second group. <coughs> I beg your pardon there. There's also another reason I was trying to hang on to the uh, microphone. I feel a sneeze coming up. Beg your pardon on that one. Westman now into second ahead of Lamb. Is that a big charge coming through there? Yes, it is. Can you believe that? Adrian Vidal and Damien Purificati right in the mix. And Vidal with a bit of work to do. And we go further back and pick up a Dave Ringa. He's in there with JLR. Johan LaRue having a good run with uh, Dave Ringa. And then Teddy Brook and Renatus Vanikirk just behind them. And fan out down towards turn one again. And Vidal trying to close that gap down. 31 is Agliotti. There you see him into turn one. Trying to get onto the back end of Graham Van Bidar. Purificati. Oh, big moment coming out of uh, Barbecue. And that's not what you want to be doing coming out of that corner. Definitely uh, out of shape there, big time. And if I'm not mistaken, that is not the way Adrian Van Dalen wanted to end up. Was that Van Dalen? No, it wasn't. I think it may have been, though. Purificati is there. And now we see Han McMahon behind him. So I think that might have been Adrian Van Dalen who just got out of shape there. And Cordy can give us a, a replay of that one as soon as we get it. We've got a hand up there from Jason Lamb, and I think that's due to possibilities of a red flag being put out. Yeah, red flag is out. And that's due to the fact that that bike might be uh, deemed to be in uh, quite a dangerous position. So red flag has been called. It's a standard option when it comes to uh, motorcycle racing. I just want to see if we can pick up on the number, though, Cordy. I can't see the number on the side of the bike, though. Yeah, they come out of... Uh, Barbecue, and yeah, that's Van Dalen. Van Dalen just getting out of shape and sliding off the circuit. I think the reason they've called the uh, red flag is the bike is stuck in the kitty litter, and uh, the rider moves away, fortunately, but it is in a dangerous place. And a couple of guys, I think, might have had to run wide of a bit of debris that would be on the circuit, which they need to clear. So they'll come back down to the start line, take up their positions on the grid as per race start. So I think they've only completed one lap in anger. Rolling 
into the line again. We're going to have to take the positions and do it all again. One lap completed. And with a restart now, they're going to lose a lot more time. All of this counts towards, of course, their uh, time. But, of course, what happens if the red flag comes out is they will stop the clock. So they've got about 12 minutes, if I can see on the left-hand side there correctly. 12 minutes of race action still to be completed. If a red flag comes out, yeah, there we go. 12.09, if I've got that right. Reshuffle the grid. Wait for clearance at barbecue. Once that clearance comes, we can go racing again. They will definitely not restart the race at 20 minutes, surely. The clock... Well, I don't know. The clock's just changed to 20 minutes of racing. If it's 20 minutes of racing, they're going to get a lot more than what they bargained for. Just readjust that clock there again. Once again, you can see the clock going off on the left hand side. All they needed to do was just pause the clock and stop it. But it was about 12 minutes and 9 seconds that we had okay, tell you. the last time of asking. Bikes, VW, BMW, travel south. Even the VH. Waiting for that clearance from the COC before we go racing again. No, I would talk. If they are there long enough. They might have to give these guys a chance for another warm-up to get some heat into the rubber. Otherwise, we might have some cold Bridgestone tyres that these boys decide to play on. Not too much. Two minute board goes up, so we're into start procedure. Changes to one. One changes to 30, and 30 changes to five in the space of about 20 odd seconds or so. And then we go racing again. Have to do it all over again. already on when they go off we go racing there we go seller not getting the start he wanted on the second time of asking jason nab slightly better off the line someone stalling on the grid as well further back there so a bit of an issue for one of the bikes at the back but seller eventually squeezes through on jason lamb into turn one around the outside comes the killer trevor westman westman up in a second place by the looks of it is he going to sneak through on jason lamb yes he is jason lamb followed through there by the looks of things by damien purificati and purificati has got Han McMahon on his tail. Apana Gunapathy once again in that mid-pack. And he's just, uh, I think, just in behind uh, Dave Varinga. So the juggernaut getting a good start again. Dave is ahead of Johanna Ru and Teddy Brook as they head towards uh, Sunset for the first time. Now on the brakes in towards Clubhouse. Slucky ahead of Van Bredar. Van Bredar, yeah, just ahead there of Dave Varinga. Inside line from Teddy Brook. Trying to find a way through there on Keith Agliotti. Agliotti holding that outside line, making it his own, and heads into the S's just ahead of the Silver Surfer there. And, uh, Agliotti and Teddy Brooks fighting for honors in the top 10 and uh, for single digits. If you want to finish up at the top end of this field. As I said earlier on, we didn't get a shot of it, but uh, we are going to send our condolences out to. Hannes and Peter DeFoss, the loss of their mom a couple of days ago. Uh, we were going to try and get a shot of them at uh, the front of pit lane, but unfortunately with the, the time delay, we didn't have time to do that. Here's Pete, big Dieter Hazeman, the big man. He's a fight there of his own. Fighting hard with James Barson. James Barson, back in the winter cycle as well. Long time since we've mentioned him two wheels but uh, running wide big time there coming out of the final corner that might have been Pierre Pierre Ficotti running very wide out of uh, turn number 14 just double check was it uh, no it wasn't it was lucky and McMahon ran around wide so McMahon running wide out of that final turn and uh, almost onto the wall there is uh, the stricken bike of the, the man who caused the red flag. No worries at all, though. For him, he was okay after the big high side he had coming out of this corner right here. So uh, action aplenty already amongst our uh, two-wheelers. Purificati moves up one place. 
Superb move there from Damien. Gets up into second place ahead of Westman. I don't think either of them are going to have an answer to the pace that uh, Seller's got. He's down in the 54 fours. The 54 fours out of Westman equals uh, Seller's times in terms of lap times in this first race. But equaling means that you're not going to catch. You've got to go quicker. And there's a bit of a gap that's opened up now. It's uh, just under a second between first place and uh, the two and three spot. Behind that, Bambadar, Beringo, McMahon, Juan Agatapati, Keith Agliotti. And uh, coming through there as well. Nice to see the second pack of riders. It's Piers Canute who leads that second pack out. So the second of those wayward Kawasaki's there. And from London, he is here once again, representing his Cape Town-based team. His teammate at the front end. Oh, JLR runs wide. So Naru running wide, opening up the door and giving a shot for a uh, change up in positions there between himself and Teddy Brook. Panaganapati on the ART racing machine comes across the line. Another lap completed. Jason Lamb hangs on. In fourth place ahead of Graham Van Bernal. That was last year's championship battle. Trevor Westman was in that battle for a long time, but he's now pulled away slightly. Here comes uh, Ryan McMahon under a bit of pressure there from the juggernaut. Here's the seal of today, um, motorcycle, I should say. The Kawasaki there of uh, Dave Varinga. Varinga not having an answer, though, to the canine uh, Kawasaki of Ryan McMahon as they come out of sunset again. Trevor Westman is trying to close the gap down now on Purificati, but Purificati's got his sights firmly set on uh, Kinsella out front. And on security, Kawasaki. The four spot. For a chance now to maybe sneak up there. And head up to the top of the hill. Further back. Steve Golgocci in the mix there with uh, Lubobalo and Sana. Uh, Piers Kunut leading that little battle. Fights right the way through as we see almost every single time when it comes to ZX Tenor Masters Cup. Luke's just ahead there for Golgocci. Golgocci with a better run here in this uh, restart. Looks like it might be Peron um, Parasimon just behind them. Oh, oh, it's getting real up top there. Big move on the inside from Golgocci. Sneaks through. And gets ahead of Lubabala and Sana. Sella, arguably quickest on the track, and a 48 9 for Clint Sella. First time he's been on a Kawasaki on this circuit, so uh, that'll be his personal best on his new machinery. 49, so 48 uh, 794 is a pretty decent run. He's becoming close to. The end of this one, probably about a lap or so to go, depending on how we uh, go on this timing monitor and what they reschedule the timing to be here for the rest of uh, one's restart. Van Breda has found a way through there on Han McMahon. Or has McMahon caught Van Breda? I think it's, it's actually that's the case. McMahon has caught Graham Van Breda. Varinga wasn't able to go with him. So we've got Seller out front. Jason Nam there is in fourth place. This is the fifth place battle as Hein McMahon comes back at Van Bredar into Clubhouse. As I said, Van Bredar battling with a bit of a bent chassis on that brand new ZX Tenar uh, uh, 2023 model. And the brand new bike had a slight bit of damage from that crash in Cape Town. And a couple of little gremlins that still need to be sorted out on that machine. Pete and Graham have been working hard to get it right. Then you've got the Juggernaut. He stays ahead of Pana Ganapathy. So, uh, no answer yet to Varinga's pace there from Ganapathy. Looks like Steve Golgocci have got to the front. Yeah, he has. Golgocci's got to the front of the second back. He's now ahead of Piers Knut. Trying to close down that gap on James Barson just up the road from him. Hazeman is just ahead of Barson and Byron Rothkull ahead of that on the Mag Magic bike. Is Panaganapathy, MT racing machine. Eighth place at the moment. Moringa just ahead of him. And not too far behind him is JLR and Otto Viotti for the top 10. 
if I've got this right. It's Seller onto the back straight. There he goes. King Price Kawasaki. Head of Damien Purificati and Trevor Westman. Westy on that wayward Kawasaki. Stays ahead of Jason Lamb. Jason Lamb stays ahead of Han McMahon, who does the same thing there to Graham Van Breda. There is Westman. As we just pan back slightly there, we'll pick up on Lamb. Not too far behind him will be McMahon. Max retires Kawasaki from East London. Running ahead of his championship rival from last year, Graham Van Bredal. That's kind of where Jason Nam's targets would be for the day, I think, here at Kyle Army. He had as much experience as possibly some of the riders ahead of him have had, yeah, particularly Seller, Purificati, and Westman. They've had uh, a lot of time around this track. Jason Nam, maybe not as much. And remember the last time we came here was ZX10 Iron Masters Cup. Uh, it was at the Festival of Motoring, I think, a couple of seasons ago. Uh, Jason Lamb actually had a big crash here, so it's not his favourite circuit in the world. That's for sure. King Price Extreme Kawasaki coming possibly to the line. We have a chicken flag on standby. No, we've got a lap to go. One lap to go there for uh, Kinsella. Party in second, maintains that second place and maintains the gap over Trevor Westman for third. That's the gap there between Lamb, McMahon and Van Breda. You can see at the front end, it's basically equidistant uh, between all of those top seven riders. The gaps have opened up pretty big between them, so not really anybody with an answer, but further back from that, a couple of uh, positions still to be sorted out. That's quite a nice shot. <laughs> Got about nine riders in that shot at the same time, all through the flick flack, coming out of Crowthorn into Barbecue and up towards Yuxke. And each of them are sort of on their own mission to catch this man who's looking to make it three out of three for his. In fact, it's going to be five out of five for Kinsella. First round, of course, was at Red Star Raceway. Then they went to Kelowna International Raceway. And uh, now, first round, the first race of the day here for. Sunbed ZX and Masters Cup. Basically in the hands of Clint Seller to try and make it five out of five. Seller, if he stays in this kind of form all season long, could potentially go and uh, replicate what uh, two other riders have done in this class in the past. Stuart McAttack McLeod and uh, Kevin Lightfoot. Uh, the riders that went uh, all season long being unbeaten in their classes the ZX10 Armasters Masters Cup in the past. So uh, that's definitely something that Kinsella will probably have in mind, maybe to equal that record. Little look over his shoulder, I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> he knows he's got a big gap. But the 11 bike and the King Price Kawasaki heads to the line. And uh, look over the shoulder there. Hand up for the victory. It's up to Amy Pierce of Kwasi, who's fought hard for that second place in the mid part of the restart. And it's Westman for third. Great run there from them. If we look at how the classes come across the line, there's Seller will win out Class A. Westman, um, Purificati and Westman are your top three in Class A. Class C will be Jason Lamb. He wins out over Johan LaRue and Teddy Brook, if I got that right. Yes, I did. And then Class B, it will be... Graham Van Bredaar, Dave Varinga, and then Apanaganapathy. That'll be your top three in Class B. So Class A, B, and C wrapped up now for zx 10 Masters Cup 14th of the day for them. Look forward to further action in the combined extreme festival here at Kalami Country Circuit. Up next, we're heading to the Astron Energy Polo Cup race one.
Oh, big smile on your face, Mark, and I think there's a, a reason for that. Uh, I think the last time we had this amount of cars and bikes at a, at a Grand Prix circuit at Kyle Army was about 30 odd years ago. So uh, 297 competitors, that just bodes well for uh, the future of Extreme Festival and what your team's done behind the scenes. Yeah, thanks, Greg. I mean, uh, sure, we've been trying. We, we almost uh, almost had it had a go at it, uh, but then COVID uh, came in the way. And a uh, big thank you to the Kyle Army management team who gave us our deposit back for that event. And it was a, a few more years before we actually got back here again. And uh, yeah, super excited to be at Kyle Army. I think it's I think it's important for South African motorsport to have a, a feature event here for people to participate. And uh, very looking forward to the day. Well, it's a record entry. I've got a little whisper in my ear there for uh, any kind of uh, circuit uh, racing at Kyle Army, even the old Kyle Army. So uh, hats off to the team. But uh, there's a huge amount of work that goes into uh, putting this all together. You know, you've mentioned the fact that Kyle Army's management have come on board, but uh, your management have done an incredible job. Yeah, I mean, uh, a big word of thanks to them. Putting on this event is uh, no mean feat. Uh, we're not through it yet. I mean, we still have to get through today. Uh, and uh, Tanya's done an amazing job to put it all together. And uh, everyone involved, in fact. I mean, I was just uh, spending a few minutes in the TV booth there and watching Dave do his work. It's, uh, it's a big task. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm glad we're all here and uh, that, we, that we can kind of put a showcase together for, for the people of South Africa. You've got some work to do in the race car as well. Never mind uh, <laughs> looking after the Series 2. Are you looking forward to uh, a nice big field of extreme supercars today? Yeah, it's going to be a, a fantastic race. I mean, the guys are putting down amazing times in the front there. I'm a little bit nervous for the race, actually, because uh, the cars are very close to these expensive cars. So, uh, yeah, let's hope that uh, we get through it without incident. <laughs> Hopefully not as much as what we saw in the very first race. You must have had a, a little concern there. Um, I know that we don't have a Manito available, but uh, it just shows you what can happen when you put the Kyle Army Marshals or Swatcock Marshals together in a big team like today and how quickly those guys and girls can recover a vehicle that was stuck pretty precariously. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's part of putting on the show. You know, you've got to have everyone work, working together. You've got to be fast to recover cars, otherwise you run out of time on the day. Yeah, it's, it's quite something to manage the whole thing. Congratulations from our side and thanks so much for letting us be part of this. Good luck for the race later on and uh, if you get a chance, come back and uh, tell us how it all goes. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Greg. And uh, yeah, thanks to the team and look forward to the day. That was a quick interview there with Mark Detoy, the uh, management behind, of course, the Extreme Festival and the SWAT Corps International Motor Motorsport Venue, just up the road here from Carl Army. On track, though, it's our first heat of Astron Energy Volkswagen Polo Cup. And uh, joining me in studio, as he did in Cape Town, will be none other than Daniel Rowe, Daniel Sun, as we like to call him. He is looking forward to, uh, I'm sure, a, a big fight here, Danny, in uh, the battle for... Astron Energy Polo Cup. Um, we saw a fantastic effort in the first round uh, coming out of a lot of the teams, but uh, Nathan Victor seems to have turned up the wick ever so slightly after just being betted by 0 0.94 of a second across the line. How close do you want it? Yeah, I know for sure. Nathan's definitely, definitely doing a good job this weekend. Um, and, and right so, because he's got a championship you know, to fight. And uh, he's his closest rival at the moment, currently sitting in, in P3. So, um, going to be a close one. Charles Smallberg is in the mix. And uh, Carl Fisser also in the mix. So, it's going to be a good race. Yeah, I do, I do like the fact that uh, um, with this round of the championship, and of course we mentioned it in Cape Town, but if people weren't watching in Cape Town and they're watching us for the first time, there's no champion on track. The number one car is not there. Uh, Charles has moved on and he's uh, of course gone into the Super Cup uh, category with uh, the South African Touring Car Championship which means that that number one plate is very much up for grabs and it's anybody's to take in uh, 2024. Yeah for sure and I think I think the, the, the prize at the end of the day I think is to get that drive for Super Cup so mm. they know that that's, that's, the, that's the prize and that's what they want 
Um, so it's going to be a hard battle, especially this weekend um, and for the rest of the season for sure. So, but but it's crunch time, and uh, and it's all about getting getting that that consistent run, getting those points, staying in the top four. Uh, that's what it's about. You don't need to win every single race, but uh, let's see what happens. Now, consistency is certainly the way to go here. One thing we need to take into account, of course, is the slightly different format that we've had here. A 20-minute qualifying session, no Super Pole yesterday. So that put Victor at the front end. He gets the uh, the extra point for that pole position. Um, his closest rival, as you said, Jason Newsmore. Between the two of them, over the two races in Cape Town, I think there was a second that split them between race one and race two if you added up the, the differentials at the end of those two races. But at Kyle Army, we also saw Wayne Masters up in the top six. So we would have had a master in the Super Bowl had we had a Super Bowl yesterday. Yeah, Wayne, uh, definitely a, a, a driver that likes Kyle Army a lot. He's always done well at Kyle Army. And uh, I don't know if he's doing data again with Keegan, <laughs> but uh, he's, really, he's really doing well this weekend. Solid performance, um, only a couple tenths off uh, top five in, in, in the junior class. So solid performance from the Masters, especially John also. Only a tenth off. off well, Wayne. I was about to say, only a tenth John Kruger has yeah. flown in his Top Gun. He's brought Jeff Kruger in for yeah, some yeah, data yeah, sharing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw that yesterday. I noticed Jeffy walking around. So fantastic to see. And... Uh, a, a big Masters battle as well today. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think Masters and the Cup are going to be a, a thing of no chair as we get ready to go. We've got a red flag at the front just waiting for the final cars to take out the positions here for race one of Astron Energy Polo Cup. And of course, uh, a big welcome to Astron Energy to Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit for the first time as the headline sponsors of Polo Cup. So it's Nathan Victor and Charles Smallberger on the front row. Behind that, you've got Jason Newsmore and Carl Fisser, Ethan Kutsia and Wayne Masters. Mo Karodia also with some impressive times yesterday. He lines up alongside John Kruger. It's Tyler Robinson in ninth ahead of Dr. Hannah Skippers. And we are now under starters' orders. And if I look at that correctly, buddy, we've got just under 15 minutes of race action. So unfortunately, with the way the format works, as I've mentioned earlier on amongst the people that have been watching us, it's 20 minutes from as you roll out of pit lane. So as quickly as you can get round to form up, we'll tell you how many uh, minutes you've got left to race. And by the time we start, it's about 14 and a half minutes of race action coming away now, headed towards turn one. A couple of cars not seeing the lights, I think, and they've kept the Masters back slightly. So a little bit of a, a change up to the way they, they did it, because of course in Cape Town, we could see the lights easily there. But the cup class head down towards Crowthorne. The Masters are about to get underway. And it looks like Nathan Victor might have just got the whole shot. And he's got Smallberg around his outside. And Ethan could see her. What a start there from him. Up to third. Yeah, brilliant start from Ethan. I saw that fighting there with Charles. So close battle. I think uh, it looks like Kyle and Jason have definitely lost the position. But we've got a side-by-side -side battle, yeah? Lap yeah. one. And more of it to come. Yeah, more of it to come, yeah. <laughs> As they head up towards sunset, uh, the Masters probably going to be heading down in towards Crowthorn and towards uh, Barbecue and uh, Yuxke for the first time. We might even keep the shot to see the first Master coming through there, and I would expect it to be possibly Wayne Masters. Look in that, in that mid-pack, though. Look how they're starting to heat the battle heating up there. Charles Smallberger got an absolutely atrocious start. Look how far back he fell. Straight into the clutches of his stable mate out of Team Red Racing. Uh, Tyler Robinson, so Shaul got to do some work and it uh, looks like uh, he's um, made up a little bit of ground but uh, now seems to be fighting hard with Newsmore and Newsmore with some pressure from Fissa, huge pressure coming from Fissa there in the background. I think Shaul's still in second. Beg your pardon, it wasn't Shaul, it was Dr. Hannes yeah. Skippers. Similar colours on the cars, similar that's what colors, put me yeah, out. Similar colours, but yeah. Shaul's, Shaul's actually managed to break a little gap for himself in second. Um, yeah, I got some breathing air for now. Hopefully he can hang on to Nathan and you know, break a little lead there because the minute you get into a battle, yeah, that lead is going to get away. Yeah, well, that's why Jason Newsmore, I think, has got through and trying to get away now from Carl Fisser so he doesn't have to fight off uh, Carl Fisser. There comes, you know, Hannes Skippers and Skippers fighting hard there just in the background with the likes of Jean Dre Marais and Roshan Goodman. We're just waiting to see the front end of the Masters. I think that was the uh, car of uh, Wayne Masters leading out the Masters category. Was it the red and black Hammer car, of course, of John Kruger? He should be in the mix there if he was at the front end. But we complete another lap here. And as we cross the line, Victor is the man to try and catch. And they're all going to have to try and push as hard as they can to make up what is now... Oh, it's almost half a second on that first lap that he pulled on Shaw. 
you know, Charles actually made a, he managed to close up the gap a bit in the, in the, in the ending phase of that, of that first lap. He's, he's right on uh, Nathan Victor now. So he seems to be hanging on and uh, Jason Newsport managed to get up to third. So yeah, he's capitalized and uh, obviously trying to hang on to that, uh, that front battle. Masters leading out the Masters in the Alpha S car as they go down towards Crowthorne. Tucked in behind him, it's Derek Smallberger, then John Kruger. So the two stable mates are side by side as they head towards UXK and Barbecue. But it's the Habit car that just squeezes through there on this Sabertech and OMP machine. I think we saw a little bit of a maneuver there. Mr. Derek was letting John go there. Possibly. I think he Maybe let him go team, there, yeah. Some team tactics. Some team tactics, yeah. <laughs> let John go, try and catch Wayne. I think that's not a bad idea there from Derek because I've, he probably realized that uh, John might be slightly quicker than him. If he stays with him, they can both work to try and close that gap down on Masters up front. Tim can see it though as he hits to the top of the hill, trying to close that gap down on Fisser. Uh, Kyle Fisser still getting to grips with the car. I chatted to him yesterday. He was saying there's a little bit of pressure from mom and dad to sort of uh, try and emulate what his brother did last year. But uh, take nothing away. He has certainly got to grips with that car relatively quickly. Unfortunately, just not able to run with uh, Loose Ball and uh, Smallberger, as we saw later on. And, of course, now we're just seeing back to the Masters here. Smallberger and uh, John Kruger working together to try and close that gap down. Yeah, we've got a big battle here going on with Carl and Ethan. You can see for fourth place in the junior class. Um, they seem to be dropping off from Jason Loose Ball just a little bit. Um, and he's more actually closing down on Charles. So, oh, and we've got Tyler Robertson lining up a move, move on Mocha Rodeo. So, yeah, let's see. Where they're, all, they're all hitting that push to pass button now. Uh, out, of, out of turn 14, yeah. give me that little bit extra power, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, the problem is when you see, your, when you see your, your, your rival hitting it behind you, you know, <laughs> you know he's on the flashes, so you just smash it as well. Yeah, I think that's exactly what Mo saw and uh, decided I'm going to go with it as well. Yeah. Jean Remaré having a good run as well, making up some ground there in this aerobics machine out of Team Red Racing. Behind him, it looks like it might be Roshan. Yes, it is. Goodman. Um, one man that we didn't kind of mention too much about in the first race, but it's because he spent most of the time on the sideline. But of course, he's sponsored by Kyle Army Exhaust, so he has to go well here. Yeah? Is Nirav Singh up in the top 10? Yeah, no, for sure, doing a fantastic job. We did miss a pass, though, for P4. I see Ethan Kutia managed to get past Kyle. Yeah. And I think it was on a push-to-pass, because I noticed Kyle Fisser used the push-to-pass up the hill, and uh, obviously he didn't have one for the straight. So I think Ethan had that push-to-pass and managed to get that fourth place. So Just using it down towards Crowthorn and exactly. uh, making it stick. Yeah, so making way forward, P4. And a skip is trying to close the gap down now as well. Nirov Singh just with him, Roshan Goodman just ahead of them. We're watching this fight here as Corodio starts to close things down now. E. Thompson Racing and Fast 5 Motorsport closing down on FISA for the Volkswagen Motorsport team. Of course, Kyle running the uh, Rookie Cup colours on the side of that car as well. Pity we don't have them here this weekend, but of course, uh, with such a busy weekend, I think the rookies might have just been uh, a little bit out. They wouldn't have had a, a class to play in unless we put them at the back of this category, which is probably not the ideal thing for them at this stage, eh, Danny? Yeah, it's also, I mean, it's also a, a, a big track, a new track to learn. Um, so yeah, it would. I mean, it's not uh, enough it's time. Not, yeah, it's not enough time. And also, there's there's risk for big accidents. Um, they are still rookies, so yeah, we will take one step one step at a time. We, we go to all the easier tracks first. That's and, what it uh, is. Yeah, their calendar is perfectly fine, and uh, yeah, next year they can be ready for this category. Come I think to a couple of them are itching to get into this one. Yeah. <laughs> they are here, though. Of course, you've got uh, uh, Judge. Um, Chad Bertold in uh, the Paper Volkswagen Challenge, having a bit of a run around here, learning the track, which yeah. is not a bad thing. Uh, Tate is in there as well. So uh, certain, certain of them uh, making their way into the uh, slightly smaller class in terms, or well, not smaller in numbers, but smaller in terms of power output of the uh, Volkswagen Challenge category. For sure. But I see they're also playing around with a couple of uh, interesting ideas with the experimental class they're running here this weekend to kind of bring it up to this kind of level. Yeah, for sure. It's one of Oh, we've got a big battle here for first place. Onto the curbs then, Danny. To uh, keep up yes, Mokorodia. He did a great job to keep him behind. Because Mo had the uh, inside line for, for turn one. But uh, Kyle managed to, to keep alongside him for the next few corners. So, uh, Pierluigi Mussolini just ahead there of Nirav Singh. This is also sort of that mid-pack fight that we're watching. 
on this stage. You can see a little bit of a chopping and changing there as Fissa has to go defensive to keep out Mo. Uh, Mo Karodi, of course, has got double duties here this weekend as well. He's also got to participate in Class uh, A of the uh, Volkswagen Challenge. So lots of t track time for him and Ethan Goodseer. Right now, Fissa, though, has got a handful of Mo Karodi. Mo is looking pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah Mo looks to have uh, quite good race pace, as it seems now. Um, didn't didn't really get the best qualifying. I don't think he was too happy with his qualifying mm. after after having a, a short chat with him yesterday. But definitely uh, getting everything together in today's race. So yeah, let's see what he can do with that race pace. Change up for second as well though, between the two teammates. Smallberger's got away. Masters continues to lead as they get to the top of the hill at uh, Leokop. But yeah. it's now Smallberger who's ahead of John Kruger. So uh, there's a change up. It's not on our timing monitor, but uh, definitely saw that on track. Roshan Goodman to the back end of his teammate, Jean-Dre Marais, and the doctors on his tail. So it looks like uh, Hannah Skipper's once away through on those two. Tyler running wide, putting wheels onto the dirt there, which is not ideal. Coming out of Cheetah into Ingwe. Interesting uh, Jason Loosemore. Fastest lap time of the race. Fastest lap time of the race coming to the oh, close Ethan stages. could see it, just took it away from him. Ethan could see it, <laughs> fastest lap. There you go. That's how we like and, to do and it. And he's catching the leaders. Ethan Kutsia is on rails at the moment. 2.076. He's Ethan really Kutsia. on rails. That's a fast lap time around here. Victor under big pressure though. Smallberger has definitely closed that gap down. So I think uh, Nathan Victor could possibly be... Maybe he's hanging on to a couple of push to passes for those last couple of laps so that he can maybe just use them to his advantage. Hasn't had to use them too much to get away. Charles Smallberger might have a couple in hand as well. Jason Newsmore, of course, will have a little bit less as well as Nathan Victor in terms of those push to passes with the way the rules work. Uh, the, the three championship leaders uh, get uh, one less, I think it is, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and managing them well. So they're still in the top three, the two of them, and they, they're doing a superb job. But uh, we've got a big battle going on here for fifth place and then again for, for eighth place. Yeah, seems. an even bigger one, I think. <laughs> Big battle. But <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Robertson doing a good job. Staying, yeah. staying on for that P5. Uh, I think in the last lap she's bring some pressure on uh, Karodia. And, and, and now Karodia is bringing pressure on Carl. So and nice behind that skip nice is running wide out of the S's. Onto the dirty stuff. Trying to find a way. He was uh, the meat in the sandwich there between the two team red boys. Jean-Dre Marais and Roshan Goodman. But this time out, uh, he has to just settle for that uh, latter position. Jean-Dre though capitalizes. Gets yeah, through on Goodman. Gets through, gets that eighth place. Jandre now up into eighth. This is Kutsia trying to close that gap down. Watch out for that second battle we've been picking up on in the background. Here they come to the line. That's the one we want to watch out for. Here it comes. And joining the party there will be uh, Pierluigi Mussolini, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Side by side through Mannschaft. Is that flat through there in these cars? I think they are flat, yes. I think they're definitely It's pretty flat awesome stuff, eh? These pile of cups. So um, just over 200 k's an hour flat through the mine shaft there. That's pretty, impo pretty impressive stuff from Apollo GTI. Sia was quickest, and they start the final lap. Is he still quickest? He is, yeah, yeah. He is still purple, and he's, uh, he's right on Jason Lusmore. Look at that. So Down the outside there, for turn one. Inside line. Just hangs on. Does he? Oh, do we see a change up? No. Could see are going to try and find another way around. Right now, yeah. Nathan Victor's done it all right, and I think he can hang on, possibly. Done a great job. Um, definitely didn't run away with it, though. Charles no. Smallberg had been on his bumper the whole race. So, uh, you know, one mistake and it's all gone. So, he's, he's had to keep it all together. Keep it clean. Oh, oh, speaking of keeping it clean, that's oh. not clean. Mussolini coming slamming into the side of Dr. Hannes Skippers. Yeah, very unfortunate. I think Skippers lost it and as it whipped back, I think they just... Yeah, a little touch between was them. just an inevitable uh, contact. Very Mussolini unlucky. stuck on the sideline. Skippers got going again, but I'm not quite sure Pierre Luigi was able to get going again. Into the S's on... That was literally on one wheel, man. Yeah. Victor was on one wheel. Yeah, that FSS car of Pierre Luigi Mussolini stricken there on the inside of the exit point of uh, Barbecue. So up to the top of the hill go the leaders, Victor, Smallberger, and it's, it's so, so close between them. I can't even tell you. There's still a chance here for Charles Smallberger to maybe spoil the day for Nathan Victor. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, quite close enough, but, I mean, mistakes happen, so... Uh 
I think see if uh, that pressure pays off down into the bowl here now. Into Crocodiles. Late breaking, but no, Victor's got it. I think he's managed to keep it together. Yeah, that Summit Racing car. All Ooh. of them running slightly wider than what they are. should be. <laughs> Esports line. <laughs> make, it, make it work, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know all about those lines, pal. <laughs> into the final corner, Nathan Victor for Summit Racing going to take the victory here as he runs into another eSport line out of uh, Igwe <laughs> Corner there. But uh, needless to say, hangs on for the victory. Yeah, it wins out over Smallburger. Loose ball for third and Ethan could see it for fourth place. Nice run there from Roshan Goodman as well. We saw him just coming possibly into the top ten. Just missing out there in the closing stages. But uh, his teammates ahead of him there. Tyler Robinson and Jean-Dre Marais for Team Red Racing. Masters. Looks like it's going to still be a, a chance there for, uh, is it Wayne Masters going to finish up? Yes, it is. I think he's just ahead there of Derek Smallburger. And there's something went wrong here on that last lap. Let's have a squiz further back. No. Masters finishes up. Yes, he does. He wins out over Derek Smallburger. And then the habit car of John Kruger. Just, is it? No, it's not. That habit car has gone missing, according to our time. But that master might be just because of signal here at Kyle Army. How was that one for the first one? Fantastic race, and we're going to have an exciting second race with uh, you know, the fastest laps from the race and the quality, quality order for or the, or the starting grid order for, for race two is going to be uh, a little bit of a change up, and uh, yeah, excited for that race. I think it's here, got that fast lap, that puts him on pole then. Puts him on pole, he's currently on pole with Luce Moore alongside him in P2. So Nathan sure. Victor, race winner, starts third. For race two with Charles Smallberg in fourth. <laughs> nice Looking change forward up. to it. That's a big change big up. Big change up. That should just uh, put a cat amongst the pigeons there, I think, for the second race of Astron Energy Volkswagen Polo Cup. Daniel, thank you so much once again for joining me, buddy. I'll see you a bit later on for race two. Go and uh, find out some uh, information in pit lane for us and bring it back for uh, race two later on. Thank you very much. Daniel Rowe joining me there for uh, commentary for Astron Energy Polo Cup. Great to have him in board and of course uh, multiple champion in his own right in uh, his Polo Cup career and in uh, Super Cup and even into global touring cars as they were known before they changed up to the South African touring cars. So uh, that's uh, going to be some insight that he'll go and try and find out for us for later on. Up next we head to the biggest field of the day. It's the BMW M Performance Racing Series Race 1 and they'll be coming out of course of the top pit lane as opposed to the bottom one. That is how things will be uh, continuing. BMW M Performance Racing Series there. Up next, we're going to Triple One GD Sports and Saloons, including the Super Hatch, South African Touring Cars, including Super Cup, and then Extreme Supercars will make up the first heats of the weekend. And then we have a small circuit cleanup at about 12 o'clock, and then we go into GR Cup as well. South African Touring Cars, you coming back as well? Okay, lovely. So Daniel Sun will be back with the SA Touring, Cup, uh, Touring Cars as well. That'll be nice to have. And uh, he'll bring us some information from down in pit lane, I'm sure, with an insight that we don't need to feed. Daniel, once again, thanks so much. Thank you for joining us, and he'll be back later on for the Touring Cars Super Hatch, a uh, Super Cup as well. We stand by for BMW M Performance Racing Series Race 1. Thank you, around to the circuit. And of course, as I said earlier on, that is arguably our biggest field of the weekend. Just want to pick up on their uh, qualifying quickly if I can find it on my phone here somewhere. Uh, I think it was close to uh, 50 odd competitors in that class after their qualifying so uh, big action expected uh, I'm not quite sure what Dave's going to do to try and get all that action to us but uh, I'm sure he's going to do the best he can to show us classes A to E in the BMW M Performance Racing Series that are up on track in a few moments time
Yeah, I did. I did send uh, Rion a message. See so if we can get him up here just to have a quick chat. Okay, cool. No, sure. Hundred percent. That's fine.
in uh, the commentary booth for two secondes. He's uh, the man who, of course, uh, spent a bit of time in an area that he shouldn't have spent uh, this morning, Mr. Hannes Visser. Yeah, it wasn't the idea to park the car there that <laughs> early this morning. So, uh, yeah, you know, we, 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 we're learning to race, but yeah, I need some parking skills as well, it seems. <laughs> Listen, you're not the first man to get it wrong in turn one, I can tell you. What, what actually would happen? Well, what? it was it was a last lap. So up to that point, we were having one hell of a dice. And obviously, I mean, we're racing, so you're on, uh, on the brakes as late as possible. And uh, we just looked at the footage now. I was doing 208 kilometers an hour. Jeez. Jumped on the brakes, and, and, and the pedal just went straight to the floor. And then you don't have much time to decide what you're going to do. Um, my rally instinct said turn onto the dirt, so I turned to the left, pulled the handbrake and just went along for the ride from there. Yeah, and then, then ended up putting that car into uh, sort of a trophy position. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a thing to get out of it because quite high up, so yeah, I had exactly. to like, climb down a fence. I haven't done that since school days. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, you're A-OK, -okay. it's good to see you like all in place, but uh, were they able to get the car back into uh, pit lane and uh, possibly ready for race two? I don't think it's going to be ready for race two, unfortunately. The car did its job by keeping me in one piece, so uh, that Corolla is very, very strong and all the safety measures seem to have worked. I, uh, I seem to recall uh, my head went to the side and then the Hans device grabbed it, you know, so I can feel a little bit of a stiff neck at the moment, but everything worked as, as, as designed, so uh, thanks to the car for, for keeping me in one piece, but I don't think we'll make race two, unfortunately. That's a big pity, but but uh, need to say, while I've got you here, um, from a Latvia point of view, uh, to have 297 competitors at Kyle Army, it's, it's a, a absolutely record. absolutely fantastic, and I mean, you and, and all of us, all the media guys, you know, I think we all have a passion for the sport, we do what we can to uh, to get the message out there, mm. to spread the gospel, to to get people back at the racetrack and, 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 and make them all aware on TV and radio and wherever you know we get the message out. So we're all doing what we can and uh, we'll continue to do so and hopefully it's, it's paying off. Well, buddy, I'm just glad to see that you're all in one piece. Uh, I've, uh, I've also spent a bit of time rear-facing on the tyre wall. Mine was at uh, Turn 1 at uh, Swartkops, not as high as uh, Turn 1 <laughs> at Kyle Army, but as you said, the car did its job. Uh, and I'm sure you've been looking forward to the next round, which is, uh, where do we go from Swat there? Swat three or four weeks, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, um, we'll, 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 we'll need to speak to the Toyota boss first to see if I'm going to have a car for that one. I hope so. And uh, at least now I can sit back and enjoy the, the excellent racing for the rest of the day. Awesome, dude. Thanks for joining us weekly for a quick update there. Hannes Fisser there from Gazoo Racing in his incredible Corolla that ended up on the tyre barrier. If you want to see that, just rewind our... Uh, our footage and uh, check out the first race of the day. Thanks, Hannes, for uh, your insight and bringing us up to speed as to what exactly went down there with that maneuver that uh, saw him end up on the, the side of the wall. In fact, on the wall and just uh, missing going over the fencing at turn number one. So it got completely out of shape there. And uh, looks like I'm going to be joined by Mr. Motormouth himself here for some BMW M Performance Racing Series. Jump on in here, Bren. Brendan Kelly, of course, is here to do some work for uh, one of the Team Red cars. And uh, his own work, of course, is motor mouth. But uh, it's great to have him joining me here in the commentary booth because, Bren, uh, I can tell you with uh, 48 competitors on track, we can have our work cut out for us to try and get all the race action there. And uh, I think the two producers and directors next door are going to have even more. Yeah, well, Greg, thanks very much uh, for this this opportunity. I tell you what, it's bucket moment, uh, bucket moments, a bucket list stuff for me this weekend. My first trip to Kyle Army ever, and uh, to to come as we heard Anas about the record crowds. I mean, 293 cars, and uh, what an absolute absolute pleasure to be here and and to be uh, joining you here. Another another. Memorable, memorable occasion for me and another one to tick off of my bucket list. So looking forward to a fantastic race here. I mean, all these BMs out on, yeah, there are some very, very quick cars out on, on circuit here. So I think, uh, as you said, it's going to be a bit of a, bit of a challenge to, uh, keep up with all of them. And, uh, I'm still learning my feet uh, around the circuit as well. Where is where? So <laughs> where everything uh, is. Just, uh, I'm going to be guessing a lot. Uh, the cars, uh, beautifully, beautifully prepared cars. I mean, uh, Lorero in that uh, the number 11 car. I've, uh, I don't think I've ever seen such a quick BM in my life. Yeah, both him and his brother Rick have got some serious uh, ponies behind those two combined racing BMWs out front. So uh, the two of them will be sort of trying to lead the pack. But in this pack, you've got uh, the likes of classes A, B, C, D, and E. So each of the categories. Oh, Corinne Nobber, a little bit out of shape there. That's one of our lady drivers. The lucky girl, not so lucky out of uh, turn four there. And uh, unfortunately, looks like she might be in the middle of the track, but she is rolling, so could potentially get out of harm's way. And they are pitted just to the left-hand side of where she ended up. So good possibilities that they can uh, recover that car, and we don't need to go to either safety car or even possibly a red flag. 
just having a look at the, the sideways shot of the car on the track there. That's one thing that has absolutely blown my mind is the, the width of the circuit. I mean, you know, mm. this, this circuit is absolutely, absolutely world class. Oh, uh, not just the that's circuit. Rob Gearing getting out of shape. Rob out of shape there as well. Sure, that was a huge moment coming down into Crocodiles. So Larrera getting away at the moment and uh, pulling a bit of a mover to get away from, uh, is this Ryan Nyker up in a second by the looks of things. We've got double yellows out of Leokop, so that means there's possibly an issue at Leokop or down into the, the, uh, the bowl at the bottom end of the circuit. As they come through there for the very first time, you can see also watch out for uh, the battles through the pack in each of the classes. We just saw Rob Gearing getting out of shape. So Bob Neal up in a second place now. Into third is Ryan Nyker. And then uh, that is Carlo Gobini ahead of Andreas Mayer. That's the German in shot right now. That's an ex-South African touring car, car yeah, that he's in. Correct, um, yeah. But not with the original engine. He's changed it up to oh, a turbo yeah. engine now. Two liter turbo. He was battling a little bit with a naturally aspirated car to stay with these Class A and B competitors out front. Yeah, but fantastic to see that car back out in circuit in the in the original colors as well. Mm. That's an absolutely, absolutely beautiful setup machine. And... Uh, um, just having a look at is Garbini that is leading Class B at the moment. Uh, yep. He's got the jump on on Mayer, so um, that's a bit of a surprise. I thought that uh, that Mayer would be would be the leader of the of the B class, but uh, not at the moment. Behind him, though, he's got Fabio Fedetto and Nick Macris, so that's possibly why he was uh, caught out on the start there. The two of them, or well, the three of them, having a bit of a fight to get to the front end, which allowed Garbini just a little bit of a margin to get away. So. Class C at this stage, is that going to be uh, a battle possibly between uh, Trevor Long? And as we go through there, I'm just going to try and pick up on that. It could possibly be uh, Jan Everstein as well involved in that Class C fight. Yeah, but and uh, Devin, Ro uh, Devin Robertson in the, in the number 20 car uh, at the, the sharp end of the, uh, the Group C. Gary Martin's right up there as well. So um, that's, that's also going to be an interesting little battle within the battle. But I mean, these cars yesterday qualifying a uh, one uh, one forty five, I think it was from uh, from uh, Lurero. So uh, Paolo Lurero, I mean, that is that is super super quick around. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's virtually super uh, supercar pace that he's going around. Well, the I can tell you, the two of them have at one point in their time joined the supercar category and uh, been part and parcel of that. They used to run in Class A and Class B, if I'm not mistaken, in the extreme supercars. But uh, they've decided to come back to their roots and uh, fight it out here. That, uh, that 50 car out there, of course, uh, got diesel on the side, is actually the only racing diesel BMW in the field. But uh, always a car to watch out for, and a, a car that uh, can give uh, most of these cars a run for their money in each of the categories. Got Beanie Mayer and Nick Macris. Gary Martin's leading out Class C in that diesel car, ahead of Devin Robertson, and then Rob Gearing in third. Yeah, class D, Nicholas Herbst, uh, right up there. He's the, the leader of the of the D class, um, ahead of George uh, Economides, uh, Ari van Heerden in uh, third in that battle. It looks like we're going to change a position as the, the cars line up to challenge yet Ooh, another. Big <laughs> moment coming out of the entrance to barbecue. It's oh, the 37 well, car out of shape. Well, well saved there, managing to, to keep it going in the right direction. <laughs> Only just oh, though. Another one onto the grass. That's our ra that's the race leader, the number eleven car. It is. That's yeah, Paolo Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Some problems. He's ha he's got some problems. I noticed when uh, the the shot of him coming down the down the pits, uh, the uh, main straight past the pits, uh, there was a big puff of cloud of, of black smoke out of the back of the car. So it looks like. Uh, that has uh, expired on the side of the track, and we just hope it's not terminal. But uh, with the amount of black smoke that uh, we saw out of the back of it, it, it looks like it could be game over. Could possibly be the end of that one. That's a big pity to lose him so early on. Means Bob Neal gets promoted up. Ryan Nyker up in a second, and Garbini, uh, despite leading Class B, is third overall. I can see some pressure being put onto Rob Gearing here as well, coming from uh, the 48 car of Nick Macris. So uh, Macris seems to be uh, into the mix there as well. Those little cars having some fun and games of their own as they go up to the top of the hill. The 31 car as well now into our shots. Uh, difficult to try and keep the story going here. There's so too many cars it's on track. It's just too much. I mean, having five different classes uh, and um, some some well-known drivers uh, in the mix as well. So, But, I, I mean, these guys, what a fantastic bunch of guys. Uh, we spent some time with them in the in the pits uh, yesterday evening. Mm. And uh, they are certainly, certainly passionate about racing. They enjoy every single moment of it. That's the boss, man. Uh, the boss <laughs> going around there now. Hey, Kavaya, showing his way around there. And uh, having some fun and games of his own there, but uh, not quite uh, up to pace of what he'd like to be, I'm sure. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure who's in the track taxi this weekend either, but uh, we'll wait and see if they, we pick on that one. It could possibly be Stefano Cavalleri, 
who is in that car. And uh, as we see them coming across the line, another lap completed. Um, one thing as well, Brent, that we're going to pick up on, which I haven't had a chance to talk to you about, is, is the format of racing here today. Slightly different to what we normally have. Absolutely. It's literally 20 minutes as you roll out of yeah, pit lane. As, as the cars leave pit lane. So that, uh, that is robbing, robbing the spectators a little bit of a spectacle. But on the other hand, it's giving them such a wide variety of, of classes to, mm. to showcase here today. And I, mean, I, I just can't believe the, the crowd. When we arrived here uh, this morning, the, the amount of people that were already in here, and I'm, uh, the people just... The, the, the queue of cars, I mean, uh, four, four wide coming into the circuit. Uh, Thanks. Four wide coming into the circuit. So, you know, it's still, it's going to be very, very busy out, of, out here today. So Paul just jumping into our studio there as well and just giving us a heads up. It's actually Matt Wadley in the track taxi. So uh, apologies on that one. We're just trying to work out as, as to who's who out here. And it's not always easy to do when you've got so many cars yeah. on track. The Class C battle we're watching at the moment there. Gary Martins, Devin Robinson, Nishal Singh. And uh, then you got the 373 there of Andre van Furen. So van Furen with Alan Hillegen just tucked in behind there as well. Uh, he's normally an easy car to spot. There goes the track taxi. It's the 330 car. It's the estate version of the BMW 330. And uh, Matt Wadley having a good run in that uh, mid-pack of uh, sort of class C and D all combined. A couple of bits of cars with uh, some smoke coming from them. That'll be something to watch out for as well. See whether or not they're going to make it through to the end because there are a couple of cars that we need to sort of uh, be well aware of in terms of the championship battle too. Um, after seeing the first round, we saw uh, the likes of Andreas Mayer taking his overall victory in his class. But uh, the two competitors that were uh, at the front end of class A, um, namely Bob Neal, had a massive, massive crash, of course, at his first outing. And uh, he uh, left it all into the hands of uh, the rest of the pack then to go and fight out for the championship. But how's this for a fight? Oh, Wadley very, very involved in the battle there in the 330 car, the station wagon. Uh, all those great uh, cars sticks out like a, like a sore thumb there with the, uh, the rest of the saloon cars. But uh, all those are great competitors, Matt Wadley. I'm going to test your knowledge there as well, hey? The, the, uh, the colors that uh, are running there on uh, Rob Gearing's car. German touring cars, German baby. touring cars. Remember Absolutely. them coming here yeah, in yeah. the uh, late 90s? Yeah, no, you're going back a while now. So it's BMW M Performance Racing Series. There is just cars left, right, and center. It's almost the entire track that is uh, spread out now amongst uh, all of the competitors for classes A through to uh, classes E. On the right-hand side there was early race leader. And unfortunately, Paolo Larrero's day ended up with him parked on the sideline. I'm not quite sure why Rick didn't make it out, because Rick was actually second quickest yesterday in qualifying. Didn't see him roll out onto the line no. at all. So uh, there must have been not, a problem on his not part too. Uh, not classified, so he, he's a non-starter. So uh, we'll try and find out uh, and let you know for race two what the, what the issue that is there with the uh, two Larrero cars. But I just caught a glimpse of the 36 car, the man from Port Elizabeth who's made the trip up here, uh, Maria Ellis, uh, racing down in Class, uh, class E. Mm -hmm. And uh, chatting to, to him ex quite extensively last night. Uh, I've never seen a man smile so, so big. Uh, he's also, you know, bucket, uh, bucket list uh, stuff. He's just absolutely enjoying every single second out of the track. He said he could, he, he could go home already after just having, just having dri driven two laps of, uh, <laughs> of the first practice that was cut short when he broke a lower control arm. Um, but uh, he's just, just absolutely loving every single minute of it. And going well. His times have, uh, his times have improved. Oh, we've, got another, we've got another well, man another parked Trevor there. Long. Trevor Long parking. Trevor Long joining the 93 car on the sideline. So that's definitely not the way he wanted to finish up his race. That is for sure. So uh, a couple of cars that are uh, parked on the sideline. Ryan Nyker is the 93 car. Trevor Long parks alongside him and uh, sort of parallel parks behind him. So I think what we're seeing here... Uh, you're just mentioning Maria, and of course, Maria Ellis, of course, I had a chance to drive against when I was still in touring, uh, in the old uh, production cars in Class T. They were uh, part and parcel of that Class T uh, class. But what happened was, when BMW M Performance Racing Series went down there last year, they kind of made a few friends in East London and in and PE. Port Elizabeth, correct. And said, listen, guys, come and join us. You yep. know, we're a Gauteng-based uh, class and club. But it doesn't mean that you guys can't come and enjoy. And that's why we've got 47 cars on track, bud. 
Absolutely. I mean, East London, there is a massive, massive growth in uh, with the BMWs in the uh, modified saloon class. Uh, they can also come and join us down in, in Port Elizabeth. Dean Ball, the man responsible for building yes, exactly. all the cars down there. Um, and he's, I mean, he's been around racing forever, has Dean, and he, he certainly builds a, builds a spectacular car. So, yeah, we're very lucky to have uh, lots of the BMs uh, based in either East London or Port Elizabeth. And then once a year when these guys come down to play with us as well, it is an absolute, absolute feast down there. One lap to go for Bob Neal. I was chatting to him. He actually parked just down the road from where we are. Studio is here underneath the old Goodyear Tower. Uh, and flag actually out. So it was the last lap for the back markers. Flag for Bob Neal. I was about to just say, Bob Neal telling me this morning as he drove past here in his big rig, saying that uh, they found some kind of uh, chassis issue on the car. And he could only do, he could only do, by the way, <laughs> 240. <laughs> he, he couldn't go more than that. Otherwise, the car started to get out of shape. So, yeah. And in fact, it wasn't the back end that was getting out of shape on the rear wheel drive. It was the front that got light. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to remedy that. But needless to say, didn't have too much of an issue. His uh, closest rivals ended up on the sideline. Neil hung on and he took the victory yes. in Class A ahead of uh, Fabio Fedetta. Again, quite a dominant victory at that. 13.9 mm. seconds. Uh, so... A uh, good job there for uh, Bob Neal, uh, the ever consistent Bob Neal um, in that very, very well prepared car. Up next, of course, is we've got uh, Class B that was won out by Carlo Gobini. The German came through for second and he was just ahead of JP Nokia. Uh, a little bit of problems here in the closing stages as well for the 7 7 pulling to the sideline. Gary Martins, I think we just saw go across the line there for Class C's win in the diesel. So he wins out over Devin Robinson and Jan Everstein. And then in class D, Claudio Jardim, yep. beating out Economides and Nick Herbst. Nick Herbst is normally alongside me, so he's ah. going to be shouting at you for jumping onto his microphone. But hey, listen, <laughs> he's out you of can't do both. I'll hey. swap. I'll swap with him <laughs> at the drop of a hat. I'll go out there at uh, any moment. Yeah. Uh, I think we uh, both would enjoy yeah. that. Eh? And then the class E one going to, uh, I think it was uh, Andrea Cavalleri taking, oh no, no, it was uh, Rodriguez, Eddie Rodriguez mm. taking the uh, the class E one in the 77 car. So. I think right in the last closing stages there, though, it, uh, Sean Dodd put in a lap of note and he just squeezed through for potential victory in class E. But we'll get confirmation of that. And of course, if you want confirmation, get on to Speed Hive. You can get all the final results of today's race action. It's Extreme Festival regionals and nationals combined. A massive day of race action coming your way. And we're still not done with the first heats. We've had two first heats yesterday. Unfortunately, some of them were caught out by uh, some uh, late issues on circuit, which didn't quite work out according to plan for Formula V. But the, the Mo Mobile One V8 supercars had their first outing yesterday. They've got their second heats later on this afternoon. But from BMW M Performance Racing Series, we go to Triple One GT Sports and Saloons and the Super Hatch class, who will be up next on track. And then from there, as you can see, we go to South African Touring Cars and the Super Cup class. And the Extreme Supercars, driven by Dunlop, will wrap up the first heats and then into the second heats of the day, running through all of those, as you can see, GR Cup, Formula 1600s, the Volkswagen Challenge, Pay Bar Volkswagen Challenge, Sunbed ZX-10 R Masters Cup, Mobile One V8 Supercars Race 2, Astron Energy Polo Cup Race 2, Formula V's Race 2 from DOE, and Extreme Supercars, South African Touring Cars, M Performance Racing Series, and our last race of the day will be the Triple One GD Sports and Saloons and Super Hatch combined. There you can see once again confirmation, Brent, on the sideline. 20 minutes per race means you've got to have your wits about you. And I think most of the categories would have probably chatted to the slower cars and said to them, listen, get round as quickly as possible so that we don't lose race time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a couple of guys grumbling. You know, I just heard. You know, the the uh, the, the the smallest class is the V8, the mobile supercars, and just saying, you know, they uh, they they shouldn't get the, the same amount of track time because they're, that's a smaller class. But uh, we'll leave that argument for another day. <laughs> um, but the, yeah. the argument I come back to them with is they all pay the same rate. Absolutely. So yep. if they're paying the same rate as the national class, then you've got to give them their fair due and give them a chance to get out there and uh, do what they need to do. No, absolutely. That's the way it. Uh, that's the way it works. But uh, I mean, fantastic to have 293 competitors, a uh, full house, and uh, yeah, hopefully we get through the whole day and uh, don't run into the into the night as we as we did yesterday. I mean, the <laughs> last the last practice and qualifying for the for the BMs was uh, in in virtual darkness. So yeah, hopefully everything carries on running smoothly and uh, we're in for the you know uh, crackerdack day. Uh, day. So I'll join you a little bit later on. I'll come back for the for the next heat of the fantastic. BMWs and then for the uh, ZX10 Master as well following following uh, Jason Lamb with uh, I wonder why I, was gonna say, I wonder why you might come in for that race particularly <laughs> yeah no, Jason being an Eastern in Cape based man yourself well. yeah, yeah that's what we we focus on Motormouth 
primarily uh, focusing on on Eastern Cape competitors, and uh, yeah, certainly, certainly growing uh, growing quickly, and um, we've got a we've got a, a wealth of. Uh, very, very talented uh, racers from the Eastern Cape. A lot of them on show here today. Uh, Michael Stephen, one of uh, them. Uh, uh, one and uh, on duty this weekend as well, internationally too, internationally, buddy. Internationally, yeah. Rusche. Yeah, uh, Rusche Moodley as yeah. well. So we uh, keep an eye on what's happening there. And, and we've got the national rally happening down in, in Cape Town as well, the Swat, uh, Cape Swatland rally, uh, de- uh, rally de- uh, the second stage, uh, second round today. So it's an interesting day of motorsport in the mm. country. And uh, we just... Uh, want to thank all of the uh, the followers of Motormouth and uh, just uh, keep doing what we're doing. Exactly. Just keep it going. But I love the work that you do. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. I'm going to be back a little bit later on there. It's great to have Brendan Kelly as part of our commentary team today. And he's going to get it. Get a, there you go. Another day, another racetrack. Eh? That's what it's all about. But this time, it's going to be the voice of choice in there too. <laughs> thanks, Brent. Awesome, dude. All right, so there you have it. It's uh, moving on to the next part of the day's proceedings. A great outing there for the BMW M Performance Racing Series, as always. Uh, non-stop action. And, of course, the action was so good. I think even uh, Dave and Paul were battling to keep up with the action that was happening on track. We tried to do the best we can, and that's exactly what we do on our live stream. So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. It looks like from what we're seeing here on the uh, comments on my page particularly, Gordon Bath, um, awesome coverage. Thank you so much for appreciate for that, and uh, thank you so much for everybody as well. I see uh, Pops was in the house as well for a little while. Uh, the links for the racing. Well, I can see I'm going to have to pass that on to uh, Tony Richardson. It's the normal links that you have to find. So if you get onto Facebook, you'll find us on Extreme Festival. You'll find us on Volkswagen Motorsport. You'll find us on uh, the Carl Army Grand Prix Circuit, and you'll find us on The Voice of Choice. And if you're watching anywhere else that you don't have Facebook, you can get onto YouTube and pass that on to all your friends, fans, and family to do the same thing for us, is to like and share it as much as possible.
Are we good to go? Yes, we are. Here we go. Triple One Sports and Saloons, the GD Sports and Saloons and Triple One's on track for their first race of the day. And if I look at the way things are going, there's only one... Yeah, there's only one GT Class car. And that is the Subaru Works Impressor of Charles Falds. So, he'll be just ahead of Miles Spur, Lindsay Kluwer, Miguel Diaz, Wayne Lobotsky, Jonathan Detoy, leader of the Super Hatch category. And then George Iceland, Pete Portkita, and Charles Veyers is how they'll be lining up for uh, the first heat of Triple One Sports and Saloons. It's a rolling start, but it looks like it's George Economides who's on the front row there. And he looks like he's going to be alongside the Porsche. So maybe a couple of changes that uh, weren't uh, <laughs> according to what we've got here in terms of the practice and qualifying. Try and pick up on that qualifying session as well and how that all finished up. Because there's just so much information with 14 classes of racing here. Rolling to the line and lights are on as they go off. It's Economy who gets the whole shot by the looks of it. Heading down towards turn one, Crowthorn Corner for the first time in the GT Sports and Saloons. And Triple One's combined with Super Hatch. Economy Dies and Philip Mayer, Davi Olifier and Leonard Archer were the front and that's the GT class. I didn't see any other GT class competitors in one of the practice sessions I saw there. But I'm just trying to pick up on the actual qualifying. But neither say, don't need to worry about that too much right now as they come into the mix for the first time. Remember, there are separate classes for this category. So uh, we've got uh, to keep an eye out on cars on track there for Class A, Class GT, Class B, and of Class C, D, and E as well. But uh, at this point in time, out front, it's Economides who leads out the GT class. And we'll try and hang on to uh, potentially a victory here for the sports and saloons car class. The Wealth Avenue Golf just outgunning that uh, people group Porsche of Philip Mayer. Davi Ulefier in the International Race Supplies BMW was third. We're seeing uh, halfway through that pack of cars. The Shield Golf of Wayne Lobotsky under a little bit of pressure there initially from Miguel Diaz by the looks of things there. Yeah, Diaz in the A29 car. It's Class A, but he runs in Class B for this category. He runs in Class A, of course, for Pay by Volkswagen Challenge. And he's in the same car, but right behind him, he's got a Class A car from Super Hatch's Jonathan Detoy, all over the tail end of him. Wayne Robb up there as well, and Michael Krobler. And a bit further back there, a couple of the Class X competitors, and uh, looks like that could be Rob Clark involved in that category too. So not a bad way to start things out here for that class. As we get into the mix here, Lobotsky, as I said, under pressure from Diaz. Clark and Didi Machila having a fun games with Trevor Stringer and Jonathan Fisser. And as I said, out front, it's Economides, Mayer, Olifier and Archer with Charlie Folds in the Subaru. That is the second place car, or is it the third place car? It's the third place car there of uh, the Porsche coming through there for the first time. So we'll keep an eye on their progress as uh, Olifier leads things out by the looks of things. He's lost out a little bit of ground now. As they go down towards turn at number one. George Economides out front. Davi Olifier was second. But he's dropped back slightly as they went under breaking here. Where Mal Spur leads out in Class A. So Class A, Mal Spur, Lindsay Kluwer. Is that uh, the big boss man? It is. Yep. Turian Nurt, Toyota's Lucas Besaid note in third place in his Lexus. And then it's uh, that People Porsche. People Group Porsche. Coming through. Diaz. Leads out uh, Jonathan Detoy, and then it's Portkita just behind that. Pete Portkita behind uh, Jonathan Detoy. At this stage, Michael Krobler putting the pressure on in that mid pack. 
Spurs trying to hang on to a lead over these four cars. Slightly yet, so it must have been a bit of an issue there between Maya and Ulifir, probably. It's now George Economy with a commanding lead at the front end of the field. <coughs> his teammate, well, his teammate, but another fellow Toyota competitor there, heading to the top of the hill and uh, looking to uh, try and stay in the mid pack there. Voter, of course, swapping out with Mal for this season. The two of them changing their cars. Voter Rus in 12th place. Um, and currently leading Class C ahead of Alka van Fleda. Mal Spur leading Class A. And currently sitting in 5th place overall as well. Jonathan Detoy leads out Super Hatch Class A. He's tucked in there behind Miguel Diaz with Pete Portita behind him there in the Rocky car. Out of Nathan's Motorsport. Lindsay Kluz lost out one position to Poseidon. Could possibly lose out another one here into the final corner just behind him it's got the shield golf there of Wayne Lebotsky and it's Detroit and Diaz Portita Roger Lewis and Wayne Robb second of the Superhatch competitors down to 14th it's Carl Watt and Carl Stoltz that was the uh, man I was trying to pick up on the second of the Victoria and North Toyotas there has closed down on the back end of the note, but none of them have got an answer to Miles Spurs' pace. She leads out comfortably and uh, fourth place on the road at the moment, but uh, leader of Class A. Join in tenth. He's ahead of Coral Stoltz and Set and Naidu in terms of Super Hatch. Just gone through the shot. Malsberg coming into the shot now. In the car care clinic racing golf. Of seven. It's been a really good car in the hands of her uh, partner in crime. Voter Rus in the past. Now in her own hands. Kowalski under a bit of pressure there from the Porsche. It certainly looks like uh, Philip Mayer wants to get through. in that mid pack as well as we see he's getting into the mix there nicely but fighting for honours class C, class X, Kursen for a way through there Carl Watt in the mix there as well two cars seem to be slowing up into uh, the top end of the circuit they come over the rise there at Leerkop. It's Charlie Fowles in the Subaru who's right back there where he shouldn't be. <coughs> kind of no man's land there for him. Probably opening up a little bit of a margin all on his own some now. Close down there on Vota. Continuing to lead things out. going through there, Lindsay Clear the third car. It's the Botchley leading class B. Trying to find a way through still is Philip Mayer in that people group Porsche. Diaz from the toy. Peter just behind them. how it currently stands as I see uh, McQueen's joined us hope you're enjoying the action that we've seen so far we've had some great race action so far here at Extreme Festival's combined classes regionals and nationals 13 categories in total racing here today non-stop action that we've seen so far in every single category got a yellow flag up towards the top of Leerkop which possibly means there's an issue coming out of uh, the Leocorp triple apex and down the, the mine shaft. Great 
mid-pack battle there for Class D as well. All fighting just as hard as the guys out front and girls out front. <coughs> up to the top of the hill a couple of chopping and changing happening there as you can see MD Bester and Jaden Jaden Wilson fighting for class X King and McNeil Johanna Biscuckney and Tyron Pillay with Carl Watt for class X Chris Schmidt in the second of the horses there That's his way down into Crocodiles so a reminder if you've just joined us as well that it's 20 minute sessions here for each of the categories today which means that you've got to get out of your pit box onto track as quickly as possible to negate any time lost in terms of race action that you can provide George Economy certainly did that rapidly to try and get to the front end of the field and bring that entire pack of GT Sports and Saloons and Triple Ones together which now continues on his merry way and there's not really been troubled by Leonard Archer or by Darby Ulifu. Initially there were some problems from Philip Mayer, but Philip Mayer now has got his own problems of trying to find a way through on uh, the Shield Golf of Wayne Lobotsky. Malspur has been caught by Lucas Besaid Note, as you can see. Besaid so Note closing that gap down in the closing stages. with the safe note all over the back of her trying to find a way past for Pretoria not Toyota but it's the car care clinic lady who continues to lead out Lindsay Clure there in third place behind that there we go change up eventually Philip has found a way through there on that shield golf of Lobotsky and now uh, possibly fourth in the GT class but so far back must have made some kind of mistake out on track that is your leader Economides going into turn one starting to lap some of the super hatch competitors possibly there the Montatoria and Stavaloy in a new car or maybe Tyrant Pillé actually Tyrant Pillé the car from his pit board. Remember they all put on the left hand side of the track there now as they go onto the back straight. And that's why there's so many people hanging over that side wall there on the back straight to give information to their drivers. Martini Racing Colours but of course sponsored by Wealth Avenue. And our leader into the 2019s now. Fastest man on track is George Economides. towards Leacom as such <coughs> as I said initially had a little bit of problems there from Davi Ulifir and from Philip Mayer there might have been a moment between those two cars which is why they've dropped so far back compared to where they were and Economides comes down into the bowl to the right-hander at Crocodiles. Got <laughs> to use the e-racing line that uh, Daniel Rowe was referring to earlier on in Polo Cup. Because he's got a huge margin over Leonard Archer. Seven and a half seconds ahead of Archer for second. And check it flag is coming out. So it's economy needs to take the GT class. Just in the background, that is Archer. Here's Darby Ulifir for third in the GT class for the International Race Supplies BMW team. Top three in GT have gone across the line now, waiting to see that this will be Mal Spur for Class A. It is indeed. Here she comes. Oh no, it's not. It's Besaid Note. Besaid Note has found a way through there on the last lap, and Lucas Besaid Note will take his first win in Class A in a long time there. For no Toyota. Of course, big support coming from Pretoria No Toyota for the SWAT Corps team, and of course, also supplying us that uh, Toyota Corolla GR 
as our official pace car here today at Kailami. So the man from Pretoria North Toyota gets the victory over Miles Square, Lindsay Kirkwood up to third place. Wayne Lobotsky, I think, is going to hang on for the win in Class D. In Class B, I beg your pardon. Mark Toy still fighting hard for honours in Super Hatch. But that Super Hatch class is kind of also mixed up with Alka von Fleder from Class C. Who uh, is fighting on the, in the Bat Lady car. It's the, the Bat insignia. The silver and black golf. There as well as Didi Machila. Or as well as Mo as well. So, uh, so nice fight. Nice race fights amongst our usual contenders in each of the ones sports and saloons. And the GT Sports and Saloons all combined with Super Hatch now wrapped up for their first heat of the day. We're now moving on to, of course, uh, one of our premier classes of the day. It's the South African Touring Cars. And that includes action from the SATC Super Cup category as well.
see from the graphics there, we head into the South African Touring Cars and Super Cup combined. And uh, with them rolling out, the 20 minutes of race action literally start to tick off as those cars roll kind of quickly. Biggest news though, uh, with Daniel Sun sitting alongside me and Daniel Rowe, is the incredible job that WCT did to repair that absolutely destroyed BMW of Robert Volk and allow him to continue his uh, championship uh, run as uh, the pole man for the first race. Look, I think the rule is is that you have to race the car that you qualify in. So you wouldn't be able to change drivers. So I think uh, Michael Stephen was kind of secure in the fact that uh, the Safir BMW would still be his. But um, there might have been a, <laughs> a little uh, call to the COC saying, listen, uh, this is a once-off driver, Michael. Uh, our car is destroyed. Can we get permission to possibly swap out drivers? Whether or not that would have been uh, given to them, we'll have to wait and see. Looking at the way things have gone further back though, the battle in Super Cup certainly heating up. Yeah. First time we have got a Toyota Corolla, uh, Toyota Starlet on the pole with Brad Liebenberg. Yeah, did a fantastic job. Um, I've been able to see the data and uh, yeah, it just looks like he managed to, to hook his lap up really mm. well. Um, no, no real mistakes in his lap. so. And that's what it comes down to. You got to hook that lap if you want pole position in this class. Your teammate alongside him, though, I'm sure is looking forward to uh, emulating what he did in Cape Town, going for another victory with Jonathan Mahotsi lined up alongside Brad. Yeah, both Jono and Shaul did a fantastic job as well in quali. Um, both made silly mistakes that actually also cost them an opportunity to grab that pole position. So the pace is strong. They both have good pace and. Uh, Calvin behind and Keegan, I'm sure, will be right in, in the shot as well. So, close close racing to come, I think. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're expecting. Warming up those Dunlop tyres, getting them uh, all ready to go now. The front row, of course, is Robert Volk and his stable mate, although in a slightly different vehicle to what he's normally used to driving. But uh, they've also done an incredible job, according to Julian yesterday. Remember the last time Julian was here, it all went completely wrong for him, and it uh, put him out for nearly a year and a half. Of racing, so he's in the uh, Golf 8 GTI. It's the uh, lone one of the three that were originally built. But alongside Robert Volk, we'll try and uh, maybe outgun Robbie to the to turn one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always difficult to, to start P2 um, in the rolling start. So um, yeah, hopefully he doesn't uh, he doesn't get jumped by Michael. But if he can get a good start, he could even even put Robbie. Michael Stephen, as you said, alongside uh, Natiem Samanga for the second row. It's uh, Anthony Pretorius and Michael van Rooyen with Saud Variawa, the champion at the back in the Starlet. That car still with a bit of development, but they get going and head down towards Turn 1 as the lights go out for the touring cars. Super Cup come round to start their race. And is it going to be uh, Jonathan Machotzi or Brad Liebenberg who make it down here? Robert Volk capitalizes on the fact that he was on pole. But how's that? Pretorius in the mix between Van Avat and uh, Michael Steven as they go into Turn 1. Yeah, for a second it looked like they were they were actually both past Michael, but Michael obviously managed to sneak up that inside into turn one and uh, and grab second place. Uh, five by five into turn one. <laughs> yeah, super fantastic. Cup. This is super, <laughs> this is super cup for you. Massive battles going on. Oh, something. Ah, oh, there's there. definitely an issue there. Yeah, definitely something an issue coming out of turn number two into barbecue. We head back to the front end of the touring cars, and there's Saud Variawa in the starlet trying to get on the inside of the Corolla of uh, Anthony Pretorius. Did everybody survive coming through there? It looks like Dean Fenter might have been a car that had a bit of an issue there. The 7-7 car right at the back. We didn't see exactly what went wrong, but as no. you said, it looked like there might have been an issue there. Yeah, it looks like we've lost uh, we've lost the Starlet in one of our our polos, so something's definitely happened there. Yeah, the Starlet's gone missing the front car there from Brad Liebenberg's point of view. So he's gone yeah. uh, to the back or possibly off circuit where he didn't quite see yeah. exactly what went wrong in barbecue. Keegan's managed to capitalize on that. I mean, he started P5 and he's in the lead. 
in the lead heading to the top of the hill with uh Jono still there There's Jono, Jono yeah. behind Tate so something happened between uh between Jono and uh Bradley it seems maybe a little touch there maybe a little rubbing's racing the GR boys are in full flight but they're behind the uh their old car of Anthony Pretorius the OMP and the SA Touring Cars the machine there coming out of fast developments it's uh, the leading Toyota at the stage with the two BMs out front with that Golf GTI 8 Diaz Calvin putting the pressure on as he starts to close the gap down onto the back end of uh, Fissa and is that Tate Bishop just ahead yes it is Tate Bishop just ahead there of Charles Fissa yeah, Michael Steven putting pressure on Robbie with uh, Julian right behind him so nice three way battle at the moment for P1 and uh, yeah they must remember they do have a three time uh, what was he C champion in the mix there so uh, exactly yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he tries to pass Robbie <laughs> don't, don't, don't take away the, the three-time GDC champion, but also, of course, uh, I think it's about 17 national titles that Michael Stephen holds in his own right. So he certainly knows what to do. There is a troubled car on the yeah, sideline heading to the top of the hill. There. Just missed it on the timing monitor there being on our screen with that graphic, but we might pick up on him as these cars make their way towards him. So Robert Volk and Michael Stephen in formation flying there for... Uh, the Invest Chem and WCT team, their teammate right on their tail in the Golf 8 GTI. I think Michael Stephen probably not going to be worried too much about scoring points here. Maybe he just wants to show what he's still capable of doing. But he might have uh, also some team orders there to run sort of uh, the tail going to roll to keep the rest of the field at bay. Yeah, he might. We'll have to see uh, later in the race. It looks like he's uh, at the moment he wants to pass. But if we go to Super Cup, Charles has dropped third now behind uh, Diaz, Dominic Diaz, so uh, yeah, still in the mix and John is right up uh, behind him, so yeah, hopefully hopefully uh, we have a nice little tussle here for P1. Yeah, Jason Campos was a welcome return for him, we haven't mentioned him earlier on, but he is in the mix there and uh, just tucked in behind Jonathan McCorty, so the two Campos brothers back in uh, full race effect another lap is completed here for the touring cars that is Keegan leading out officer diving on the inside trying to find a line through there on the Kemi machine but uh, Dom had him covered and then you can see Jason Campos in the turn one car ahead of Tate and then we see Jonathan Mahotzi so Mahotzi battling a little bit to find a way back through on Tate Bishop after that little uh, first lap incident yeah it looks so but um Michael Stephen definitely putting the pressure on Robbie so I don't think he's uh, he's settling for second um, and, and interesting, we've got all the German brands in the top three. So, um, yeah, a little bit strange. Toyotas were right up the, at the front last season, and this season they're having a little bit of a struggle early on. So, uh, yeah, let's see if they can if they can maybe make a comeback. I, in I, chatted, I chatted to Michael von Royen about that actually, and he said, you know, the change up to the hatchbacks was, was wasn't quite expected to be. Um, the, the, they lost a little bit of the pace that they got from the, the, the sort of the saloon car version, which Pretorius, of course, is in. He said that the hatchbacks sort of battle a little bit with uh, some downforce issues on the on the rear end of those cars. Speaking of the rear end, also picking up on the only master out there, of course, for Team Perfect Circle, that's Andre Besaidnot, also making a welcome return into uh, the Super Cup class. Yeah, definitely. And uh, coming in with a new livery as well, mm. Perfect Circle livery, and it looks fresh and fantastic. So... I love the look of that car and uh, nice to see him back. Using it basically for uh, a bit of uh, rubbing of the rust and getting rid of the, the cobwebs for hill climb in three weeks time. But uh, needless to say, still in with a chance of a master's victory here. He's the only master in that class today. Change up here as well as we see uh, move up from Julian van der Butt into second and Michael Steven down to third. Um, and that might be just Michael hanging in there going, okay, you two boys are my teammates, you go and fight it out. Yeah. There's no team orders for you. My team orders are to keep the rest of the, the uh, Toyotas behind us. I think you've got that spot on. I think uh, Julian showed good pace. And uh, obviously, although his teammates with Robbie, he's entitled to, to take the fight to him. Um, mm. You know, he also wants to win a championship. So, Michael just letting him go to try and do that. And, uh, and we speak about Michael Stevens' experience. Let me tell you something. Julian van der Vaart's had a huge uh, uh, career on his, on his hands as well. You know, being international single seaters for a long time. Um, uh, uh, Formula 1600 champion as well in his own right so he knows what to do in a race car and of course wants to sort of turn his luck around here I think with the fastest lap being put in in the GTI now yeah for sure and it looks like uh, this season something's just clicked and worked for him he seems to be right up there um, 
this season compared to the previous season. Not that he wasn't fast, he just looks a little bit more composed and, uh, and fresher and a little bit more patient. No, he certainly looks comfortable in the golf this year, that's for sure, I have to say. I saw that yesterday in practices as well. Ooh, out of shape, Jono! Where are you going, boy? Yeah, pushing just a little bit too hard there. I think he's, just, he's probably just a little bit frustrated um, to find himself in the position that he's in. Um, yeah, obviously having some difficulty to try and get through. No difficulties there for Keegan Campos. Dom Diaz, Fissa, then it's uh, Jason Campos. Campos uh, through now on Bishop. So Tate Bishop now trying to come back at Jason. Trying to find a way back at him as they go into the S's. We're watching uh, Mahotsi behind that as well. He's got Calvin Diaz right on his tail. So pressure is certainly on. Haven't also mentioned the fact return of Tata Carello. There he is, just in the shot there. The pink and purple sort of light blue livery. Heading to the, uh, the top of the hill towards the Cup as the touring cars start another lap. Yeah, also great to see Tata back in the, in the field. Uh, nice to to be brothers. Um, and just mention that as well, yeah. the man behind him in the 27 car, JP van yeah, missed Fennevald. the first race due to an injury. Yeah. Um, and he's of course also doing the same thing as what uh, Andre Besaden is doing for Team Perfect Circle here. He's getting some uh, seat time in the car to make sure that he's ready to go for uh, possibly four out of four wins in the road car class at Hill Climb in a few weeks' time. Yeah, he's definitely got a, a nice uh, streak of the Hill Climb and uh, it be great to see all these guys continuing in the Super Cup Series for the rest of the season. Um, we're making for some great racing today. I just love the fact there's 16 of them, bud. 16 <laughs> of them. It's just brilliant. Um, I, I did hear sort of via Rion, uh, I kind of kind of got him on the, on the spot last time as he joined me in the commentary booth last, the last time in Cape Town, that there are uh, potentially a couple more starlets that are on the cards and uh, some customers that are looking to buy those starlets to come and be part of Super Cup. And that's exactly what we need, just to boost the field even more. We've got a pass. Oh, change up for the lead. Oh, Julian there we Fanavad go. Fanavad takes the lead. Fanavad hits the lead, but he's uh, on the outside of a very tricky left-hander at the bottom end of the mine shaft but it becomes the inside for crocodile so no yeah. wasn't able to make it stick had a big look though be great, Cox, be great, uh, uh, for me if vw can take this win <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you're shouting out uh, there big time i'm shouting out for julian in this one <laughs> go vw all right so it's a, a vw fan on our left hand side here as he comes oh, on the inside down. he's got the inside oh, line what a great move that is a good move what a great move this is Robbie onto the eSport line and uh, comes out uh, and crosses the line first time with Panavat at the front end of the field. Is he quickest on that lap? No, Marcus Steven I think might have been quickest. So uh, ooh, we're in for an epic finish to this one. Still hanging onto that inside line, looking for a chance. Rob Volk chance to cut back and look at a slightly different line going into uh, Crowthorn. Alive. This is the way we start things out here for uh, SA Touring Cars and the GT, uh, the Super Cup cars combined. And it's Julian van der Vatten who hits the front for the first time. And now he's there. He wants to try and secure that lead. Yeah, I think uh, of the passes I've seen in the SATG series this year, for me that's so far pass, pass of the season. Yeah. Great maneuvering to the last corner. And uh, He kind of set things up coming out of West Bank or out of uh, Leocorp. Yeah, I, I, think he caught, I think he caught Robbie napping there. Robbie was probably, had already looked in the rearview mirror, looked forward and uh, when he looked again, Julian was, uh, was sticking his nose up there and he didn't really have much to do. And he's pulling slightly as well then, Jenny. Yeah, he seems to have great, great uh, race pace in this race. So, uh, yeah, he looks comfortable, composed, like we mentioned, and, yeah, coming into his own. Fortunately, trying race. to come back here, Jason Campos coming out of the uh, XK Barbecue. Tate Bishop behind them, Calvin just in the background, then Tata Carello, JP for the vault, and the Platinum Wheels machine going through there, just ahead of Cara Hill. I think we missed the pass there because I see uh, Don has managed, managed to get past Tate Bishop. Yes. And uh, yeah, he's now uh, on, on the, the bumper of Jason Campos. Trying to find a way through there on that turn one car of Jason Campos. That's not an easy man to get past in this category either. Both himself and his brother, uh, seasoned campaigners in their own rights in various formats of motorsport. But they certainly did find a really nice niche here in Super Cup when they were in, in full time. And it looks like they might be back full time here now as well the two turn one cars and uh, campus transport machines yeah nice to see them back up onto the top of the hill there you can see Tato ahead of JP for first time we see him in full flight up into Leocop 
And as I said, it's just good to see him behind the wheel of the car. Dusting off those cobwebs, making sure that all the injuries that were uh, done. Oh, Jono, nice. massive pressure. I don't think he held, I don't think he backed off there. He was flat, flat, Jono flat. Jono is on rails at the moment. He's really trying everything. Definitely got a lot more pace than Jason at the moment. I think Jay's days are numbered there. Let's see if he can pull a bit of a Julian van der Vat on us here into the final corner. No, not quite close enough there is Jason Campos. Oh, Jason but he runs wide. wide. He runs wide with pressure. That's enough nice pressure there. The Maybe some cobwebs. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. And John has made that uh, position. And so P4 up to fourth. Nice comeback drive. Yeah, nice comeback drive there. Tate Bishop's going to try and capitalize as well. You can see looking for a chance to maybe spoil the day there for Jason Campos even more as they head down towards Crowthorn. Yeah. As they come out of Crowthorn, a little bit of a change up there, but uh, not, not able to make it stick. Two BM still sitting second and third. So yeah. it's fun of that dictating the pace up front but we've also got Anthony Pretorius from fourth place that's closed on them so he's, uh, he's very close to that battle so um, yeah too much fighting and uh, Toyota is uh, on the back bump of Michael Stevens so I'm sure Michael Stevens will try to help his his teammates up front to keep that Toyota at bay but fun of it looks like he's on for the win here but really, really well today so Good exit out the corners. Not sure how many push the passes they got left. And one to go. To the last <laughs> Daniel Sun sitting here on the edge of the seat going, can we get a GTR victory? <laughs> oh, the BM's going to spoil his day. Tate Bishop using the push to pass as they go to the top. In fact, trying to close things down there on Diaz. The two of them trying to get onto the back end once again of uh, Jason Campos and Mahotzi. And I think there might have been a little push to pass there as well from uh, Robert Volk. Has he come in and had some fun to close that gap down on his uh, stable mate? Julian just needs to keep, keep the, the lap clean, don't make uh, any unnecessary mistakes. He doesn't need to push, he just needs to make sure that uh, Robbie's not going to make a move on the, on the inside anywhere. Looking at the way things stand there, you picked up on the fact that it's the three German brands out front, GTI versus BMW. One, two, and three. The leading Toyota is the non factory car from OMP and SATC colors on the side of that one coming out of fast developments. Anthony Victoria is doing an amazing job there in fourth place to keep out Michael Van Royen, the champion Saud Variawa, and Natiem Samanga, who I thought from the initial stages yesterday and on Thursday looked like he might be in contention for a win here. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, you never know what the teams are doing um, in practice days and when it comes to quality. They unleash uh, the real pace, so yeah, definitely got some work to do there. To change things around there, but of course, so uh, we do have a, a slightly different format for uh, race number two later on. But uh, heading down into Crocodiles, Fanavat has kept it clean, he's kept uh, about two car lengths ahead of Robert Volk. It's going to be WCT one, two, and three. But uh, Daniel, I'm going to say to you, listen, can you give me a couple of numbers tonight for the lotto, man? Because <laughs> you called us to perfection. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think Julian really deserved that win. Really worked hard for it, and uh, super performance from uh, the uh, One, two, and three there with his teammate Walt and Michael Steven behind that. And of course, Michael Steven substituting for Andrew Schofield this weekend. And once again, we send our condolences out there to the Schofield family for uh, the sad loss in the week. But it's not done yet because we've still got to get our Super Cup class there. And Tate Bishop inside of Jason Campos coming onto the mineshaft. Yeah, really uh, trying one in the last lap. Jason just seemed to, to lack that pace in this race. It's the best, best finish here for uh, Diaz, second yeah. place in Super Cup. Fantastic pace in the, in the race today. Yeah, Dominic Diaz, kept his, he's also kept his wheels clean and uh, nose clean in terms of the action. Charles Fisser kind of going to try and hang on to what would potentially be I think championship lead if he finishes in third year so no, uh, I think I think Keegan Campos will maintain that championship oh no he will yes no, he will yeah. yeah. so Charles will close the second in championship right? yeah move up to second nice run there from JP van der Valt as well as I said just shaking off those cobwebs down in 16th overall but we'll finish up in the top 10 for Super Cup the platinum wheels machine just behind Tata Corella. Good friends and good mates off the circuit, but of course, our travels on it. And that's a lot of the time what we see in our race section that we've got at Extreme Festival. There's lots of our travelry, but uh, it's left on the track and uh, left to uh, be sorted out amongst the uh, competitors when they're out there. Good run for Keegan Campos. Yeah. 
Dominic Diaz, uh, best finish for him, and Schalfus for third. Yeah, Dominic Diaz, I think, driver and driver of the day in the Super Cup so far. Fantastic result. Great pace hanging on to the leader as well, and our championship leader. So, uh, yeah, great job by Dominic, and uh, interesting, it would be interesting to see what happened in that first lap. Yeah, um, unfortunately, we didn't that catch first, it. The but, first uh, two corners there. But, Brad uh, Liebenberg going missing literally into barbecue for the first time. We didn't quite pick up exactly what happened, but we might have picked it up for the TV show. Remember, we've still got the post-production to come, and we might get that action either from onboard or from our cameraman, because all of our cameras, of course, are recording the action that happens, even though we might not go to that action at that point in time on the live stream. Remember, we do have a post-production show that goes out in about two weeks' time, and uh, Astron Polo Cup, the SA Touring Cars, and Investigate Formula 1600s make up that post-production show on Ignition. So hopefully we'll get that at, we'll to show that in that in that show. I'm going to go check some uh, footage now and see what happened. Yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> I'm going to ask I'm you to curious. bring some. If you're coming back later, bring me something to eat, bro, because uh, we're not <laughs> going to get a chance to have a pee here. But uh, there you go. Up next, it is Extreme Supercars, driven by Dunlop. And we'll be back shortly here from Carl Army and the Extreme Festival.
so close in Cape Town, buddy. I mean, you guys were lucky. I think we took the, the differential of about less than half a second over both races. But today, you seem to have found something special here, Kyle Army. And I think that's exactly what you needed to try and extend this lead in the championship. 100% Greg, um, we were definitely uh, we were in December racing and that definitely helped us with the minimum practice time that we had here. Um, yeah, got quality pole position, race one win, hopefully can follow up in race two. It's not going to be easy though, I mean you've got uh, a whole bunch of cars around in the hotel. Jason is more unfortunate, didn't quite have the starting point and lost a little bit of ground. But it gave in a couple of other guys that thrown into the mix as well and I think that's one thing that most people have done. So we're back here at Kyle Army for Extreme Festival. Apologies on that. Uh, Paul, I think we forgot to pull the music down over that interview with uh, Nathan Victor, the winner of uh, the first heat of the Astron Energy Polo Cup. So apologies, I'm getting about 5 million WhatsApps to tell me that. And I even got Megan from Kyle Army that uh, phoned me to say that uh, the music was still playing. So apologies on that one. We only have two people in the uh, studio doing all of the work that uh, a studio team of only 10 would normally do. So, yeah, thanks for giving us the heads up there, guys. Apologies, though. Uh, we will try and remember to turn that music down while we're doing the interviews. But uh, needless to say, it was with uh, Nathan Victor, your race one winner from the Astron Energy Polo Cup. 
And up next, we're heading into race action from Extreme Supercars. And the Extreme Supercars driven by Dunlop this year as they make their way around the circuit for their 20 minute session. As I said, and as you've probably heard all race day long so far, it's 20 minutes per category. That's right, so that as you roll out of pit lane, your 20 minutes starts to tick off. So it means that you need to get around the track as quickly as possible to ensure that you don't lose race time. And uh, with these cars, they potentially have got uh, the, uh, the best ability to do that. Try and get around the track as quickly as possible and not to negate any race time lost as they come into their first race of uh, this weekend's double header of Extreme Supercars and Extreme Festival being both the regional and national categories combined. Stuart White will be on pole position. He, of course, is in the Lamborghini Hurricane. Alongside him, it will be Franco Scribanti. Jonathan Detoy and Silvio Scrivanti just behind that. Then Zolila Latlaka and Aldo Scrivanti. That is your class A plus and GT3 cars. Other than, of course, Gianni Giannacaro, who is uh, out there in the R34 Nissan GTR. You can see the back of the field starting to pick up the pace ever so slightly as they come around now. We'll try and form up into formation for the race start. As they come through there, you can also pick up on Damian Hammond, making a welcome return to the series in the Lamborghini Gallardo. Trofeo, and as they cross the line <coughs> for the first time, we go racing as those lights go out, and it's 16 minutes and 45 seconds that we've got to race as uh, Franco Scramanti opens up the wick and disappears ahead of the hard-charging Stuart White, who got caught ever so slightly off the line there by the power of that Porsche from uh, Scramanti. For a big race here as they head into uh, some big action right on the word go and looking forward to uh, what's going to happen in that mid pack as well as they head into a very very big start here for extreme supercars driven by Dunlop Jonathan Detoy ahead now of Silvio Scribanti Scribanti's got uh, the hard charge coming from XO on his tail and as they come flying through there you can see Nathan Hammond under a bit of pressure there as uh, that's the uh, Bobcat and Gosco car sneaking through there the Audi of uh, Ari Nebelin and I believe there's also a big contingent of Gosco fans in the house as well about 200 of them parked up at one of the corners and uh, loving the fact that they're seeing their man in full flight trying to get to the front end as quickly as possible as you can see it's a bit of a fight on here between all of the big supercars out front including uh, a new car out there as well and uh, being piloted there of course it's the McLaren which is uh, normally in the hands of uh, somebody else this time out. It's great to see uh, John Acaro stepping up into that McLaren for the first time and uh, seeing that he's uh, decided to change his allegiance ever so slightly and gone from the Italian brands into the British brands. As they cross the line for the first time, it is Franco Scrimanti leading things out. And he's the man to catch as we're into this first heat of extreme supercars driven by Dunlop. Stuart White in second on a 45-0, but a 43-996 is the first lap there from Franco Scribanti. Jonathan Dutoy in third place, Silvio Scribanti in fourth ahead of Zulila Latlaka and Chris Badnik. And as they get into the thick of it now, you can see they're all going to start to sort things out there. Badnik trying to close onto the back end of EXO. And as you can see, they are both on the tailpiece there of that Semza and Scuderia Scribanti Lamborghini of Silvio. Silvio Scribanti hangs on for now for that fourth spot, but uh, it's not going to be an easy fourth spot to get. Jonathan Detoy with a little bit of breathing room between himself and Scribanti. Exo looking into uh, Clubhouse. Can't make it stick though. As uh, we go into Clubhouse corner, you can see the big B10 Dodge Viper closing onto the back end there of Zolila Latlaka. Gianni Giannacaro just behind that. Then it's Aldo Scribanti, Arnie Nieveling and Ricky Giannacaro. That's your top 10 as we're into the thick of it. But right now, it is Franco Scribanti dominating at the front end uh, in the Class A plus category ahead of Stuart White. And then it would be Zalila Latlaka in third place in A plus, but fifth place on the road. Jonathan Detoy will lead out the GD3 class. He's ahead of Silvio Scribanti. And then it'll be Gianni Giannacaro, third in the GT3 category as it stands on track at the moment I did speak to Franco yesterday and he was saying that there was a bit of a 
a fuel pump issue on that car, so uh, they have to just take it easy. He can't run it in full flight mode that he'd like to because they seem to be just having some overheating issues, so he's running it at a slightly diminished amount of uh, the potential power that Porsche has. But needless to say, it's still got enough to have the straight line speed to keep him at the front and ahead of Stuart White, who's just gone quicker. Stuart White now down to a 43.199. Fastest lap of the race so far. Not quite a lap record, I don't think, just yet. I think the 40, 42.9-ish is where we were looking at for lap records for this car, for these cars in the past. As they come flying through there, nice and start. Awesome stuff, thank you, sir. As we get into the thick of it now for the very first time, into watching that number 27 car of Stuart White try and close the gap down on Franco Scramanti. This first race of Extreme Supercars driven by Dunlop, of course, is one that all of the crowds have come out here to see. And we've got some big crowds at Kailami, which is great to see again. And a record amount of entries for any format of racing here at Kailami set today. Ricky John Acaro in the McLaren. First time out for him. Top 10 finish and looking possibly for a win in Class A. But at this stage, he's quite a way back on Chris Budnick, who is the first of the Class A competitors in that V10 Dodge Viper. Big move on the inside there from Stuart White, trying to find a way through on the Porsche in front of him. As you, as you can see though, watch. This is where we might be able to see it if we stay with these two cars. White able to close up in the tricky bits, and under braking, he gets alongside Franco. But watch the straight line speed of that Porsche out of the corner. And its ability to drag along the long straight with a short the small kink that heads towards Crowthorn. That's what keeps Franco at the front end. Just that straight line, there it is. Great example of that straight line speed of the Porsche versus the, the Lamborghini Hurricane in second. Remember Stuart White and Franco are on unlimited cars, so there's no restrictions on those cars. Whereas Jonathan de Toy's Lamborghini Hurricane runs in the GT3 spec which is a slightly uh, lesser powered car because of the restrictions that they put onto the GT3 class. Another man, of course, making his way through rapidly there in the GT3 class is Arnie Nierveling. He's just found his way up into uh, one position higher than what he was. And Ari, of course, running in those Bobcat and Goscore colors for Stradale uh, Motorsport, doing a superb job so far for his team, considering the fact that they had to change a couple of sensors yesterday afternoon after practice. And they've had no chance to test that other than when they rolled out now for race number one. So whatever those sensor changes they did seem to have worked. And he's now looking for a way through and possibly close things down on uh, Chris Budnick in the Dodge. This is uh, Damien Hammond. I can return to him as I said. Here is Stuart White trying something different around the outside of Franco. Can he make a stick? Yes, he can. Oh, that's an amazing move there from Stuart White. Around the outside of the Porsche. And Franco gave him some room to play because I think he knows that if he can close things down here on Stuart White, he'll still be able to get past him in terms of straight line speed. Porsche versus Lamborghini. Here it comes. Lambo out of the final corner, sliding. Oh, problems there, unfortunately, for Peter Zeely. Zeely in the Lotus. He's parked it on the sideline and off the circuit completely. So uh, that's uh, a sad loss there. One of the Lotus competitors parked on the sideline. Back to the GNH Transport Colors of that McLaren this time out. First time we've seen there, those colours on the car. Also a change up there as well, Zorilia Latlak ahead of Silvio Scrabanti and pulling away now from him in a big way there. Confirmation of that on the shot right now. And then it's Badnik in sixth place with Arnie Nevelin trying to close things down on him. Arnie Nevelin certainly the man on the move. One of the fastest cars out there is that Bobcat Goscore Audi and they're looking to try and close things down now. Stuart White's at the front. He's pulled a little margin, and with that little margin, I don't think Franco's had an answer to him just yet. So let's see whether or not he can keep it all together here at the front end. 27 on that car. Good number on that car, by the way, Stuart White. And we're running for, of course, into Africa Mining and uh, Sparker and Worth SA as the sponsors of that machine. But that Hurricane now trying to get away and stay away from the all-conquering Porsche after Franco Scrimanti racing. Jonathan de Toy still in third place. No changes there for him. He'll maintain the lead of GT3s over Silvio Scrimanti. And then Gianni Giannacaro down in eighth overall. 
think he might have just lost out to Arnie. Yeah, Arnie Neveling has now taken the lead of, or, or taken the third place away from him in the GD3 class. So to the line we go for race action. Oh, Silvio spins out at the bottom of the mineshaft. Silvio Scramanti spinning out there in the Semza and Scuderia Scramanti Lamborghini Hurricane. And he seems to be stricken. That's a dangerous position. Possibilities of a safety car could be coming here. We'll have to wait and see what they say. Unless that uh, Lamborghini gets going pretty shortly, they may need to call for a safety car. We'll keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the marshals on the sideline as well to see whether or not that safety car board gets brought out. Because he's still stuck there. That is a very dangerous position. And you can see Silvio running away from the car. Good idea to get away and out of harm's way as quickly as possible. There'll be double yellow wave flags at the top of the hill, but there's no marshal point down the mine shaft until you get to the bottom of the mine shaft. So uh, let's uh, wait and see what the call is going to be. Here's uh, brother Aldo closing things down now on Gianni. Gigi under a bit of pressure there from them. So this is a nice start here for Stuart White, exactly what he wanted. Try and beat the all-conquering Porsche. And Franco, as I said, had has a couple of issues on the car with some overheating so uh, they've decided to just turn back the wick ever so slightly stationary yellow flag coming out of Leokop it'll be double yellows down into the bottom but I'm sure by the time those cars have gone through they'll realize that there's a problem at the bottom of the mine shaft seeing the bright yellow car on the outside of uh, that turn <coughs> but Nick have, having to uh, now try and uh, come back at the all-conquering Bobcat Gosco Audi out of Stradale Motorsport of Arnie Neveling. No answer there from the big V10. Stuart White already onto the main straight. Heading to the line and possibly into the closing stages of this one. And we've still got no last lap board just yet. So I'd say possibly onto penultimate lap. Oh, a spinner. The 997 Porsche has spun out there of Roy Obery. And right in front of the Audi and right in front of Stuart White as well. White goes around his outside. Uh, Marius Jackson, I think, in the Audi, and uh, the other Audi there, of course. It's actually Jimbo, yeah. Jimbo Donacaro in that uh, second Audi, the silver one. Marius Jackson, of course, is in the uh, slightly different color, the purple liveried machine there, out of MJR. So uh, Jimbo Donacaro just spinning and avoiding the spinning Porsche of Roy Obery. But this man has not put a wheel wrong since he's at the front. He's coming up onto the back end of Ant Blunden. And Blunden will be well aware of the, the slight difference in terms of pace between the Lamborghini Hurricane piloted by one of SA's finest drivers there, Stuart White. There's Gianni still under a bit of pressure there from Hammond. Gianni and Hammond fighting hard as they go into it. But uh, some uh, race action still to be sorted out here before the, the chicken flag comes out, that is for sure. Stuart White's days are not done yet as we get into the closing stages. Jonathan de Toy still in third place, but leading Class GT3. Double wave yellows now coming out of Leokop. Warning the drivers of that car. The stricken Semza Lamborghini on the outside. Obri goes through. Jimbo goes through. Here comes Jono. Jono won't pass until he's got through to the green flag. That's good driving there from Jonathan de Toy, realizing that they're still under yellow flags at the bottom of the mine shaft. Speaking of flags, it's a red one. Red flag comes out, which means they'll go one lap back. They've completed six in total. They'll go one back, which will give Stuart White still the victory over Franco Scramanti and Jonathan Detoy in third place overall. We'll get into the classes as soon as uh, Paul puts up the graphic there at the end of uh, this race, which has been called due to the fact that we've got that Lamborghini stuck on the outside of that uh, treacherous turn, if you get it wrong through there, I can tell you. Uh, the mine shaft in these cars are probably going to be close to over the 230k an hour mark. And uh, well, Franco Scamacci will have to try and do it again in race number two later on this afternoon. So most of the cars rolling into pit lane. Some of them didn't get a chance to go all the way around. Some of them went straight into pit lane. But confirmation, it is Stuart White from Scribanti, Franco Scribanti. Uh Third place, Jonathan Detoy, but he takes the win in GT3s. He will beat out Arnie Neveling and Gianni Giannacaro for the top three in GT3 with the demise there of Silvio Scribanti. Class A plus Stuart White from Franco Scribanti. And then it'll be Zolila Latlaka who will take class places. Third place, class B. 
Should be Damien Hammond, or is it Ricky Jonakoro? Oh, I say it's Ricky Jonakoro. Um, or is it Badnik? No, it's Badnik. Badnik will take Class A. Ricky Jonakoro will come through for second in Class A. And then Class B. Jackson get up there now. he's an A plus call. class B yeah Damien Hammond so that's how things wrap up for the first heats of today's race action from Extreme Festival we've got a car to clear we've got a little bit of a circuit cleanup coming your way now as well before we get into the next part of the day's racing but uh, also just the news that uh, of course Geordie and Calvin at the Nürburgring 24 hour car is also car number 27 coming there from uh, Ian Pepper so thanks for that Peps appreciate that buddy but uh, we've got a bit of a break in the proceedings now so uh, as soon as we uh, have got a track clearance and we are good to go we come back to you with Kazoo Racing and Heat 2 of all of the classes here at the Combined Extreme Festival for Nationals and Regionals Paulie you can now mute me for a little bit
All right, so it looks like we're back into race action once again here for Extreme Festival's combined day of regional and national championship categories. And uh, first up is the second heat of the Toyota Gazoo Racing GR Cup featuring the 86 League, <laughs> the Yaris League, and now our GR Corolla Cup as well. So uh, media at the back, young guns at the front, and alongside me in studio, Rian Estazen from Toyota Gazoo Racing. And uh, it's good to have him here because I didn't quite get a chance to um, find out the initial reasoning for bringing the Yaris's back in. But having a chat now as we got the guys out on track, um, getting their tyres all warmed up, uh, a nice initiative to bring the Yaris's back. Yeah? Thank you, Greg. So, yeah, I mean, we've, we've obviously had these assets and the GR Yaris's we fielded in 2022, in the inaugural year of GR Cup. And we've brought them back out the hands of five of our dealers so there's a bit of a backstory there as well <laughs> so what we've, we've done we've rolled out something called GR Zone which is really a bespoke like GR shop and shop experience mm -hmm. with specific um, GR setup there a GR master technician a GR master sales staff and merchandise etc etc so a real bespoke GR setup within the dealership the first one being at Motors Bedford View and the other four dealers on the track there are the, the next four to adopt this GR zone that will receive GR zone so now they truly have uh, a stake in the game being on track and campaigning the GR Yaris and of course that just bodes well for sales of the vehicles too I'm sure because you know um, the old adage was is what wins on Saturday sells on Monday so if you've got your actual dealer at the wheel of the car, as I'm just adjusting my, my power bank here, um, they're going to be able to say, listen, I've driven this thing on a racetrack. I know exactly how it can perform and uh, what it can do in terms of its performance as a, as a race car and now as a road car. Now, there's nothing better than that real world experience and I think that has impressed everyone that has campaigned these cars, whether it be the 86s, GR86, GR Yaris or GR Carrera, is how it translates from road car into actual performance race car mm. and and now as you say they can get a an actual taste of it's not just sales talk well first, first round experience. in cape town we didn't have Saad in, in the the front end with the 86s but he is definitely back in full force now and he gave darby a bit of a run for their money if you look at the way that the the qualifying went with the qualifying that we had to do at kyle army with the only 20 minute session you actually had the 286s up there running almost the same kind of times as the Aris guys and uh, and the Corolla guys were doing. So if you had to run them sort of mano a mano, you could probably have a nice little mix up there, wouldn't you? I think you'd have a very mixed pack and especially the top six would be a bit of everything. And here as they kick off, exactly. let's see how the action unfolds. Well, they head down towards Crowthorn for the very first time and it's Darby Funamava looking for a chance to get that whole shot again. It looks like he might have the ability to get there as we come around with the uh, media challenge in the Corollas and of course the Yaris dealers involved there. They will not quite get into race formation, but needless to say, they're still going to get a green light or the lights off to go racing. Up in towards Barbecue and New Yorkscape for the first time. Yeah, once again, as we saw, the, the, the top two kind of in their own mix, but the second battle on track lost was uh, pretty interesting and already getting up close and personal with some touches um, coming out of barbecue there. Some oversteer action there. Yeah, pretty much. You know all about that. You were in the, some of these cars last year, so you know exactly what they're able to do and, and the capabilities of the cars are. But uh, when I look at the, the sort of Yaris setup compared to the, the Corolla setup as we're watching the 86s heading down towards Clubhouse Corner, is that the 777 under pressure? Yes, indeed. So Sachaba Mashigo, your media winner last year, giving the chance to step up into the uh, into the 86 league this year a completely different machine but not for him everybody else is in new machinery he's used to that rear wheel drive he's used to the vehicle but it, it's testament to how the or the level of talent within this gr86 development program is that sechaba is having to self-admission he says having to work for work for his position here um that uh, just the talent and the skill and how quickly the guys have progressed in the GR86s has really set him on his toes. Well, progress being made big time here by Sashini. Actually, Sahini, I should say, is uh, up into the front end of the field. And uh, it looks like he's under a bit of pressure there from uh, possibly Mario D'Souza. Didn't quite get the delivery on the side of that car, but it looked like Mario D'Souza just sandwiching uh, himself in between the uh, top runners for the Corolla side of things. So Sean Nurse not quite at the front like he has been from the word go. 
uh, indefinitely. Sean has a challenge on his hands this week, weekend, and I think that might have been Paul DeFoss, actually, which could be runs up. our GR Driving Academy. There he's on screen now. Yeah, it is. It's DeFoss in second. So apologies on that one. It's just to try and pick up on those livery. You know the livery a bit better than I do at this stage, but we'll get to it eventually. Darby setting the pace initially out front with the fastest lap so far, but here we go. Alex leading things out over to Foss, and then Sean Nurse tucked in behind that. So uh, some some fun games to be had there. So in fact, no, it's not even. It's not Alex. I thought it was. It's actually uh, Mario de Souza. So yeah, a little bit of a change up in terms of the way that the the front end of the media and the Yaris dealer teams boys are, are having some fun games. So yeah, don't worry. Our, our timing is a little bit out there. I'm uh, also picking up. That's definitely Shahini in the in the car car out front there. So car car, sorry, car magazine car. Auto Trader sitting in third place, but there once again, there's the Motors Toyota in fourth. If you look at the the sort of mix up between the Yaris and the Corollas, it's one for one there, which is quite nice to see actually. Great to see a mixture of of the two the two models battling it out at the front. And we look a little bit further up the road in the 86s, Darby versus Saad kind of expected to see that but a little bit closer this time from Nico and much closer from our Zimbabwean Dylan Praji. So Praji heads up in fourth place and now as they come down into Clubhouse Corner a little bit closer there from the Fossil's point of view he closes in on Alex Sahini and it looks like he might be under a bit of pressure there because Sean Nurse is coming along for the ride as well. Three-way fight for the media versus the dealers as they head up towards Leocop. And Nurse has not been bettered yet, so this will be an interesting little manoeuvre. Is he going to wait till later on to try and make a move? Remember, he's only got 20 minutes, and hopefully they're going to be watching the, the clocks inside the cars, because that's the only way they're going to be able to be told whether or not they're going to be finishing up. You can't put a... Uh, I know we're putting a last lap board out, but the last lap board literally only comes out with that last lap to go. So if you haven't timed it to perfection, you might run out of time rapidly. And you can see here uh, they're starting to change their minds, trying to bring in new tactics and put the opponent in front under pressure definitely a good battle at the front there <laughs> i am going to mention the fact you know daniel came into the studio earlier on and he's he does a lot of sim racing at kyle army and he was watching a couple of these guys that come from sim racing using those sim racing <laughs> lines so i think uh, much of the same happens in the front here of uh, Amelia versus dealers nurse to second so there's a nice move there from sean Merce up in the second place putting the foss down one position and three of them just pulling away slightly there from D'Souza. Uh, in the background also picked up on Yaka van der and Johan Sneijman. So the two of them having a little bit of a fight of their own. So they're fighting kind of like two by two all the way through here. Yeah? These three sticking pretty much together though. And a return. Oh, that's nice. The Foss running very late into turn one to get up the inside of Sean Nurse and return the favour. That has an out Alex Shaini in the car, magazine car, to bit of a head start and or, or a gap I should say and similarly there Yaku Fadamarva just edging out the pack behind him yeah and the pack behind him also there also to mention Kumbi uh, first time out of Kalani battled a little bit was sort of uh, sort of thrown into I think a bit of baptism of fire for Kumbi but I think he sort of kind of got into his own now and he's uh, feeling a bit more comfortable in the car definitely seat time is the most important thing and, and having done this myself um, it's not as easy as it looks mm. uh, when you watch it on the screen and it's a learning curve all the way but so rewarding when when it comes together oh, it certainly is that's the way we want and uh, I'm, I'm telling you now Sahini is itching for a victory he'd love to have that car magazine machine of his out front but DeFoss is keeping him honest and uh, I think DeFoss is being kept honest big time by Sean Nurse Auto Trader Man, late on the brakes. Watch for the different line that Nurse will use here compared to the Foss. It's interesting to see how Sean Nurse, with a little bit of race experience compared to the other media contingent out there, could potentially use that to his advantage. But then you look at the Foss with his driver driving, a uh, driver training ability, using slightly different lines as well. So making it difficult for Nurse to get by. Another lap completed for the 86 League. No changes there. Davi van der Merwe, unfortunately, I don't know what's happened with our timing. It's gone off completely on our screen. But if, Paul, if you can put that up on the side for us, it would help us because your uh, tab, unfortunately, is gone. Uh, van der Merwe leading out of a, over side for our Nico, Nico Severus. But uh, this is the battle we kind of be concentrating on because it's been so close. And the Nurse looking pretty good. And yeah, exactly. I'm not quite sure <laughs> what's happened there with Sachaba, but he's dropped right to the back of... Uh, 
the 86 league so he's had a bit of an issue somewhere on circuit and drop behind Ken Swartz. Ken Swartz now moving up to possibly where that might be one of his best results so far in that 86 league, so in this 2024 season. Shahini closing down the gap now, and getting onto the back end of Sachaba Mashiga. You can see now a change up as well, possibly. Yes, Nurse is at the front. So whatever happened there between Shahini and uh, DeFoss has opened up the door given Sean Nurse a chance to get to the front. So Nurse goes to where he used to be and used to be piloting that car and that's at the front end of the field. Patience sometimes is a virtue. Yeah, exactly. And I think he, I think you could see there was something going to happen there. DeFoss and Shahini were fighting quite hard. So just a little mistake somewhere. I think it was done in the bowl, probably under braking and uh, running wide, opened up the door. And if you do that with Sean Nurse on your tail, the auto trader man's going to definitely make you uh, pay. And he's done just that. But uh, DeFoss hasn't given up just yet. I think he might just want to give him a run for his money here. As they head to the top towards the airport. It's also very interesting. Further back down, there's a good scrap between the motors. Well, motors machine of Mari de Souza, the Citizen Giocarona of Jakufana Madva, and then the Rustenburg Toyota with Johan Sneijman, and Kumbi from the media side. So, a real mixed bag lower down in the Giocup. And, and, and that's exactly what I think you were hoping was going to happen here by throwing the Aris's into the mix to give those guys a chance to sort of get into uh, a, a two-way fight here between the Yaris and Corolla products, even though they're all GR-based products. Correct. And, and as we saw what, what happens with the media challenge, as the seat time, you, you gain seat time, the skill set improves, and towards the end of the season, the times and just the confidence that the drivers have in the car, for many of them on the, the dealer side and the GR Yaris's, this is their first foray into track racing, period. Yeah. So, great to see them putting it down and then putting up a great show and, and putting in the laps and doing great work. If you look at this front end pack here for the 86 League, uh, I think, and I stand to be corrected, only Ryan Nyker and Darby would have had seat time around Kyle Army. So the rest of them, this is their first outing at the circuit. So it's been a learning curve and a harsh one because I think they had 20 minutes on Thursday and 40 minutes yesterday in total. So, oh, that is not where Alex Shahini wanted to end up. Straight off the track and into the wall and that's at Crowthorn as well. So uh, Toyota Corner is not working out for you today, buddy. <laughs> Definitely, definitely doesn't seem to be liking our brand, that corner. So, looks like we've got a little bit of pressure coming here as well in the closing stages. And that pressure is coming from that Rustenburg Toyota. So, uh, there's some, some big issues here to be sorted out between the Corollas and Yaris's. We've got two of them with one Yaris in between. We had two of them and a Yaris in between at the front end. But it's opened up slightly now that Shahini has unfortunately ended up in the wall at Crowthorn. Uh, there'll probably be double wave yellows there for the rest of the session. Uh, depending on if that car is deemed to be safe, we might still be able to finish this one up before we have to uh, pull out any red flags. Hopefully no more red flags because we've had a couple of those. DeFoss has got ahead though of Nurse. So exactly what you thought might happen with those slightly different lines from Paul DeFoss. He's been able to sneak through there and uh, got ahead of Sean Nurse. So it's a Yaris ahead of the Corolla. And uh, that's a bit of a turnaround from the first one. As they come across the line, Darby, I think, possibly getting his last lap now. But I'm, I'm working on um, timing that I've sort of looked at the clock as opposed to what's actually happening on track. I think it's possibly onto that last lap now for Darby Fanamava, Saad Variawa, and Nico Zafiris. And it's now last lap time coming up for these two. What is Nurse going to do to try and get back? You mentioned the fact to me that the Yaris is slightly lighter, but the top end of the Corolla should be better. So on a similar vein to what we saw with the Porsche and the Lambo, where the Porsche is able to pull away in the extreme supercars, the Corolla should be able to pull that Yaris down towards growth. So it's, it's been quite an interesting dynamic that, yes, the Gio Corolla obviously makes a bit more power in the standard specification, and the long straights that Kalami offers, we are seeing that top speed advantage. The Yaris is a lighter product, shorter wheelbase, a bit more agile, um, so there's some corners that that would suit the track better yeah and then the Corolla has the, the legs as they would say on the long straights so, yeah so it's exactly the same as what I would say in terms of that Porsche versus Lambo the Lambo's handling is spectacular whereas the Porsche straight line speed is is the one that you've got to watch out for in that in that category 
So on a similar vein, that's exactly what uh, Saud Variawa and Davi Van Amava are asking for. They're looking for straight line speed. Particularly Saad, because he's got some ground to make up. He wasn't at the first round, unfortunately, in Cape Town. So he's lost out on some point scoring opportunities there after taking the championship last year. But uh, Davi Van Amava has certainly uh, turned things around at the front end of the field from the 86 League's point of view with his uh, stepping into the Toyota brand for the very first time. Sean Nurse, though, incredibly, fastest on track out of everybody, down in ninth. <laughs> so that's impressive. He's quicker than Davi. So that's a, a really nice turnaround there from Sean Nurse in the Corolla. So heading into the final part here, I think this is into the second last and last corners of this race. Davi van Amava, Saad Variawa, pulled a bit of a margin now over Nico. He was closer earlier, but he seems to have just lost some ground. And uh, Dylan Price, he might be able to hang on by the looks of it for the four spot. Um, just looking across, do we get it? Yes, we get a chicken flag. There it is. Second race of the day, Dan. Unfortunately, you've got a second car at turn one, which you need to sort out, Mr. Hazen. But I don't, I, I don't think there was anything that went wrong there other than possibly driver error. It might have just been a mistake that uh, Alex did. Uh, they weren't too close in terms of somebody touching him and pushing him off the circuit, I don't think. But uh, stand to be corrected. We'll see that in the post-production show later, hopefully. Indeed, we'll, we'll go and do some investigation on that. DeFoss wins out for the media versus the dealers. And our uh, advanced driving man takes the victory ahead of Sean Nurse. Sean Nurse will still hang on to the lead of the media championship. Um, and I think we're going to see Yako and Kumbi move up because of Hannes not being here for race two. So there's possibly a little bit of a, a points differential that will come a bit closer between those three for second, third and fourth in the championship as they come to the line now. Final couple of cars coming through there. Yako van Amerva going to lead them across the line ahead of Johannes Neumann and Kumbi. And then uh, Bernie Halberg, Andrews de Villiers and Van Affenter. Final cars there from the Yaris League across the line for the second race of Toyota Gazoo Racing's GR Cup. Rion, once again, massive thanks for joining me, buddy. Always insight is always appreciated. And, of course, you've got all the little insights that I don't have, so it helps me out a lot. And uh, hopefully we'll keep doing this up into uh, the next round at Swat Corps as well. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And yeah, let's see what the rest of the day has in store. Awesome. Good luck with the rest of the team. Hopefully you got all those other cars sorted out for the touring cars later on. See those Toyotas back at the front end of touring cars to take on the BMs and the GTIs. So we're moving into the second part of the day's racing right now. That was the first heat of the second part of the day's racing. Rion's going to go and head back down into pit lane. And we're going to look out for action from the Formula 1600s and Formula Ford Kents combined. Uh, Paulie, also just a heads up. I'm not quite sure why we don't have timing on your tablet. Because I'm... Trying to get as much as I can, and I'm getting nothing here. If you want to come see. So hold tight. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Paul. <laughs> Just trying to get our timing monitor sorted out here inside the studio.
one winner and what a way to come and turn it around buddy the last time you were here it went completely hey it didn't look like you'd ever get back into a race car again you come back in a gti and you absolutely decimate the field yeah you, last year with the accident in the ford um you know the last time i left the circuit it was in an ambulance with a broken leg broken arm um and it didn't look like we would race again but you know um the team supported me massively um getting me back into the car last year, building a new chassis. So, you know, all credit to them, all credit to WCT and Chemical, chemical Logistics. Um, and it's, it's it's actually been a quite emotional weekend. Um, as a family, you know, coming to this track where it changed my life and just coming away with a win, you know, um, my granddad passed away last night, so I want to dedicate it to him. So it, it's just been a very emotional weekend, but, you know, to get a win just makes everything worth it. No, that's the way to do it, buddy. And uh, you know, condolences from our side, and I'm sure, in, ter in terms of all the fans out there too. Um, but not only did you do that, I think you spoke to your two teammates and said, "Listen, just help me out here," because it was a one-two-three for the team. 
Uh, the team's been incredible. You know, we've, we've been top three through all the practice sessions. Um, there was no real team orders, so the pace was genuine. Um, Rob just seemed to struggle a little bit with the car. Um, after his, his accident yesterday and qualifying it, I'm not sure the car's 100% right because he normally has very good pace. Um, but, we, you know, it's a chance for me to capitalise on that, and we did. And we came away with a win. The team got a 1-2-3 best result we've ever got. So, you know, massive congrats to them, and it just shows the effort that they've put in is paying off. They certainly are working hard, and uh, now we've got one more to go today. What's the plans? Because it's a bit of a reversal of the grid there, so there's a couple of Toyotas to contend with. I think there's quite a pace deficit right now between us and the Toyotas, so getting through the field shouldn't be too difficult, but anything can happen. You know, and Anthony looked quite quick in, in race one, he seemed to be hanging on slightly. Um, so he might be sort of a bit of a dark horse, but I think if we can just play the game right, you know, pick off cars one a lap, we should be able to work to the front. Hopefully the start goes well and we can get through a couple of positions and make it a bit easier for ourselves. The problem you do have though is the lack of time, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we got what seven, eight laps maybe. So, but it, it's a long circuit, so you'll have to try and pick off more than one car a lap. But we, we really we don't have time. We don't have a lot of laps, so we're just gonna have to push hard from the beginning. Jules, thanks so much. Once again, condolences to the family. Give it a stick out there. Hopefully you can make it for the double for, for uh, the family and for everybody in WCT. Yeah, that's the plan. We'll try. We'll do our best. Try to get the double and uh, just walk away. You know, we're already walking away from the event with our heads all die. So to get another victory or top three will just be extra special. positive that that's the case in the Liqui Moly racing team stable definitely a man that'll be looking to turn his luck around will be Jason Kutsia didn't quite go according to plan for him in the first race so we'll have to keep an eye on his uh, performance in those first five cars are we going to see Rick Morris possibly Alan Mayer Ronald Van Wheelie Duncan Foss or Graham Hepburn maybe give uh, Andrew Horner a run in the Kent category, that's a bit further back there in the Formula Fords, but Formula 1600s, of course, are uh, out on circuit at the moment, and Sia Bonga Monconquana slightly further up the pack than what he was in race number one. He's there in third place alongside Jason Kutsia. It's Karabo Malamela behind them, then Alex Foss and Nicholas Van Wheelie, as they now all get sorted out and set to roll to the line for the start of the second heat of the Invest Chem Formula 1600s and Formula Ford Kents combined here at Kailami as we combine regional and national championship extreme festival. The premier road and circuit racing categories are all here this weekend and a record number of entries at Kailami ever. Just under 300 competitors. 297 competitors in total about to uh, retain us for the late afternoon here on uh, the 13th of March 2024. Some cars coming to take up the positions now on the grid. You can see they've got about 16 and a half minutes to, to go of the 20 minutes that's allocated for each class here today. We're not working on laps today, we're working on time. And if you have just joined us for the very first time, also a big welcome to everybody all the way down in Cape Town. I see Nicole Briet has joined us, Vili Adlam was back on there too. Great to have you guys and of course all the people watching on YouTube. I, I don't see you guys unfortunately. And I also don't see any of the comments that come through on the Extreme Festivals page. But if anything is of note, I do get past that information via our uh, producer Paul. And he will send me information that is pertinent. So we're just over 15 minutes to go as the two minute board comes up so we're going to probably get between six to eight laps of race action here 
for the second heat of Formula 1600s and Formula Ford Kents. And a little bit of heat haze there. That's quite nice. Almost Formula 1-esque style heat haze there. As the lights go on, they go off. And then we head down towards turn one. Who's going to have the drop on everybody out front as they disappear out of that heat haze and just out of shot and down to the long drag towards Crowthorne. It is Jagger Robertson who got off the line perfectly this time. Jason could see a diving on the inside of Alex Foss. Carabo Malamela trying to come up the inside of him. But Foss with a fantastic start up to fourth place. Somebody runs wide. Looked like it might be Carabo. Malamela, yes it was. Or uh, was that maybe a bit further back? I'm quite sure if it might have been. Could possibly be Storm Landfear as well who ran wide there. So a couple of cars getting into the mix. Great start coming from Graham Hepburn from the back of the pack. He's got to the front end of the Formula Fords and leads out over Andrew Horn as they head towards Sunset and Clubhouse for the first time. It's Jagger out front from Casey and Saw Smith. Jason Kutsia in third with huge pressure coming from Alex Foss with a much better start this time from the race driver SA Man. His stable mate is uh, right on his tail there in Siobongo Monconquana and on the sideline there is that Carabo? Quite short. He's trying to pick up on uh, who went missing there in the first part as they ran one. And we'll get him uh, sort of a, sort of come across the line for the first time of course and get confirmation of that but uh, right now it's just speculation. There are two cars with very similar livery so I don't know the Carabo's there. Robo is definitely there, so possibly might be Storm Lanfia who's on the sideline there. We'll have to keep an eye and see if that's the case. Down towards Crocodiles. Alex Foss looking on the inside of Jason Kutsia. Carabo, or, or Sia Bonga Monconquana looking around the outside as we see Renzo Ribeiro parked on the sideline. <coughs> that looks like it's into the S's. So the metal use spares car, unfortunately stricken there at this stage, and that possibly could need a safety car. We'll wait and see if that's the case. Under massive pressure from Monka Kwana, Sia looking for a way past. Can't find it just yet. So pick it up on the rest of the field as they come through there. Let's uh, get confirmation as the uh, timing monitor will hopefully give that to us. Well, hopefully it does, but nothing yet. Just getting confirmation. Jagger Robinson definitely leading things out though, that uh, we can see. Second place, Casey Ensel Smith, all on his own. Sim. Then uh, these three fighting hard for third, and it's Jason Kutsia, Alex Foss, and Sia Monka Monkopana who are at each other's throats. And oh, a little tag between Foss and Monkopana, and they both spin out. Almost uh, formation flying there between the two of them. An exact replica of each other's spins, literally side by side as they came out of the Yukosuke and Barbecue Complex. So uh, things not quite going according to plan for those two. That's going to change things up at the front end ever so slightly. It's going to bring Ewan Holzhausen back into the mix. It's certainly going to bring Karabo Malamela and uh, look out as well for uh, pressure coming from Nicholas Van Wheely now, realizing the two cars spun out just ahead of him. So a bit of uh, chopping and changing there as we see some maneuvering through the field. Now as they get to the top of the hill, Jason could see it. He's on his own in, th in third. And uh, we're not picking up on him. On the, well, he, he comes up on the timing monitor now, but the timing monitor took a while for him to pick up on that car. Katia in third, Van Wheelie's fourth. Van Wheelie's fourth, so an all oh, Jagger under huge pressure now from Casey Ensel Smith down into the Crocodiles. You can see a bit of uh, cloud cover coming over Crocodiles at the moment, just uh, taking those cars into a slightly darker patch of Crocodiles. And then once they come out of the uh, bowl and back into the main part of the circuit, here's the replay. Is there a little touch? Yeah, just a little nudge there from Siobongo Monkonkwana onto the gearbox of Alex Foss. And as I said, how's that? Formation spinning from the two race driver SA and Investchem cars. Sia gets going, so does Foss, but he lights up on the dirty stuff. Which is going to just dirty those tyres ever so slightly. Maybe just cost him a bit of traction. Front end of... Well, that's not the front end. It's the third place battle for... Uh, Formula Ford Kents, possibly the fifth place battle, I think that might be, that's Alan Mayer versus Ronald Van Wheelie, oh, it's the fifth place battle. Confirmation now, Jagger Robinson from Casey Ensel Smith, Jason Kutsia's third, Van Wheelie's fourth, Mikel Besaid, no, he's the top finish so far for the uh, rookie, he's in fifth place at the moment, watch out for him, it's the black and red car about to come into shot, just behind, not this car, but the next one, there we go, Van Wheelie, then Besaid, note. 
Safe note, just hanging on ahead of the 37 car of Malamela. Then it's Holtzhausen in the fly Safe machine. With Storm Lanfear behind him. So... Look at that, Alex Foss. I can't, I can't work up all the news the guys. <laughs> Renzo went off, I know. He got back up and going, but the car parked on the sideline out of turn one. I'm not quite sure who that is. Just trying to work out from who's missing here. Uh, Shrin. Might be Shrin Nadu, actually. I think it is, yeah, Shrin Nadu. He's on the sideline there. So apologies there to everybody. Just trying to work it out because our timing monitor doesn't give us anybody that doesn't finish at this stage of the race. Speaking of finishing, well, Jagger Robertson would like to be the man to finish up at the top end and take a double victory. He will then also take the lead of the championship with the two wins here today at Kyle Army. And the Liqui Molly man will definitely be looking for that. This is the front end of the Kent class. And Horndog and Hepburn going at it. Andrew Horn with a smoking gun ahead of him. With uh, Graham Hepburn at the wheel, leading the Kent category. They've pulled quite a big margin over Duncan Foss and Rick Morris. Fighting for third, and they've got an equidistant gap between Alan May and Ron Van Wheelie for fifth place. That's how it looks at this stage. Closer here from Malamela, he looks like he's got through. Now, Malamela has uh, has he? He has squeezed through, yes, he has. Robert Malamela now ahead of the 37 car, or 37 car, I should say, ahead of the 69 car of Mikel Besaid Nut. Back to the Kent class as Henry Horn hits the front. Just getting slightly better drive down the straight towards Crowthorn. Hepburn trying to come back at him. So it's Invest Kemp versus Qualipac. And Horn versus Hepburn. And Sparko, Investment, Invest Kem, and race driver SA Cobb, Alex Foss trying to make up some ground now. Trying to get through there on Storm Lanfear and Ewan Holthausen. Just behind that, it's the return of Sio Bonga Monkwana. So the two spinners have now moved themselves up into 9th and 10th place, respectively. But uh, not a lot of time for them to try and make up any more ground. They may still be able to find a way through on Holtzhausen and Lanfear, which will move them up into 7th and 8th, but I think that's probably the highest they're going to be able to do with the lack of track time available to them only having um, 20 minutes on track. Jagger down to the final corner one more time. Comes across the line, possibly to look at either the penultimate or maybe even the last lap board. As they come through there, I didn't see it because of the graphic, but uh, possibilities of the last lap there for Jagger Robertson. Or either that he'll be on to his penultimate one with uh, Casey Ensel Smith in second at the moment. He got up close and personal with Jagger. Carries good corner speed. But, uh, Jagger just seems to know exactly where to place that car. Casey behind him. Very evenly matched in terms of their skills. Probably a little bit more experience in the front driver than the one behind. Uh, in terms of race categories that uh, Jagger's raced in, Casey's only been in carts in this category. So he hasn't really had as much uh, motorsport experience as the man in front of him. And it's possibly what's helping Jagger out here his ability to read the race and what he needs to do to keep his fellow rivals behind him. Just still in third. Van Wheelie is in fourth comfortably. And then you've got uh, there's a bit of a gap I'd say. That's now opened up. Foss has got through on Lanthia. So Alex Foss is through on Lanthia. Siobongo would like to do the same thing. Top of the hill, there's a possibility of Caraba looking for a way through there on Van Wheelie. Watch for the cutback. That's perfectly done in terms of single-seater tactics up into uh, Leokop. And that might just pay off for him because he'll be, get a good run down the hill and into the mineshaft sweep. Possibly set things up for an overtaking maneuver. No, but uh, well, I was going to say, he has got a wily character and a multiple um, single-seater champion ahead of him. We will know exactly what he's trying to do there and uh, exactly what I thought might happen is uh, Van Wheelie just saw it happening and said no, I'm not going to let you take that position. I know where to place my car and that will definitely stop your uh, progress. Jagger Robertson leads over Casey and Saul Smith. Those two have pulled a big margin. Look at the gap there. 
between them. It's only 0.4 between the two of them as they cross the line, but it's almost nine seconds up the road from third place, Jason Kutsia. He's going to be scratching that helmet. Can we hang on a second? What went wrong here? He's turning into turn one as they come out of turn four. Holtzhausen flying the Safair flag high there to keep out Alex Voss. He would love to beat Alex Voss again if he can. He's not going to do that. Lanfia has not been able to keep uh, uh, Sia Monk and Monkankwana. There is confirmation of that. Monkankwana ahead now of Storm Lanfia. Alex Foss looking to try and close that gap down on the Sapphire car. He's got enough time. Look at the corner speed he carries there. That's very good to see. Corner speed from Foss has closed the gap right onto the tailpiece of that fly Sapphire car. I think Jürgen Holzhausen might be starting to feel the effects of the pressure. He's sliding into the S's. So you know he's going in late on the brakes to go into the S's. And that could possibly give uh, Alex Foss a run here down towards the final corner. Now they head down the mine shaft. Monka Corner pulling away from Lanfear. So Sia back up to ninth place after that spin. Him and Foss both on a maneuver to get through. Try and recover as much as possible after the two of them spun out coming out of turn four. Jagger Robertson on his way. Is there a flag in the distance there? Or a last lap board? I'm not quite sure. I can't see because the graphic is there. Uh, Paul, if you can tell me if you see it. Uh, Jagger Robertson continues to lead out over Casey Ensel Smith. Looks like two more laps to go for these two. So it's Robertson, Ensel Smith, Jason Gutsia, Malamela. Nick Van Wheelie and Mikhail Besaide note. Going for the lead though, not done yet. Kassi would love a victory yet, Kyle Longley. Jagger's really taken one. He's going to be a hard man to beat him. He's already got what it takes to win out over a, a very talented field of single-seater drivers. Jagger just, as I said, knows exactly where to place the car. Gets good performance out of it at certain areas. Casey's able to close in on him at certain points on the track, but because of the strategy that he's using and the race craft he's got, he knows exactly how to keep the youngster at bay. Yes, <laughs> is now. So watching this little battle unfold. Kelvin said, "Note just ahead of Holtzhausen, who's been closed out rapidly now by Foss." Let's see her hanging on for third. In fact, if I look at the way it's going to finish up here, it might be quite close between Jason Kutsia and Jagger Robertson for the lead of the championship. Because, of course, Jay took a victory in Cape Town. And uh, Jagger had some problems in Cape Town. Couldn't quite get the car off the line. So they've certainly been working on his starts since Cape Town because both his starts have been perfect. Last lap. Further back, Duncan Foss fighting with Rick Morris into the S's. <coughs> they get into uh, the final stages of that four kit battle. Foss still not finding a way past, but he's in the slipstream now. And Ewan Holtzhausen's days might be numbered as they get to Crowthorpe. Same now in the second one. Keep up Casey and Sussman's last attack. Between races, we're only racing at the end. Yeah. Come into Sunset, out of Sunset, little short squirt to Clubhouse. It's just, you know, I think it's just a matter of time now. I don't think Casey's got enough to do anything here for Jagger Robinson. He seems to just be cruising to the line now, realizing he's got. Just enough in hand to keep Ensel Smith at, at bay. Through the triple apex at the top of Leokop. So you can see the change up here for Formula 4 Kents. Where is Andrew Horn gone? Has he disappeared and got away? No, I think Graham Hepburn's on his own. 
Horn Dogs had a problem. Andrew Horn, somewhere on track, has made a mistake and he's dropped back. Into Cheetah. Final corner is Ingwe corner and uh, Jagger Robertson makes his way into it now for the last time at the combined races of national and regional championships at Extreme Festival. It's Jagger Robertson. The double on the day for the Lickby Molly sponsored car. Winning out over Casey Ensel Smith. Jason Kutsia is going to hang on for third place. Looks like Alex Foss has got through on you and Holtzhausen and has. So we'll change up there between the two of them. Holtzhausen just being outgunned by Alex Foss on that last lap. And Carabo Malamela who comes through for the four spot. Team Nick Van Wheelie. And it was you and Holtzhausen just being bettered by Alex Foss on the last lap. Wins out of a whole thousand. Monconquano will come through behind that ahead of Storm Lanfear. And Hepburn looks like he's all on his own. Some and we'll finish things up for the Ford, Ford Kents. He's got Renzo Rivera not too far behind him. Uh, double winner. Heading up onto the back straight away there. Team Liquid Molly. Once again, Jagger Robinson showing how quickly he's able to get to grips with new formulas of motorsport. That he's driven in the past, of course, a completely different to a single seater. It hasn't taken him long. He was the pole man in both races in Cape Town. He wasn't able to capitalize on two victories. He's the pole man here at Kyle Army. Wins both races. Graham Hepburn winning out Formula Ford Kents. Henry Horn, I think, is going to hang on for second to beat up Foss, Morris, and Van Wheelie for the Formula Ford Kent category. Sorted out, their, their race is done for the day. Our next part of the proceedings, of course, we go into Pay Bar Volkswagen Challenge. They'll be coming out of the top pits. It's another big field of Volkswagen cars about to make their run to the circuit for their second race of the day. And Volkswagen Challenge will be followed by some two wheeled action from the zx 10 r Masters Cup brought to you by Sunbet and Red Square. Our marshals have had a busy day. They've done an amazing job to clear cars that were certainly in harm's way on numerous occasions. But also congratulations goes out there once again to Jagger Robinson for the double in the Invest Camp Formula 1600s. And with that, he also took the fastest lap of the race in that last lap. So uh, well done to Jagger. We'll be back shortly with action from Paybar Volkswagen Challenge and Race 2.
So, we're up next, as you can see on the graphic there, Pay by Fox Falcon Challenge. Classes A, B, and C. Separate starts for each of the categories. And a couple of Class X cars thrown into the Class A today. Some experimental drivers testing what could possibly be the future of Pay by Fox Falcon Challenge um, and in the regional side of the Extreme Festival with this category. A lot of these guys have had uh, a lot of time in the saddle this weekend sharing both duties in pay by Volkswagen Challenge and in the Masters category of <coughs> the Astron Energy Polo Cup. We're looking forward to seeing how they progress here in race number two. It's their final bit of race action for pay by side of things today. And also just getting some information thrown at me in between our break and uh, these cars coming on track is that uh, Carabo Malamela may be wanting to be seen by the COC for a possible jump start so he's under a possible threat of losing that fourth place from race two depending on what happens and how they uh, deem that to be truthful or not as they come to the line it's classes A, B and C as I said class X cars in the class A mix there one of them piloted by our eventual race one winner, Rory Atkinson. But uh, he's, he, of course, would not count towards championship points in Class A with that uh, experimental car. A couple of uh, changes to the engine derivatives, to the way they're doing the setup of the cars and bits and pieces that they're looking to change in terms of the future of Pay by Volkswagen Challenge uh, being tested here today at Kyle Army by a couple of drivers. Mike Barbaglia is one of them. Luigi Ferro is the other one. Those three, of course, will be scoring in Class X, not in Class A. Also, what you'll see, if you didn't watch the first heat earlier on, it's three separate starts. Class A, 10 seconds, then Class B, 10 seconds, and then Class C. We'll try and bring you all of the action that we can for the second heat of the Pay by Fox Falcon Challenge. Absolutely perfect conditions here. Slight breeze is just keeping the ambient temperature down which is great for the engines with enough ambient temperature of just over 21 degrees celsius here to give us some nice track temperatures for the dunlop tires to come into their own relatively quickly the dunlop team this weekend have had a really tough time of it almost every single saloon class category runs on dunlops so uh, the dunlop team have been working frantically both in the main pit building and up at the top pit facility on uh, just past turn two and three and four out of the barbecue and yuxke complex smith and peterson at the back of class c you can see a couple of cars there also looking to see whether or not uh, ian walker was able to get his car sorted out for race two and maybe just uh, get that all sorted Five second board, lights on, and Class A will be underway. Here they go. Lights down towards the little kink towards turn one. Long drag down towards turn one. Good start coming from the mid pack there, and it looked like that might be the beer. To uh, make up some lost ground after he had to park his car on the sideline in race one. Dean Ross around the outside with Atkinson on his tail. Class C about to get underway. There you go. Good start from Tanay uh, and Kube. And a nice little start there as well coming from Pile. It's going to go side by side down towards turn one. And Ross being hounded there out of uh, Yuxka and Barbecue as they go into sunset. Class B and Class C already on their way out there. This is the C's down towards Crowthorn. Just trying to sort things out there and how they are going to finish up overall. Bevan from Wayne. That's the top two in Class A. That's Dean Ross with uh, Rory Atkinson all over the back end of him. Mark Rodia feeling the pressure there from Sharice Piazza trying to close things down on Ethan Kutsia who was at the front end and remains at the front end for now in his Class B challenge bar followed 
closely there by Lessing. Lessing's got Mac on his tail. Aldrickson, there is Walker. Walker the Stalker is back in for race two. That's good to see. So Bevan Masters hangs on to keep out that performance. Masters polo of his brother. Atkinson is through on Dean Ross. Ross is now down to third place, from third to fourth, I should say. The Norbrek car falling back one place. Shrin Rajpal forcing Nusios into a wide line out of Crocodiles. Trying to be just behind them. over the back of Mokorodia for the last two or three corners. Chad Bertolt, Michael Safiro and uh, Tate going at it. Slow car. Oh, and it's caught out. Michael Safiro. Oh, that is a massive crash. A massive crash in Class C coming out of Cheetah. There was a slow car on the outside and uh, Safiro came out of uh, the right-hand kink at final corner or the second last corner and that's definitely going to be a red flag there are cars everywhere at uh, turn 13 just before 14 and red flag is not what we needed at this stage of the day that is for sure so Wayne Masters Bevan Masters and Rory Atkinson Ross Ferro and Bob Baglia your top five in class A will just roll around now under red flag scenario they're not going to know what's going to happen until they get down to turn 13 Lucky for some, unlucky there for the Class C competitors. There's about five or six Class C competitors that are involved in that. I'm not quite sure who the car was that was slow out of turn number 13. It was one of the Class B competitors that was just slowing up, and unfortunately my timing monitor has also gone on the blink again. I'm going to try and get it to pull it back up again. There we go, it's back up and running. But uh, certainly that slow car caught out Safira. And he tried to avoid it, unfortunately, because he made an evasive maneuver. He got out of shape, went straight across and hit the wall. And as he returned to the track, he took about four or five cars out with him as they all tried to avoid his return to the circuit. It's on a similar vein to what the BMW did yesterday with uh, Robert Volk at the wheel. That's what Volk, but Volk had a breakage on the car when he came out of that corner. But I would assume it would be on a similar vein to what Robert Volk experienced coming into uh, turn 13, heading towards turn 14, and the uh, official pit entrance. Looks like uh, Cruiser went in. So we got 127 involved in that as well. This is all the Class C competitors, by the way. So if we go there, let's have a quick look at the replay first and foremost, and then we'll tell you who's who there. So there's Zafira getting out of shape two car one car gets through there's nowhere to go for one two three four cars involved in that as i said uh, oh, that's a huge moment there that's the reason why cruiser came out of the main pit uh, lane because she went in there to avoid the crashed cars um so philip cruiser just taking evasive action and going into pit lane so Safiro is definitely one of them 127 if I'm not mistaken is Judd Bertold. so Judd Bertold is there then you've got the 31 car of Andy Gossman he's out the car Judd's out the car that's good to see Safiro I think might be feeling more effects than anybody else and then it's Pile Tyron Pile is the fourth car involved They've stopped all the cars just in the background there, as you can see, because they've got to clear the circuit first before they can do anything. And there's a, yeah, there's, there's a motor lying right in the middle of the circuit, which I would assume is either out of Judd's car or out of Zafiro's car. One of the two have lost the entire engine out that car. So a massive, massive crash coming out of turn 13, Cheetah Corner, heading towards Ingwe got out of shape trying to avoid a slow car he went into the wall just ahead of where that um, 4x4 is parked on uh, the recovery process they're doing there you can see the doctor at work 
instantaneously onto the uh, injured driver. But uh, everybody out there on the, the banks at uh, Clubhouse and, and uh, Sunset won't know what's happening down at Turn 13 unless they're watching us on the live stream. That grey tower in the middle of the track there, in the middle of your shot, we're just below that. That's where our commentary and production team are working from. It is always great to see crowds all the way around Kyle Army Grand Prix circuit. And they're sending Romeo 2 down to that area as well to try and assist with the recovery process as quickly as possible. Um, Paul, if you can, I just want to try and pick up on who that slower car was. If you want to just see it one more time, I'm not going to concentrate too much on the, the crash, but I'd just like to see who that was. No problem at all. No, I hear you. We'll wait and see till we get clearance on that. Yeah, hang tight. If you can just have a look at it for me and just give me an idea who the slow car was, because there was definitely a slow class B car uh, coming out of turn 13, which Zafiro tried to avoid. And that's what caused the incident. He went straight across, hit the wall, came across, and unfortunately nowhere to go for Judd Berthold, who hit him. Judd Berthold then hit Andy Gossman. And in the background, Tyron Pillay tried to avoid all the fracas and ended up going into the wall on his own sim on the outside of turn 13. So four Class C competitors involved in that big accident. Luckiest of all was Chris Tate. He literally just squeezed through to avoid the spinning and crashing Michael Zafiro ahead of him. Or Dimitri Zafiro, I should say, not Michael. Dimitri Zafiro. Big moment. Whew. That is a big crash for uh, motorsport fans. That's certainly not what we like to see. And unfortunately, it is part and parcel of the sport that we all love so much. It is a dangerous sport, but... Uh, can be uh, quite nasty if it gets into a crash like we've just seen. Hopefully all the drivers are okay. We did see Judd Bertolt get out the car. I saw Andy Gossman out the car and I saw Pillay out the car. And then we just saw the doctor starting to work on Dimitri to make sure he's okay. But we have a world-class medical team here at Kyle Army. And they've had to deal with some serious scenarios in the past at international as well as national championship level. And I'm sure that they're going to be in great hands there after a big incident like that. So much. It was a dangerous sport. The last few years, it's just actually good to see. Hopefully, all the drivers are okay. We did see Jack Bertolt get up the car. We saw Andy Gossman up the car, and I saw Pillay up the car. And then we just saw the doctor coming to work. Let me just make sure he's okay. We have a world class medical team. Yeah, Kyle Army. We have to deal with some serious scenarios in the past. It's international colours. All righty, so just getting information in my ears there from the production, production team. It might have been Marty Mfana who was slowing up out of turn 13. Um, he did everything right. He wasn't, wasn't in the wrong there at all. He held his line coming out of turn 13, which is what you need to do if you are a slower car on the track. And it's up to the cars that are chasing you down and, and want to pass you to find a way past. Unfortunately, though, as I said, Dimitri just didn't quite get there. Or um, Michael Severo didn't quite get there. And uh, he ended up hitting the inside barrier, which spun him across the circuit and uh, slammed him into... Um, Andy Gossman and Judd Bertolt both tried to take avoiding action but uh, they weren't able to squeeze through and, uh, and weren't as lucky as Chris Tate was he was able to get through there Carl Peterson also got through Dimitri Safira got through uh, Philip Cruiser went into pit lane and came out the other side so he survived that and I think Mitch Kutsia was the other car that possibly survived out of the Class C contenders after that big incident we're just waiting to get confirmation as to what's going to happen with that clear up and how they how they're doing down at turn 13 in terms of getting the cars out the way and the injured driver attended to 
as soon as we've got clearance, we can go back to that and show you some, some shots of it as they clear. And uh, watch the marshals doing the most phenomenal job that you can see. They really are spectacular in their ability to uh, clear incidents like that in uh, sort of record time. But uh, more importantly is to make sure that all the drivers are okay before we show you any more of the action that happened down at turn 13. Gives you a chance though, once again, just to remind you all as to uh, upcoming events in the very near future, next weekend. If you've got uh, motorsport on your mind, then uh, make sure you head across to Swatkops International Raceway, just down the road here from, from Kailami. We've got historic and inland championship at uh, Swatkops on the 20th of uh, this month, which is next weekend. Uh, the Freedom Day, there's also some South African Endurance Championship uh, racing at Swatkops. And the following day, on the Sunday, it's Brunch Run and Thunder Bikes. I mentioned the Samola Hill Climb. That happens from the 2nd until the 5th of May. And a whole bunch of drivers that participate in the Extreme Festival, of course, will be participating. And some of them have even used today's racing as a, a bit of a... A chance to dust off the cobwebs and get rid of the rust and get ready for Samoa Hill Climb on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of May. Regional Extreme Festival heads back to Swatkops on the... Uh, wait, uh, sorry, to Red Star on the 11th of May. So we go to Red Star. From Red Star we head back to Swatkops for the National Championship Extreme Festival on the 18th of May. And then it's uh, some race action of course. Coming your way back at Swatkops on the 8th of June. The Regional Extreme Festival will be there. Unfortunately, I won't be there for that one. That'll be while I'm away at the Isle of Man. But I'm sure our team will find someone that will jump into the seat and take over from yours truly for that weekend. We have then got a long wait until the 28th and 29th of June for the next round on round four of the... National Championship Extreme Festival and that's at Quabecha and the Aldo Scramanti circuit. So we're in the middle of Volkswagen Challenge Race 2, 12.55 to 13.15. It's 13.15 at the moment. So it looks like they're sending those cars back down towards uh, pit lane so they can clear the circuit and bring them round again if they're going to give them a restart. Or are we going to possibly go straight into ZX-10 R Masters Cup? I'm not quite sure if they'll send the ZX-10s out. They might send the V8s out first to give them a chance to possibly use those big uh, slick tyres to get a bit of uh, track cleaning done. Uh, this besides what, of course, the marshals can do on their own at Turn 13. The uh, wake of that big crash now in Class C for Pay by Volkswagen Challenge. If they are going to send the V8s out, they better let them know. <laughs> I think those drivers will be waiting to hear the uh, soothing sounds of some ZX-10s rolling around before they start getting themselves ready. So they must have cleared a path to get all those cars through and uh, on their way back to their pit boxes at the top pit lane here at Kailani. Through and on their way back 
I see Gosman's car there on the flatbed, making its way up past the car track and back to the top pit box. So that's one of those cars that were involved. There you can see the work being done now. There's a lot of fluid out on that circuit of various forms. Possibly petrol, some coolant, water, uh, some oil even. <laughs> and uh, if anybody wants a slightly used Polo engine, I might have a possibility of a spot to pick up on one. That's the kind of team effort that has to go into a clearance of this nature. They're also going to probably have to rebuild that tyre barrier on the left-hand side. You can see some of the guys concentrating on their efforts on that to get uh, the tyre barrier rebuilt and secure that part on the track. A couple of guys about to lift that Polo engine up into the back of one of the recovery buckies. I think that's out of Zafiro's car. By the looks of it, that front end looks completely wrecked and with the way that the front bonnet is pushed back so badly, I think it is... It's part of the safety structure of those cars, actually. If you, if you take into account most modern cars are built with the ability for the engine to sort of be ripped out if you're in a situation like we've just seen. So I would assume it's the uh, red car in the middle of the track's engine that got ripped out of the body. I haven't quite got Judd Bertold's car hooked up to anything just yet either. But here comes Recovery 1. And possibly that one will be towing Judd's car back to the pit lane. Meanwhile, it's action on track with Carlo e. Marshalls showing us the way to clean up a massive crash in the Paybar Volkswagen Challenge Class C. Trying to pick up as much of that lubricant and uh, liquid of whatever nature it is. Of course, in the old days, it was literally just cement dust that would be thrown down. But uh, these days, cement dust with a mix of uh, some dry as environmental as well as some sand to try and get it up as quickly and effectively as possible. The ZX Tenor Masters Cup due to be up next. They will certainly need to get as much track clear uh, cleaning done as possible. As I said, they may just radio up to the top pit lane to tell the V8s to be on standby. Might send them out before they send the ZX Tens out. A flatbed battling to winch that car onto its flatbed itself the amount of times uh, these teams train to do and deal with situations like this you'll be surprised uh, they run a training camp every year at the beginning of the season for potential new marshals to join this team and situations similar to what they have here get uh, simulated to allow the marshals to know exactly what to do and how to handle themselves as well as the uh, cleanup operations that are required. Race control would have of course been on the radio to the rest of the marshal teams around the track to get them here to come and assist, particularly the ones that are mobile. There's Mitchie the Kid, a.k.a. Eric Schultz, our official overall COC. Hands-on, as always, from his side of things, too.
<laughs> look at this cleanup operation and I look at all the dirt that's been put down there to try and clean up the lubricant and uh, all of the spillage that happened at that uh, little straightaway between 13 and 14 and you kind of think you might gonna need a change of surface flag there for a couple of races because I think conditions have certainly changed dramatically now that we've dropped so much of that uh, uh, mix of cement sand and dries it environmental cleanup material and if that's the case as I said I think the call might be to send the V8s out first or are they going to restart pay bar Volkswagen challenge So they've managed to eventually get Michael Safiro's car onto the flatbed. It took a, a lot of hands-on from a couple of marshals as well to sort of jiggle it onto the back of that flatbed. Looks like you're going to reverse that Carl Army Bucky to the back of the flatbed and just uh, give its engine back. <laughs> that might be a good idea. That way you don't have to go and try and find two bits of your car. They're all on the same flatbed. As I said, slightly used polo engine. Could possibly be up for grabs here today. No, they just said no, just head back with the bucky. Let's take them and get them off as quickly as possible. So it looks like they've cleared all the cars. It's now mainly just debris and the material to clean up the fluid that was dropped in the crash. That has to be cleared. Always not a nice night sight to see. A really, really second-hand front end there of Michael Zafiro's pay by Volkswagen Challenge Class C Polo. And it's not what he would have liked at the end of the day's racing. left hand side there's not much maneuvering happening at the end of pit lane there and that's of course where the ZX10s are parked they've still got to get Judd Bertold's car out of the way concentration at this stage is to try and get all of that material off the circuit really really second hand front end there Not much maneuvering 
between the end of the plane there. And that's just where the ZX things are fast. We've got to get that first one to start out of the way. Concentration at this stage is to try and get the material off the circuit. So if you have just joined us on our live stream, a big welcome to you to Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit for the Extreme Festival combination round of national championship and regional championships. 297 competitors involved in today's racing, a record turnout at the Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. And unfortunately we are stopped on proceedings due to a big crash in the Paybar Volkswagen Challenge Class C. Uh, Michael Zafira coming across and hitting the wall trying to avoid a slow car in front of him and spun out in front of four other cars. The rest of the class he field managed to just squeeze through, but uh, now we stand waiting to find out whether they're going to be sending out the Mobile One V8 supercars. Are they going to restart the Paybar Volkswagen Challenge? Or is there going to be ZX-10R Masters Cup sent out as the next part of the day's proceedings? Those are the possibilities that we're looking at. And when we get confirmation of that, of course, we'll then be able to continue with our race action here from Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit in round two of the Extreme Festivals for 2024.
Ich glaube, Lies ist mit der Welt, der eh ist. Die Welt ist ein Zufall, der Welt ist ein Zufall. Aber dann hätte ich was, das ist mein Zufall. Das ist ja wirklich ein 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 Zufall. Thank you for the trial.
and uh, Warren Lombard and they were all fighting of course at the front end with the, uh, the Chevy powered machine and I think we're going to see more of the same of that but um, take nothing away from the Italian Stallion I think he might also be in for a bit of a, a run there to give the V8s uh, their second heat of the weekend's racing Remember with Rubble 1 V8 Supercars, the second race is an inverted grid. 
which is why you see Terry Wilford on the front row alongside Frank and Mateo. Warren Lombard was third, Familiaris was fourth, oh, sorry, was second, and Thomas Reeb won the race, and that's why they are inverted behind that. So as they come around now, behind the Pretoria Nur Toyota safety car, the lights are out, which means Rolling Thunder is about to make its way around the circuit for the first time today. Wilfred Dimitao, Lombard and Familiaris, Reeb and Dahl. Then it's uh, Sean Holtzhausen and Alki Kampant and Stevie Herbst at the back for GT2s. The reason they've sent them out, of course, is all of that debris on the left-hand side and some of those cars will be driving through the debris. They pick up a little bit of uh, the, uh, dirt from the tyres, which is not exactly what they want, but uh, the reason that the V8s have gone out there, of course, is they don't want to send the bikes. It'll be too dangerous to send the bikes out in conditions like that. We're under red light scenario. As soon as that red light goes out, Steve Herbs will form up at the back. They pop the hammer and go down there and on for the first time. These cars at Kailami, incredibly, 140 k's an hour in first gear. And 600 horsepowers unleashed down towards the uh, turn one. Frank and Mateo goes into second place, tucked in behind Wilford. It's double yellows up until they get onto the back straight. So we basically form up line of stern in the positions you were on the grid. And then you get the green flag onto the back straight, which then gives you the go ahead to go racing. So it's uh, Terry Wilford who leads out into sunset for the first time. And he'll be looking to try and stay there if he can, ahead of the Italian stallion, Frank and Mateo. Mateo Racing and Daltec Patrick's Jaguar XKR ahead of the Mustang of Warren Lombard, Pep Boys Automotive and the Gavin Wilkins Racing Machine and then you can see the rest of the field there tucked in behind now there are GT1 and GT2 cars involved in this and the difference between them of course is the uh, slightly lesser powered cars in GT2 and the tyre rule that comes in from GT2 you get to, to race on slightly second hand rubber as opposed to new rubber and that just brings your uh, race budget down by a huge amount. And that's what a lot of these guys have uh, gone into with the GT2 as an option because it definitely gives you the chance of playing at the front end and even giving the uh, front end boys a run for their money. So GT1, 1-5, to five, heading down towards Crocodiles. Tucked in behind them, Sam Dahl and Sean Holtzhausen. Holtzhausen under a bit of pressure though. Big dive on the inside there from Aki Kampan. Aki Kampan getting through on Holtzhausen. Terry Wilford gives a bit of roost to the Jaguar behind him. Warren Lombard's got some pressure coming from the Corvette on the outside. Lombard tries to stay ahead. Late in the afternoon, Friday. Sam Dahl on his own. Some Lombard looking for a way up the inside. Trying to get through there on the Falcon ahead of him. It's the Fox Ford Falcon of Terry Wolford that leads out over that Pep Boys Automotive and uh, Gavin Wilkins Racing Machine. Warren Lombard, that's the, the big Mustang. Behind him, it's the Corvette putting wheels on the dirt as he gets out of shape. As the Mateo has now dropped down to fourth place into the hands and clutches of his stablemate. And that is uh, Thomas Reed in the Chevy Lumina. So that's how it stands as they come onto the uh, straight between Sunset and Clubhouse. Five cars in it. Wilford leads it out. Lombard from Familiaris. Reeb now. Going to try and get through there on Frank and Mateo, but uh, hasn't found a way through just yet. Familiaris up onto the shelf to Leokop. Cuts the apex late. Watch for the drive down the hill now on the mine shaft cars through the mine shaft speaking to Dimitro yesterday 230 kilometers an hour and it's foot flat through the mine shaft there's no lifting through the mine shaft because of the the wing on the back and the the traction that's provided Dimitro of course using this weekend for some preparation for the Somalia hill climb so his car is actually not set up to race Kailami it's actually set up to race the hill climb at Somalia in about three weeks time so all he's doing is getting a bit of seat time behind the wheel making sure set up before the hill climb is in place which is why he's now dropped to the back of Lombard and Familiaris quickest car out there Julian Familiaris he's just going to put in the fastest lap so far 
of the second heat of V8 Supercars. It's got down to a 151.7. 718 it's a 151.766 from Lombard but oh there you go that little bit extra from the Chevy gets up the inside of Warren Lombard and gets past the big Mustang so it's Julian Familiaris up into second Lombard trying to come back at him as they go into sunset though so watch for the return of Lombard coming out of uh, oh no he just runs a bit wide opens up the door and by that that's allowed the Mobile One and Cafe 9 Automotive Chevy Lumina up into third place. So we got Wolford in the Fuchs Ford Falcon leading things out over the Dimitar Racing Corvette of Julian Familiaris. Mobile One and Cafe 9 Automotive Chevy Lumina in second but looking for a chance for uh, possibility of an overtake here as Familiaris goes wide around the outside of Terry Wolford looking for a way through and as he does that the attack comes from Thomas Reed at the same time. Familiaris will be on the outside line for the sweep but he'll be on the inside line for Crocodiles and look at that Reeb wants to go with him Reeb has a big look on the inside of Terry Wolford as they come out of Crocodiles Wolford runs wide comes straight back onto the circuit though cuts off the nose of Thomas Reeb and doesn't give him any room to play now as they come down onto the breaking point into the final corner there's some roost coming up from all of that debris on the circuit from the crash earlier it's Familiaris out front, exactly where he wants to be as the reigning champion. He didn't quite get the win yesterday, he got a second place. But he'll certainly be looking for a win now in the second heat. If he can just pull away from Thomas Reeve, who dives on the inside of Wilford, going into turn one. Makes it stick very easily. Chevy's now one and two. Corvette and Lumina versus the Mustang, who's also squeezed through there. So Lombard putting the Mustang up ahead of the Falcon. Wolford looking to go on the inside of Wolford into sunset he was slightly early on the brakes compared to Wolford so maybe Terry was able to just keep him out yes he was just watching those brake lights as they went over the little ridge into sunset and uh, yeah De Matteo was a little bit earlier on the brakes than Wolford was so Wolford able to keep him out on the brakes into sunset corner they're going to the S's now back to the top of the hill so De Matteo now putting the pressure on to Terry Wolford wants to squeeze past for fourth if he can Lombard trying to answer the maneuvering that happened between the two Chevys to get through on him he's lost out oodles of ground to Familiaris but not too much on Thomas Reed if he can just keep Reed within his sights maybe by the end of this there might be enough time for him to have a go and get through up into second place down into Crocodiles in that uh, chic Fuchs Ford Fal Falcon Harris, Reed and Lombard the tower closes again under braking into turn number 14 gaps opened up between the top three There are controllable gaps between those three drivers, that is for sure. As I say, that big black line's being laid down there by the Mustang. As Lombard tries to close things down now for Reed. Really, Horace once again goes quickest and gets down to 49.350. Reba 49.677 and a 50.1 from Lombard. I think that uh, time might change slightly now. So Lombard's personal best is a 50.316, which is exactly what he did on this last lap. 49.677, also personal best there for Thomas Reed. And a 49.350, personal best for Julian Familiaris and fastest lap of the race so far. So I'm not quite, quite sure how much more evenly matched you want them to be. There is literally a second splitting those first three cars. And so the fact that these are 25 to 30 year old cars, they are really putting in a, a valiant effort to stay within that amount of time between the top three. Fourth place battle still rages with uh, Wilford at the front of it still. 
hangs on to keep Pat de Mateo. Way back to Sam Dahl, who's still in sixth place. Kampan in seven, Holtzhausen is eight, and Steve Irvin is in ninth. They're about to start their final lap, and he's he heading up towards the back straight away. about halfway through the race. Racing and Dimitar Racing Corvette of Julian Familiaris with the number one plate on from his championship win last year. Coming up to the old West Bank corner, of course, Leo Kopp now here at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. And Familiaris in control, no doubt about it. 1.7 second gap over the line, it's probably about about one and a half seconds there to Thomas Reed, but uh, Lombard is not giving up. Lombard trying to carry corner speed down into Crocodiles now. We have to be very late on the brakes to close in on Reeb. Two of them just running. Line of stern, and it's going to stay the same as they head towards the line. So it is Mobile One VH Super Cars race two of the weekend. First one went to Thomas Reed. Familiaris was second. This time it's Familiaris with Reed second. And Sam Dahl has been able to keep out Aki Kampan, although Kampan has got a lot closer. Has a look into the final corner. The guys to the line now. The two Mustangs are going to be side by side. No, they're not. the line and finish up our V8 supercar race action here from the uh, bumper weekend here at Kyle Army. Sean Altshausen comes through there. He's going to be pretty happy with the finish in eighth place. And uh, this will be Steve Hoops. We stand by to find out exactly who's going to be next on track. Paybar Volkswagen Challenge second race has been called. They're not going to be those cars. going to be looking to see some two-wheeled action on track with the Sunbed ZX and R Masters Cup or possibly DOE Formula V's or Astron Energy Volkswagen Cup Race 2. Uh, we'll wait and let you see as soon as we know. Um, I think the Polos might be on standby. If that's the case, they're going to bring them out before the ZX10 R Masters Cup. And we've got Jagger Robertson to have a quick chat to as well. So while we've got some time, we're going to leave you with uh, the sights and sounds until you see myself and Jagger on camera. amazing start to the season in Cape Town it didn't quite go according to plan down there even though you had the two poles but you've definitely cemented the championship lead with the two wins and two poles here today yeah definitely we definitely practiced our starts after our Cape Town experience I didn't want to mess up from pole again and fortunately we came here this weekend got pole twice two races so you know, points and being the leader of the championship and keeping our head down for the next round how's it been the big change up from uh, sort of saloon cars and NX legends to jump into a single-seater 
honestly the best car I've ever driven. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I definitely enjoy it a lot and look forward to finding little bits here and there and becoming even faster. I think that's going to be uh, what everybody else is a bit concerned about. You know, you found pace literally from the first time you climbed in the car. I think your first session you were second. And other than that, you've been at the front end of the field at almost every single turn. So it's not a bad decision to go. And considering the fact that this is also one of the biggest prize purses in uh, South African motorsport. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the prize purse. I, I enjoy the racing. It's definitely a car that I look to, to build, build on small things and make me a better driver. It certainly teaches you how to drive though, but you've got some competition, there's no doubt about it. I think Casey was uh, up close and personal, a lot closer than what you expected him to be in the second one there. Yeah, he kept me honest in the in the second race, I can't lie. Uh, watched the mirror a couple of times, but managed to managed to keep the lead and take the win. Swat Cup's up next, looking forward to it? Definitely, uh, we were fast there when we tested there the first time, so look to carry this momentum over to the next round. Brilliant stuff, thanks Jager. So also, thank you. So just climbing in from that interview with Jagger, getting a bit of information as well uh, about what's happening on track and it's, well, it's pretty self-explanatory because uh, Daniel Sun joins me in commentary and Polo's are on track so I would assume it's Polo Cup up next. What do you think Daniel? Yeah I think so. I can see also thanks for bringing me food eh. I had to phone, <laughs> I had to phone Faisal and organise my own child but appreciate that bro. I'll, bring, uh, I'll, I'll, bring, I'll, I'll, bring I'll take you up in PE on they brought, they brought lunch to the team there, so I'll try and grab some for uh, SATC. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and cool. When I come back, you'll No, it's all good. It's all good. I managed to squeeze something out of them, and they sent it up here. So I'll steal, I'll steal some of Graham's sweets. No, yeah, that's a good idea. Listen, no, he's always he, got a stash somewhere. He was he's complaining yesterday about the size of the packets of chips. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the size of man that he is, he needs uh, yes. extra large. The sustenance is definitely required. Everything exactly. extra large. Exactly. All right, so into the second race. And let's have a look and see how we're going to line things up here. Because you, you mentioned in the first one that uh, it's all based on fastest laps from race one. Mm. And Ethan could see it was quicker. So he's on pole, which will just be uh, pretty interesting to see how things turn out here for uh, the championship battle because uh, he wasn't really involved in Cape Town he was just off that championship battle but now getting into the mix at the front end he certainly has got a chance and he's already had uh, another two well one and a half races more than anybody else in this class because he's also been piloting along with Mo Karodia in the 
Volkswagen Challenge. And when I talk about the junior drivers, I'm talking about those two, particularly a bit more lap time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, seat time always helps and uh, seems to be paying off. So, great job, pole position. Um, I think it's probably his first pole position in, in Polo Cup. So, it's going to be uh, interesting to see if he's got the nerve to hold it together. Stay in P1 for, for the first few corners. That's going to be a tricky one. It's always a nervous, uh, nervous feeling when it's your first. Not time. an easy thing to do when you yeah. get your first pole. First time 100%. on pole, it's always a little bit difficult. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, the interesting thing is, of course, he's got uh, the two rivals in the championship so far. Uh, one behind him and one alongside him. Jason Newsmore on the front row, and uh, Nathan Victor behind him. Nathan was chatting to me. We just did an interview just after that first race, and he said that uh, he he preferred to be in third heading down towards turn one because that's kind of the inside line where you want to be yeah no for sure um pole's, i mean pole you want to be pole but it, pole's difficult because you're under pressure um it's, i think it's a bit easier to mess up your start because you you're thinking about it more um if you got uh, quite a calm personality and, and and those things then i suppose you get away with it a lot easier than others but some people don't handle it as as easy well, let's see if he's able to handle it now because we've got uh, they've gone with six laps now so i think they've changed the timing to laps for the last couple of races because of the amount of time we lost with that big crash in mm. the volkswagen challenge so it's a six lap race about to get underway according to the board on the left hand side there and i would assume that that would have been put out on a bulletin at some point which i haven't seen just yet but uh, we're now under starters orders it's the one minute board that changes to or two minutes to one, one minute to 30, 30 to five, in about the space of about 20 seconds. You've been there. Yeah. <laughs> they don't kind of stick to the time, do they? No. Nah. <laughs> five seconds turns to lights on. And stand by for lights off and race action. Here we go. Good start in the mid pack. There. Great start from Ethan. Looks like he hasn't Terrible been able to use that. Nathan, eh? And uh, yeah, Nathan getting started out there. The master's standing by for their start now. Lights on, lights off. Oh, and from the back of the pack, Johan Kost getting off the line nicely as well there. Team Red Racing, but his teammate, John Kruger, goes side by side with Masters towards turn one. Speaking of side by side, there's three Team Red cars literally side by side there. Tyler on the outside, Roshan on the outside, and Jandre in the middle. But it is Corodia, who looks like he's got the whole shot, but and uh, might have squeezed through for the lead. So yeah, fantastic the start by Mo Corodia. What a start. Mo's had some uh, good times in these polos and he's certainly uh, been showing prowess to be at the front end. John Kruger leads out over Wayne Masters and looks like oh, in the background on the cruiser trying to take your base effect. Loose more inside of uh, Kutsia. Oh no, Kutsia to the Corodia, front again. Yeah, Corodia's, Corodia's dropped, dropped the third. back. So yo, they're just chopping and changing at the front end there, bud. Yeah, he must, he must have gone into Nasher corner just a little bit too hard because uh, Ethan must have had the run on him and he just wanted to with him, so dropping down to third again. Jumping to third. This coast now goes on the attack, trying to close down on Elna Cruiser. It's uh, Ferro behind that. Katsia leads out, but Jason Newsmore wants this victory. Yeah, I think Jay wants so to get pushing. a victory. He's pushing. Yeah, he knows Nathan's not, uh, not near him at this stage, so he's pushing... Is that an e-racing line that came out of Tyler Robinson there? That looks like an e-sports line. <laughs> Unless somebody forced her into an e-sports line. I think so. <laughs> Tyler getting a little bit of shape at the top end there. Went for the triple apex, literally. And uh, got all three apexes there. Summit Racing's Nathan Victor trying to close things down now on Corodia. He's got Smallberger on his tail, then Fisser. Fisser not quite getting the start he wanted, but of course he did start in six. Oh, so two he's wheels. Made up one place. Two wheels is always good out of that corner. If you can get it back down onto four. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't always end up that way, though. So coming to the line, a complete a lap of yeah, the six. I think six. Uh, Nathan Victor was lining up a move there on Corodia, getting a nice exit out of the last corner. So I think he's going to try and move into turn one. Look out for that one as John Kruger heads the Masters coming out of uh, the final corner. Looks like somebody, that might be Tyler at the back there, I think is slowing. So a little bit of problems there for the young lady. As Corodia is under attack from Victor, you said he was setting things up. Is it going to work for him? He's gone left to right. They side by side yeah, as they got, go into I barbecue. He's got him. If he can hold that line, he'll have him for, for inside of Nashville. And got him. He's there got you him. go. 
Great move. Move. Done. Great move. Set that up from a while back. Oh, a little push to pass from Charles. Realising that there was a bit of a mistake coming out of Mokorodia, so he wants to try and capitalise on it. Exactly what Charles Morgan decided to do there is he's decided to set the push to pass as we've got Corodia under pressure already. Yeah. Let's see if we can get him to uh, buckle under that pressure. Yeah. Jason Lusmore needs to he needs to get past Ethan as soon as possible. I think Nathan's gonna creep up to them pretty soon. Mm. What tends to happen, Dana, I mean you you've been in the situation before. If you're in a battle like as hard as what uh, the top two are fighting there tend to slow each other down ever so slightly which gives the advantage to the chasing car and once again a push to pass being used up the hill from Victor so that's about three he's used so he's going to have to be careful he doesn't run out of them yeah. by the end of the race no, he's pushing hard he needs to he knows he needs to catch uh, catch the front two if he wants to have a, a chance at the victory in this race because it's uh, it is only a six lap race so he needs to get close enough. And Another factor that you have to take yeah. into account there as well, Danny, is of course is he's leading the championship. Yeah, for sure. So does he want to, you know, settle for third and maintain the lead of the championship? But if Jason Lusmore gets the win, it kind of even things out again. So he's yeah. got to go for it. No, he's got I would to catch Jay. In this position, if I were him, push for the front two. Um, if you're not in the position for the last uh, lap and a half, then settle. But uh, let's see no, what he's let's, pushing. Let's okay. see what he's going to do. All right, that's cool. Nice information from coach Dan there hopefully you, the rookies are listening to that as well buddy yeah well you, you, you never know mistakes could happen up front you need to be close enough to to be the third piggy to take it so there you not, go he's not, he's not holding back he's decided right let's get the the maneuver on here I think he he inside runs wide, wide. Uh, oh, you can still got him undercut oh I don't know watch for the inside now yeah, as they're coming to barbecue up to Yuxke could see a back at him back in front what a great move I just saw him coming in I think he just placed the car right he knew what was going to happen yeah. there so he, he waited him, he let him take the dive and then uh, was hoping to have a, a good undercut there to get next to him again yeah and it paid off nicely but that, that all of that has allowed Nathan to get a bit closer look how much closer he is now yeah that's exactly what I said two cars fighting hard slowing each other down now the deuce was at the front back in front officially now. Oh, 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 he goes defensive. Oh, 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 oh. weaving, yeah. That's one move, two moves. Yeah. Okay. I think one's allowed. Two might be a little bit more than what's allowed. But anyway, he managed to force him out of the I attempt to go into the SS. I think Jason Lismore used a push to pass to get past him, though. Okay, so he's also used one. I think he used one on that, uh, that straightaway before Sunset Corner yes. to, get, to get ahead. A little bit extra squirt there towards the S's and then uh, into the S's made it the move and made it stick. Jean-Dre Marais just in the background there as well. Nice to see his uh, improvement every single time he climbs into a polo. And watching for his uh, improvement, it's got him up into seventh place. It's where he qualified, so I'm sure he'll be happy with uh, finishing up there. Although I know he was touting to try and get into that top six, possibly top five. But when you look at these first five cars, how evenly matched they are. Look at that. 208, 208, 209, 210, 209, 209. Very close. One actually. and a half seconds. That's what polos have all been about. 28th year of Polo Cup. Uh, I know that you've sort of grown up with it as much as I have. But uh, it's great to see, you know, opportunities being given to these uh, young drivers yeah. from uh, your Rookie Cup. Stepping up into these big GTIs. It's a big step up. A little bit of wide running there, I think, from Roshan Goodman, if I'm not mistaken. Because Roshan just running a little bit wide out of that one. Or it might have been close in the Masters a bit further back than that. Yeah, and we're going to have an interesting battle soon between the Masters because they're actually catching the back end of the juniors. So exactly. That's going to create some uh, some sparse. That's uh, always what we like to see in the Polo Cup. So we've got uh, the halfway stage reach. It's three out of three done. They're on to lap four the head towards sunset Nathan Victor was quickest he got down to a 208 404 as opposed to the fives and sevens being done by Lou Small and Kutsia so he's about a, a tenth of a second quicker which is why he's bridging that gap yeah. as rapidly as he is and Ethan's still right on Jason I'm not letting him go no he won't I think Ethan Kutsia would love to get a victory here and just uh, put himself into the mix for the championship the victory will certainly bring him a lot closer to the top two. Uh, the, the victory going to Ethan Gutsia, of course, would make, make uh, 
Nathan Victor hang on to the championship lead for now. But, uh, they are going to Swatkops and that's the home of Team Red Racing so I'm sure Jason Newsball will be looking forward to uh, that round. Um, when I chatted to, to Nathan Denny he was saying you know this is kind of neutral ground for everybody because no one gets to test you and of course you just arrive with about an hour's practice in total mm. to get the car set up so it makes it a bit more difficult for the cars. Yeah, for sure. But it's always nice to have those tracks. You know, it uh, really shows the, the driver's capabilities of adapting to a circuit. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they'll have their home circuits. and But there's, there are some tracks where it's a little bit of an unknown. And it's, it's nice for us as well, Spe <coughs> spectators and uh, sponsors. Well, we're going to have to be careful as well. Halfus is closing him down. It's a big gap to Jandre, big gap to Tyler. Uh, she's now into the top eight after having gone off the track there ever so slightly at the top end of Leokop. Running wide out of the eSport line again. Mirov Singh, much better outing for him. He's also into the top ten for the Kyle Army exhaust team. And then it's Pierluigi Mussolini in tenth place. Hannah Skippers there too. But Skippers is the man you were just mentioning. There has to be, uh, we have to keep an eye on too because it looks like Wayne Masters, Kruger and Derek Smallberger are about to catch the doctor and give him a bit of a run for his money. They're closing in fast. Um, Wayne hasn't really made any moves on John, but it looks like he managed to get past him. And this previously happened. Yeah. He's been just tagging along, tagging along. I wonder if, he, if they got up to traffic and uh, allowed Wayne to jump him. But uh, for now, he's got the lead of the Masters. Oh no, he's back, back no, behind he's again. again. Back behind. He's again. Back behind him again. They fight there with Nirov Singh and Hannah Skippers. I was also just saying, Charles Smallberger had a little squiz on the inside of Mokorodia as they headed towards uh, Yuxke. So I think Corodia could be in a bit of trouble here. There we go. This is the second battle. That's Pierluigi Mussolini. And Hannah Skippers just ahead of him. Someone's run wide. Was that Corodia? Yeah, I think it might have been. It looks like it, yeah. I think Corodia might have run wide there coming out of the second S drop him out of contention which is a bit of a pity there for Mo. But it might just give us a three-way fight to the end of this one with uh, one and a half laps to go. There you go, it was Corodia, confirmation. Uh, Ethan going for a move, oh just not close enough. And a big look though. A massive look. was just uh, bitted there by Luce Moore's uh, positioning of his car. It's a wide space to play down at Crocodiles, you know how much room you've got to play there. Possibly another look here. Maybe not this time, but on the next pass, he might have a go because that'll be the last time he can try it. If they come across the line, all of them running wide. And oh, oh. Out of sh that's Hannah Skippers. Oh, and that car that's is a big one. badly damaged. Is that the Kyle Army exhaust car? It is. Yeah. Nero Singh and uh, Dr. Hannah Skippers who have come together down in the bowl. Looks like he's got team bone. I think we're going to have a, a flag, a red flag. Possibly looks like a red flag, or will they let them try and finish this up? On the outside. Might be able to go into double yellows to try and finish this race if they can. Loose ball. Well, he won't be in trouble because if they do go red flag, he goes one lap back and he's in the lead anyway. So it won't affect his race. It won't affect second place for Ethan Woods here or for Victor. What Nathan's got to try and do now is get ahead of him. So if they do run to the end of the race, it'll take them. Of course, this is the last lap, so it'll take them to the line and hopefully get Victor right behind Loose Ball. He'll then keep Nathan Victor in the lead of the championship. A puff of smoke there. Skipper's out of the car. He's just waving to the marshals to say there's a bit of debris there, just in case they hadn't seen it. Oh, how was yeah, that he needs shot, to move mate? away from the track though. He needs to, he's in a danger zone there. He needs to get away. Yeah, get out. Get out the way. Don't let the marshals handle all that kind of situation. How were those three cars into the S's, mate? Two wheels into the S's. <laughs> All of them are sending it. They know they are. They are on the last lap. Yeah. So they are pushing. Double yellows will tell them that they can't overtake down into the bowl. They'll see double yellows at the marshal point here, yeah, at the bottom end of the circuit as well. So they'll have to keep line of soon. It'll be a, a late dive into the final corner. If there's going to be any changes there from Ethan Gutierrez, he can't go there because of the yellow flags. And it's just Skippers' car on the outside. Oh no, there we go. It is also Nirav Singh. So the Kyle Lamy exhaust man also parked on the sideline. 
they've kept it fortunately under double Ooh, yellows. Nathan's going to try here. Yeah. Finish. Yeah, just too little, too late there. Just too late, yeah. Loose ball to the line for the victory. So it's shared on us once again between Jason Newsmore and Nathan Victor for the wins. <coughs> but of course those pole positions are going to be important. It's to play with there, so I think what it'll do is it'll just keep Nathan Victor in the front end of the championship. There's Goodman coming in behind him with Smallberger who's got to the front of Kruger. I, don't, I didn't see Masters. There's Masters in the background I think. Or was that Ferro? It might have been his teammate Ferro. I didn't see Masters. I think Wayne Masters has gone through already. Or well, maybe we missed Wayne. They yeah, missed Wayne's him, gone yeah. through. Looks like he's come through. So Wayne takes the victory. Out. Charge at the back end there. Derek Smallberger. Derek Smallberger and John. John, yeah. yeah. Maybe there was a bit of fracas here. You know, these two came together and those Masters were with them. So it may have it involved just, John, uh, yeah. just jeopardized John's chances of the victory there. Yep. And uh, they were involved in that incident. So that's how it goes. So there you have it. Newsmore takes the victory from Kutsia. Nathan Victor in third place with the fastest lap. And of course, he'll also maintain the lead of the championship heading to Swatkops in about a month's time. As we get ready to go now, next looks like it's going to be Formula V. Daniel Sutton, once again, I'll see you in a few moments' time for some uh, touring cars. Awesome. I'll see Thanks, you there. Dude. Cheers. All right, so Daniel Rowe going to come and join me later on and see if he's uh, happy to go for the final race of touring cars and SATC Super Cup. Up next, looks like it's going to be Formula V, though, um, because I did see the Formula V names come up on the strap there just before we dropped the graphic on the side. Or uh, are we going to see ZX-10s out on circuit? We'll wait and see until we know. We will be back shortly here from Kyle Army with commentary of the race action, the final heats of the combined Extreme Festival.
Welcome back yeah, <coughs> to uh, Carlami Grand Prix Circuit and it's the second race of Formula V's. It'll be a slightly extended race for Formula V's due to the fact that they had some issues yesterday with their uh, first heat of the big crash that took place there. So uh, looking forward to seeing the race action that always is provided by our Formula V's, the DOE Formula V's, um, powered of course by CIM Lubricants. And uh, looking forward to, of course, uh, the race action that they provide as always, some of the top class single seater action comes out of Formula V. Uh, also, some information that's been thrown my way there by their chairman, which is great to see. Uh, Theo for Mark just sending me a couple of updates in terms of how things are going to go. Uh, we had uh, nine cars all in the 203s, two minutes and the three second mark yesterday. So, uh, it should be pretty tight racing between the first nine cars. Got a couple of rookies thrown in for the day as well. A big welcome to Reynard van der Linde. That's Sean van der Linde's nephew. Yanni Gerbe and uh, Chayden Tromp, who uh, joins us as the, the youngest driver in Formula V. So 14 years of old, 14 years of age. And, of course, um, the 25 cars we had, sadly, we lost Chos and Helder Gavea yesterday. Their two cars were not able to be repaired in time for today's start of race two. And then, of course, as we saw... Uh, a couple of new sponsors getting thrown into the mix throughout the season last year. Marcel Blick note in car 112 has also got some new branding on his car, the CIM livery on that machine of his. So uh, stand by for some race action now coming from Formula V and their second heat of the weekend. get the drop down towards turn one always interesting to see when you've got cars on similar lap times and and there's nine of them that are within a couple of hundreds of a second of each other in the doe formula v so uh, expect to see a big fight as always in this category grid is made up of peter hills on pole position alongside him will be brandon hills Kat van den Bach and Lendl Janssen the second row. Carl Watt and Theo for Mark the third row. And it looks like they've all got off nicely. Peter Hills will be looking to try and stay ahead of his son Brandon. Brandon with a good start. He's definitely looking for a chance to maybe just spoil the day there for Dad. And it looks like he's going to get the whole shot down into turn one. So just a reminder to everybody that's uh, on our live stream that we had to change over to part two because of uh, the live stream that happens here at, uh, at Kailami. And on Facebook, of course, we only get eight hours of live stream given to us. And the availability there throughout the day for uh, live stream changes at the eight-hour mark. So we have to go to part two. So if you did miss out on all the action, of course, part one is already available on our uh, Facebook pages that have been sharing the live stream all through the day. And, of course, 
course the uh, part two will now be kicking off but if you're watching on YouTube you haven't lost anything YouTube lets us run all through the day and uh, this is now part two action kicking off with the DOE Formula V's and here's Brandon Hills who leads out into the S's for the first time and remember they've now gone to laps to finish up the race for the day due to a couple of incidents that happened throughout the day and have now given us a chance to just go to finalizing the day with uh, racing as it should be at well as it always is I should say not as it should be um, with uh, laps being ticked off one by one and it's a 12 lapper for this first heat of DOE for Willoughby DOE from an EV powered with uh, CIM Lubrifuel. And at this point in time, a couple of cars that were involved at the front end yesterday just battling to get to the front end. Yoko Shrix being one of them. Shrix, he would like to be a little bit higher up, but of course he battled in uh, qualifying sessions, having only had uh, two practice sessions on circuit. Uh, he eventually finished up in ninth place, so he's got some work to do now, and it looks like he's made his way up into what is about sixth place on track as they cross the line to complete the first lap in anger. One of 11, or one of 12 done, 11 to go. Brandon Hills, Lennel Janssen, Carl Watt, and Gert van der Bach ahead of Peter Hills for the top five. And it's MD Bester who just crossed the line, only just ahead of uh, Jakko Schrix. 952982. Three hundredths of a second between those two cars as they cross the line there to complete the first lap in anger. MD Bester pushing hard to try and get through and possibly catch that uh, pack just ahead of him. Peter Hills will have his sights set on and Kat van der Bach is just ahead of Hills so I think Hills will be looking at Kat van der Bach to see if he can find a way past if he can. Brandon Hills, Lennel Janssen at this stage are the, the class of the field but it's Lennel Janssen who's the quickest out of everybody getting down to a 2.09.8. He looks to try and close things down there on Brandon Hills who's looking for a victory here in the second heat. Slightly longer second heat as I said due to the fact that uh, there was a bit of an incident in race one yesterday afternoon and they weren't able to complete their first race which is why they've extended it slightly here for race two so going to be what they would usually have here if it was just a national race day or just a regional race day uh, the full 12 laps of action available to them they come out of, uh, the top of Leacop. there's a bit of pressure now on Brandon Hill slipstream effect coming into play coming through the sweep and will it work in the or to the advantage of Lennel Janssen. No, it won't because Brandon Hills goes defensive. Carl Watt tucked in behind that. And it's Kat van der Bach and Peter Hills closing them down. Brandon Hills runs a little bit wide, giving all an opportunity for Watt to dive on the inside, going into Cheetah. Decides maybe not now. Might just be a little bit early to try to maneuver like that. If it had been the last lap, he probably would have had a go. And he decides not to switch the better part of Valor right now. Let's live to race another couple of laps as they complete lap two of 12. Hills, who is now in second place behind Lendl Janssen. Peter Hills is back up to fourth ahead of Gert van der Berg. So one dropping down in terms of the hills and one bumping his way up one position. Maybe two by the time they get down towards turn one. Is that uh, Peter Hills through on Carl Watt? Yes, it is. Peter Hills now up into third place. Trying to close the gap down now on his son Brandon. As they come through there, the rest of the pack at the back of the pack having some... Uh, of their own little fights. Yako Schmidt right at the back. Jaden Tromp, as I said, only 14 years of age and already into the mix here with uh, a number of seasoned campaigners in Formula V's. Hills was quickest. Peter, that is, out of the Hills boys in that first part of uh, this race. He now goes quickest out of all of the cars on track. Peter Hills sitting at the moment in fourth place on a 2.04.5. 2.04.6 from Lennon Janssen is the only man who's come closest to him. Rest of the cars all the way down into 10th place in the 2.05s. So that's how evenly matched they are, despite the little gaps that have opened up there. So some packs of cars now starting to get into the thick of it with each other. 
Williams, Marcel Blucht by Paul Hills and Sean van der Linde. So we saw the uh, start of a race career this weekend for a couple of the drivers involved in Formula V. He's joining this pack, Reynold van der Linde. Timing monitor for the second hit, so we might have had some issues for getting into the 16 cars there. So not 25, no, he is still out there. As is Yanni Geisse. Yanni Karba, I should say. And he's ahead of Yanni Geisse, in fact. And Jaden Trump up to 15th place there for the 14 year old. So not a bad start to his Formula V career. These boys have been going at it for a couple of times now, in a couple of years, particularly the man in third challenging for second he's got uh, a couple of championship belts under his uh, table at home he's hidden away from his son and he's now going to try and take another way one of him, him as they're into the closing stages hopefully be able to stay ahead of Brandon but he's not there yet he's going to still try and find a way through there on Brandon Hills who's fighting hard to catch Lendl Janssen race leader first five pulling away slightly there from Shrix in sixth place He's got Boyens on his tail. Fear for Mark trying to find a way through and uh, get through on MD Bester. So MD keeps up for Mark. Hills is through on Hills, so Peter ahead of Brandon. Still down the short straight towards the S's. And past him. And now looks to take on Mendel Janssen at the front end. With those multiple championships, of course, Peter Hills will definitely be well aware of how to use a V around this circuit. Having raced here on numerous occasions in the past. But he has a little bit more experience than a lot of these drivers around this track. Back up to the top of the hill. That's the 86 car. And a nice little run there from them as they're into the mix. Back down into the bowl comes Van der Linde looking for a way through. Across the line to complete another lap. It's four of nine done now. I should say four done and eight to go. So uh, getting to that first third completed. The 12 laps of action. And Lennel Janssen now feeling the pressure. As Peter Hills goes late on the brakes into turn one at Growthorn. Trying to get through there on that securities machine. Things out at this point. Mangaza Racing currently sitting second, third, and fourth of all because they can see that's not a bad effort there from them. It's a uh, hat from the back in the zone for Dio East Arc McCall. His teammate looks like he's been better. Yes, he has. Very points through now on Yako Shrix. So it's Hills on the move here. day here for uh, the leader, Lennel Janssen. Van der Linde is on his own some for a while, but now being joined, trying to close down on Geyser. Happening here with these guys. Albertine Pinar there with him as well. And then, of course, uh, Marcel Blutner with that new livery. <coughs> so, as they go into wrapping up lap number five of 12, there'll be seven to go. No changes at the front end for the first four, at least. Further back from that, Sean van der Linde under pressure, as I said, from Albertine Pinar, but also trying to close down on Marcel Blutnoot. He best to head now, Theo for Mark. Mark and Bester going at it as they cross the line. Leaders down into Crowthorne. 
Eight braking coming from the orange car. And five car cut from the back once by Carl Watt. Carl Watt trying to keep him honest though. Not going to be room to play. these drivers what they need to do in the next couple of laps into this one they're going to reach the halfway stage Gap to the fourth place car of Carl Watt. Watt though wants to close that gap down. Look to do that if he can. And it's definitely looking to do that as they get into the halfway stage about to be completed. Our Masters Cup. There is the new livery there for CIM and for uh, Marcel Blithmoet. Coming back as quick as this time. At the halfway stage, the man in fifth place is your fastest car on track. He's just put in a 203.498. 203.555. 5.91. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 5.9. 
there's a big move. That is a huge move. Peter Hills to the front. Brandon Hills to second. Lendl, Leonson down to third. Is that good timing? Coming up on some back markers, it might be. Back marker that should be in contention. Possibly Reynard van der Linde that they're closing in on. So if that's the 25 car, Reynard van der Linde about to be caught now by the three leaders, in fact, five leaders of this race. Made no difference. So they up slightly, but it didn't. So the background. Four and five. Oh, uh, slowly to show a little bit more intention on getting to the back end of that top three. Pushing hard, doing so is bringing Carl Watt along for the ride. Watt is not fighting him, he's letting him go, and using him to try and close the gap down to himself. And third place, Lennel Janssen. Lennel Janssen has a big look into turn one, way too big, I think, to try and make that stick. Yeah, I thought so. He gets the second, though. Brandon Hills went a little bit wider and tried to come back at him. With that, he had to drop the third. And it's now concertina those first five right up together. Shrixie's probably seen that and said, hang on a second, I need to be there. Jaka Shrixie's going to try and do that in the number one car. He's going to try and beat everybody and maintain that number one plate by the end of the 2024 season if he can. Not always easy to do when you've got such big fights on. And as always in Formula V, they've definitely kept the second race the best to last. Front of back, front of back from what? Oh, those first five are so evenly matched as they come out of Leocop down the mine shaft. Watch for the slipstream here from Peter Hills. He pulls out inside line. We'll give him the outside for the entrance into Crocodiles. Brandon Hills goes inside. Sneaks up the inside of Dad and says, yeah, I'll take second for a while. And right on their tail is Kat van der Bach. Van der Bach, Lennel Janssen, Peter Hills. How many times have we said that in the same sentence over the last 10, 12 years in Formula V racing? Final quarter of this race. Nine down and three to go. Brandon Hills this time goes quickest. 2034. Peter Hills just behind him on a 2035. If you want to see how tight it is, Lendl Janssen. 203.515. Peter Hills in third place. 203.513. It's two thousandths of a second between Hills in first and Lennon Janssen in first, I should say, and Hills in third in terms of lap times. It's almost MotoGP esque this in terms of the lap times and how close they are. Lona at the front will not want to relinquish that gap and not going to give any space or room to these guys to try and make an overtaking maneuver. Van der Linde does that, he does it slightly further back there on Vaughan Hills. He finds a way through and I'm going to try and be followed by his closest rival in that little battle, which at this stage Vaughan Hills drops further and further back. Lufknoet is the man in question. Into Cheetah we go one more time. How awesome is this stuff? 
great to see the race action that's been provided here all day long. Once again, closing down on the back of MD Besta into the closing stages. They've got two to go. And Lendl Janssen continues to control things from the front. Brandon Hills back and into second, but Hills is under a bit of pressure once again from Dad. Peter Hills is not going to give it up without a fight, that is for sure. So it's Hills versus Hills versus Janssen versus Van and Bach. They've broken away slightly now from Carl Watt. And it is a little further back there to Sean van der Linde, who's ahead of Vaughan Hills and Marcel Blicknote. It's just outside of the top 10, or 10, 11 and 12 place actually. One thing you don't want to be is behind a car heading down the mine shaft at this stage, or down towards turn one. Up with a lap and a half to go. Slip stream is always a big factor with these cars seen it on a numerous occasions how well Peter Hills can use that slipstream to his advantage. So, okay, I'll, I'll leave a cup down the hill to come. Wire, no doubt about it. Hills versus Hills. There was an incident, I think, at the bowl. There's a green flag waving frantically to say the incident's been sorted out from here on out. So uh, every car and every man for himself now onto the last lap. Last lap board comes up. Lendl Janssen, Brandon Hills, Peter Hills, Kat van der Bach, gap to Watt. This is Theo for Mark. MD Bester under pressure now. Dwayne's trying to come back at him. Janssen pulling a little bit of a margin. Half a second there. That might be enough to keep the two Hills boys at bay. Brandon says, no, nah, I'm still going to have a go here. We've got to find a way for a victory. It's been a long time since we saw Brandon Hills on the top step of the podium. Love one yet, Kyle Army, that's for sure. Always a circuit you want to win at, that's for sure, is Kyle Army Grand Prix circuit. So, into the little short straight. Towards the S's one more time. Peter Hills was quickest this time. So, can he find a way past on Brandon up towards the Zierkopf and maybe do a little outbreaking maneuver? And then set his intentions on Lennon Janssen, who seems to have a little margin. He's going to go for it. There we go. Late breaking from Peter Hills into Leokop. Clips the curb. And no, just can't quite get there. Down the hill now in the slipstream though. Might be able to pull out under braking for the second place at least. I don't think he's going to have enough time to catch Lendl. But oh, Brandon sees him coming. Runs wide. Doesn't give the opportunity for Peter to go onto the inside. And here they come. Towards Cheetah. It's a battle for second. First is sorted. It's second place we'll have to concentrate on. Lendl Janssen going to the line for the victory here in DOE Formula V powered by CIM Lubrifuel and takes it with Brandon Hills hanging on just to beat our dad unbelievable finish there between those two they come through ahead of Kat van der Bach here for Mark with Boyens on his tail Boyens got through by the looks of things on MD Bester yes he has so it's uh, Boyens now up ahead of MD Bester for the top 10 for Mark will finish in 7 Shrix has already crossed the line in 6th place and it's now Eric Boynes behind Theo for Mark, MD Bester in ninth, and 10th spot should go to Sean van der Linde as we wrap up DOE Formula V in association and powered by CIM Lubrifuel and start my car. Up next, it's Extreme Supercars. Those Extreme Supercars will be on circuit shortly and then we're going to go into the second heat of the ZX10R Masters Cup from Sunbet and Red Square.
indeed. Still got some work to do here for, uh, of course, the Extreme Supercars. Brennan Kelly's going to be jumping in, I think, to do some work with me. They'll be quite lucky. He's going to jump in for Extreme Supercars and ZX10s, I think, hey? That's the way to do it, Brent. Oh, thanks, Greg. Yeah, it's been a slow and an absolutely surreal day for me. I have had <laughs> the best day ever. Uh, it just, I, I can't believe the amount of people that have come out, and it's uh, you know fantastic to see motorsport getting the, this sort of exposure. Yeah. And just a massive, massive shout out to the guys that are running uh, the media, Reynard Heldeblum, and and um, you know doing a massive, a massive uh, amount of work, and then social media with. Um, with Raymond Cornwall as well, so uh, lots of going. I don't know if Andre um, Andre de Kock has woken up yet. I saw he was having a quick snooze in the <laughs> in the media centre, but also lots in, in in the print media as well. So it certainly has has shown results and uh, just massive massive congratulations to um, Tanya Himan from from Swartkops from the Ex National Extreme Festival for putting this this event together. It is it is unbelievable, and I mean, once again. To have 293 competitors out on on circuit, there there have been some some big big accidents as well, unfortunately. But uh, that's that's motor racing, yeah. And and you know that's what that what keeps keeps the crowds uh, entertained. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, a lot of people tell you that they come here to watch the motor racing, but they don't actually. They come here to watch the crashes. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> we so. don't promote the thing. <laughs> no, not but, at all. But uh, no. unfortunately, that is uh, the nature of the beast that we play with here when you get into motorsport of this nature and especially when it's such close racing yeah absolutely and i was i was blown away to to see uh, naomi schiff down in the in the pits as well we'll go and try and track her down and and possibly have a chat um have a chat to her uh, she is certainly setting the world the f1 world on fire with her who broadcast in f1 tv so it'll be nice to catch up with uh, catch up with naomi if possible and uh, yeah, and then just the talk from the pit lane had went and, and uh, found out what happened with uh, Silvio Scribanti in the extreme supercars. He they had a he had a slow puncture, back left, uh, okay. back left puncture, and he tried to manage it, and eventually the um, the the tire jumped off the rim, causing him to spin, and that that uh, hence cut the race a little shorter. Red flags going out, but they've got it all sorted out. He's super confident and and should be good for good for heat number two and. Yeah, good. Uh, I'll do. I'll do. Get in fourth overall in um, so a, g a good result from from him. But uh, the surprise there was um, was on in Evelyn. I mean, mm. having started fifteenth to get a fifth overall, uh, he had problems, electrical problems yesterday that caused him to to start in fifteenth. Yes. So um, and fighting back to to get a fifth overall. So a great drive from him. Also, just to mention with Oni, you know, a lot of people don't realise where his uh, you know racing prowess has come from. Uh, in the any sort of heyday as he started his career in motorsport he was touted to be one of the best carters in the country and went to some of the world championships unfortunately never took a world championship himself but came very close on a few occasions and then got an opportunity to go and drive in uh, one of the single seater categories in europe and uh, if you look at uh, the people that are racing in formula one at the moment uh, you've got a guy by the name of bottas you've got a guy by the name of hulkenberg and you've got a guy by the name I remember the third driver, but there's three drivers currently in F1 that were all behind Arnie Neville in that single-seater championship when he ran out of money and had to come back to South Africa. Yeah, no, I, I, I first uh, first came across Arnie in, in karting karting days and a very very accomplished karter and and also all all round nice guy. Always, yeah, for sure. Always happy to give you information, happy to to chat. Um, and talking about the, the guys that you get lots of information from, uh, Olile Letlaka as well. Another, he's he's been the um, I wouldn't say the surprise package, but uh, it's really I've been I've been um, following his his uh, progress with keen yeah. interest, and he's right up there banging in the time. So him and Stuart White making a formidable team, and obviously Stuart doing lots of work with him to get him right up there on pace. That's exactly what I was going to say. You know, with uh, with Oni, he spent a lot of time with some of the young carters that have come through the ranks. Um, in, in the various karting teams and have gone on to bigger and better things. One of them, of course, being Leighton Ferry. Uh, he was part and parcel of the team that Arnie used to sort of mentor over, show him bits and pieces. And of course, he then went on to win the Rookie Championship and the Polo Cup Championship, and then went on to win the M2 BMW Series last year. So that's kind of what we've got. We've got drivers that can drive. We've got drivers that can teach drivers how to drive. And we've got drivers that can uh, substitute as well into various seats. Uh, one of them coming from your hometown. <laughs> He'll be looking forward to, of course, getting back on track uh, pretty shortly. But it's extreme supercar time first. And you mentioned 
Arnie, and I'm going to say once again a massive shout out to his team that are on the sidelines here as part of the big crowd. I think there's about 200 people from Gosco here that are supporting that Bobcat and Gosco sponsored Stradale Audi, which is great to see because it means they're leveraging off the sponsorship. They're giving opportunities to their clients and customers to come and enjoy a race day that's been uh, world class. Absolutely, and I, I got close up and personal with the car after after race number one in Park Fume, and managing a little uh, gearbox uh, gearbox oil leak. Uh, the back of the car was full of oil, but he wasn't uh, he wasn't too too stressed about it and just drive around it. And um, he was he was quite confident for, for race number two. See, the cars are finally making their way out onto the track, so we should be good to go in the next minute or so. Yeah, what, I'll do, what they'll do as well is, which you wouldn't have seen um, walking around waiting for your chance to jump in with me, is it looks like they've gone to laps to finish up the race day. Um, shortened version of the races, so they won't have the full race distances that these cars would normally run. These cars at Kyle Army will probably run between 15 and 20 lap races um, for their sprint races on the day, usually. Uh, this morning's race, of course, was a 20 minute but because of the delay that we had with that big crash, uh, turn 13 and 14 is uh, straight between the two of them. Uh, pay by force for the challenge. Uh, they've had to sort of shorten today's racing, otherwise, we're going to run out of light as we did yesterday with the practices. So, so, down to laps now, and it's down to uh, second heat. Extreme supercars driven by Dunlop. Uh, man to watch out for, of course, in this one, will be whether or not Franco Scobanti can turn his luck around and keep Stuart White out. He yeah, did initially. He did initially. Kind of yep. backed out of it, I think. Yeah, they've battled with reliability issues with that that beautiful, beautiful Porsche. And um, yeah, when that car when that car's on song, there's there's nothing that will touch it. He, he turns the boost up. Uh, there's no then there's no car in the country in the straight line that will that will match that uh, that Porsche. So um, it'll be an interesting tussle. I'm not too sure if there was contact between them in in race one um, coming into the into the straight in the main uh, the main complex uh, I think they could have been you know they came very very close, very and, close and, yeah. um, and the crowd all oohed and on and we were, we were making uh, hand signals like they had like they had bumped into each other but uh, uh, just showing <laughs> how competitive these guys are and just get, catching a glimpse of Aldo Scribante going through there uh, his son Marco having had a great day down in, in Port Elizabeth today the third round of the regional karting championships uh, he, unfortunately the DNF for him in uh, race number one in the DD2 class, but then coming straight back to, to take two race wins, That'll so uh, and finished finishing second overall. So so well done to Marco Scribanti down down in, in Port Elizabeth. Yes, a of them. a couple of them on the Cape 1000. Every time I turned around, there was a Scribanti behind me <laughs> as I was trying to follow them. So here we go. Stuart White on pole alongside him, Franco Scribanti. Behind that will be Jonathan Detoy and Arnie Nieveling. Nieveling closer to the front end now, possibly could give the Porsche and uh, the Lamborghini a run for its money. There is the new tyres on the Semza car alongside his brother. So the two of them will start side by side as the Petorino Toyota pulls into pit lane. Lights are out on the safety car. It's now up to Stuart White to dictate the pace and see whether or not he can keep out uh, this big pack of cars behind him. He's going to try and catch them all napping by the looks of it. Damien Hammond coming alongside. I thought, I'm sorry, I actually thought it was older, but it's actually Damien Hammond that is alongside Sylvia. No, it is, it is Sylvia. I think it was. And uh, Aldo side by side. Damien's slightly further back in that Gelada Trofeo. Lights up, and we're racing, Brent, down towards turn one. Let's see who's going to get the whole shot. That Porsche should have the straight line speed. Yep. There you Once go. Once again, straight into the front goes Franco Scribanti in the Porsche. Slipping in right behind him, Stuart White in the Lamborghini Hurricane. Jonathan Detoy right up there as well. So start from Arnie putting the pressure on to try to right on the word go. So Lille right behind that and then it's Bandic in the big V10. Uh, Dodge Viper to Scribanti is tucked in behind him. Looks like it might be Gigi. And yeah, apologies to a couple of guys who sent messages to me over there. It's an R35, Greg, not an R34. <laughs> you know on it. Yeah. You try and remember all the oh, cars no. on 293 293, yeah. <laughs> and, and just... Uh, Often you just got to wing it and, and uh, try and sound intelligent. But chatting to, to Aldo Scribante before the, the weekend, they've been battling with, uh, with the tyres, you know, getting to grips with the tyres, yeah. just uh, getting the right, finding the right setups. And then uh, I had a chat to Byron Teens, the team manager, uh, early yesterday, and they said, no, no, they've actually realised you can, you, can you can go wider tyres as well. So they've, 
They've slapped some wider Dunlops onto onto it, and both Silvio and and Aldo are feeling a lot more comfortable and confident with the car now. So they were just trying to work out getting the, the optimum tyre pressures. But once they get that right, they'll they'll be right up there as well. Some of the older cars at the back end of the field used to be the front end of the field after uh, a couple of seasons back. Uh, one of them being that F430 of Mark the Toy, the Silver Dream Racer, used to be his, his brother Jonathan's. Yeah. And Stewie, there's some pressure. Stewie Oof. having the lunge there. Yeah. Yeah, and big look there. Arnie, Arnie putting the pressure, just continuing that pressure on the back of Jonathan to Toy's car as well. So, yeah. Fights on between the categories as well. Remember, you got passes involved in this too. It doesn't come up on our screen, but it does come up on the other timing monitors that are around there. So, if we look at the way things run, it's two unlimited cars out front in terms of the A plus category. The GT3 cars, one and two are three and four on track at the moment with Arnie on the back end of his stable mate. Remember those two both out of Stradale Motorsport so there'll be no team orders other than to take each other out <laughs> but I think uh, Arnie certainly would like to be slightly higher up and a third overall for the day especially in front of 200 guests of his sponsor would certainly bode well for uh, keeping that sponsor happy. Uh, Ricky Giannacaro uh, down, running in, down in 12th place at the moment uh, just slightly slightly off the pace there Marius Jackson in 10th, uh, Gianni Giannacaro in, in 9th, and then we've got the, uh, the, Scrabanti, the Scrabanti brothers, the next two, uh, yeah. 7th and 8th at this stage. So Remember Ricky's changed up uh, his allegiance, and he's been with uh, Ferrari and then went to Lamborghini and stuck with that Lambo for a long, long time, but they've done a bit of work on the uh, Lambo, and I think they're building it to, to make it into a purpose-built hill climb car, which is why he's uh, decided to change his allegiance and go into something from the, the British manufacturer McLaren and there you can see it in full flight closing down on the back end of uh, Damien uh, Hammond there in the Trinity Services uh, Protection Services Lamborghini Trofeo Oh just what an absolute pleasure it has been to see cars of this caliber out on circuit and these guys certainly going for it I mean there's absolutely yeah, yeah. no holding back as I said we've seen some big accidents as Stuart White finally oh, oh, pulls but up alongside <laughs> but Franco just turns up the boost on the general once again and manages to keep Stuart White at bay. Although now trying to close things down on Silvio, pulling away from Gigi. So those three having a little bit of a fight for uh, Class A and A plus uh, honours. A plus one and two are three and four. As I said, there is the third G uh, unlimited car there of uh, Zorilo and Klaka. He'll be in third place behind his teammate Stuart White, but uh, sitting currently down in fifth on track. So uh, a bit of work to do there for Exo. Still happy with uh, his performance. Behind him is Budnick. Budnick with a much better run here in race number two. Up into sixth place overall ahead of the two Scrivanti Lamborghinis. So those two Hurricanes have uh, found it a bit more difficult to find a way through on the big V10 powered Dodge Viper. Yeah, just watching that uh, Lamborghini Hurricane with Stuart White behind the wheels of it. That They've done an absolutely amazing job with that, job, uh, with that car. That's the ex uh, Chelsea Scribanti, the late Chelsea Scribanti's car. Uh, they've taken it, they've upgraded it slightly, uh, just uh, beefed up the suspension on it. And uh, what a, I believe nothing, the engine they've left as it, as it was. And an uh, incredibly quick car and with a very, very capable Stuart White behind the wheel. Uh, makes a cert certainly makes a good team. I know that when I was chatting to Franco yesterday in pit lane, he was saying he was blown away by the lap times that Stuart White was doing in those cars yesterday. And he's now got to the front as they go into Crocodiles. But remember, Stuart at one point uh, in his career when he was racing in the Endurance Series with that Janetta, had the outright lap record at almost every single circuit around the country. So here, particularly at Kailami, he's had oodles of time. And in fact, uh, I think it's... Uh, two nine hours he's driven and two that he looked after teams in so his experience at Kyle Army is pretty much right up there and on a similar vein to what Franco's had yeah he certainly is a busy a busy young man eh? they swap positions again uh, <laughs> the general getting back into the lead so this one the three laps left is going to go right down to the wire yeah and uh, Stuart having to now attack the curbs a little bit just to to keep up with the uh, hard charging Porsche that leads out at the moment so it's going to be really, really interesting to see how this one pans out within the next three laps. I love the fact that, I don't know if you've picked up on that, but along that little short straight away there, there was a little left foot tap on the brake there from uh, Franco trying to catch Stewie out. Yeah. Stewie's well aware of those kind of tactics. You're not going to get him with that one. <laughs> you might get somebody else with that one, Franco, but I think Stewie just kept the, the hammer down and uh, stuck with the Porsche as they went along the straight. Into the S's now. 
This is where the Lambo comes into time. You can see the handling yeah. is that much better on that car. The electronical uh, assistance that comes into play there with that Hurricane, because of the GT3 spec it was initially started as, um, certainly helps him out. But uh, once again, watch the little uh. squirt down the hill now. Yeah, I think down the hill that's, uh, the Porsche will have the advantage, the longer legs. Uh, just turn up the boost on that one once again and just manages to open up a gap. But Here we Stuart, go. There we go, once again. Diving on the inside of Franco Scrivanti and I think, oh, I was going to say, oh. I looked in the background, I was hoping <laughs> to see that Bobcat Audi have a go at uh, his stable mate. Oh, <laughs> and Franco trying to come back at him. Didn't quite get there. All right, watch. Here we go. It's uh, on the loud pedal for the Lambo. A little bit of squirrely out there. The Dunlop starting to slip and slide. And that's, you know what's happening there is also, it's it's a case of the shadows coming over the track. Uh, yeah. So you've got cooler track conditions in certain parts, and you've got uh, warm conditions right here. Yeah. And that's why the Porsche comes into its own. Chewy late on the brakes. Here we go. Ooh. That's close. That is oh, what he gets through. Oh, he says contact. Yeah. Right too. Oh, that's Nicely done. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. This is edge of the seat stuff, and this is what all the spectators have, have come out to, to come out to see. And uh, just checking uh, before we before I came on air with you, uh, uh, chatting to Dave Peterson, uh, sixteen thousand views, uh, people are watching the live stream there at the moment. Go. So that is that is fantastic. And I mean the the compliments that I've seen coming through from uh, from people that are watching on both on Facebook and on on WhatsApp, the comp compliments have have all been absolutely fantastic to see the you know the quality of the live stream. So a we job. Job well, uh, well done, well done. Yeah, and I'm sure that Dave and Paul will be happy with that too. So will Tanya, and she's put uh, a lot of effort in, as you said, at the top of the, the uh, broadcast for the extreme supercars driven by Dunlop. There is a lot of effort that gets put in behind the scenes, and people don't realise that. And there's, you know, there's always those guys who put out the uh, the positive comments, but we've got to try and negate the uh, negative ones that come out every now and again with the amount of views that we see. Sixteen thousand. Absolutely. Not a bad day in the saddle. Yeah, and no, just just on the on the motormouth uh, the motormouth site that we've I've just gone onto that uh, at times and and had a look and and very very busy and um, the you know post put something on there and within seconds um, the, the likes the, the likes come through so yeah exactly no, it's what you want and and I think that's exactly it, it bodes well in what you mentioned earlier on with Raynard and the team doing behind the scenes and the, and the media coverage of the events like this coming to the line though as I said it's going to be Stewie. He's about to start that last lap, but just mentioning the media effort that gets put in. It's not only, you know, the live stream and the, the photographers and the media that's out there. It's the fact that we've got the fans and followers that are liking and sharing it and creating that massive footprint that we need in social media. Absolutely. And uh, you, know, you you see so many regular regular faces, people that actually go around the country following, following motorsport as well. So, um, you know, you, it's, it's, it's brilliant to see. I, I really enjoy going down to Kalani as well because there's a, a, a very, very knowledgeable crowd down in, oh, yeah. in Kalani as, as well. And, some, and some hungry for Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as we get into the last lap, it's Stuart White ahead of Franco Scribanti and White with the fastest lap getting down to a 43.492. Dude, yeah. that's, uh, yeah. I'm just looking at that. That's about, what's it, about four, five, no, about five seconds shy of a MotoGP time around here. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, absolutely incredible times. So a 143.4, you a 2.2 second advantage over over um, Franco on the last the last lap. So certainly starting to to dominate now. It looks like the you know the the Porsche has, has run out of some some boost there. But it's it's been once again a calculated drive from from Stewart. You know, it's just so much uh, so much experience yeah. behind such a such a young guy, a wealth of, of international experience, and he just kept keep the pressure keep the pressure keep the pressure and then uh, you'll force a mistake uh, le sooner or later and and now we just see him um, disappearing I wouldn't say disappearing off into the distance but uh, starting to open up a, a substantial lead over over Franco yeah, two now. and a half seconds is disappearing for you yep yeah and there Legs we see check it flag congratulations Stuart White Franco Scribanti comes through in second uh, where is Arnie is he not, not, not managing to get it. He gets a fourth. For third. So if you look at the GT3 battle as we're watching the bucket list racing Dodge Viper come through. It's uh, GT3's one out by Jonathan Detoy. Second place will be Arnie Nieveling and third place will be Silvio Scribanti by the looks of things. Uh, a plus will be Stuart White, Franco Scribanti. And we've got to go down. Uh, Tolile Leclerc gets, Tolile. He gets yes, third. So third. brilliant. Uh, yet another brilliant performance from him. And then Chris Budnick ahead of Gianni Giannacora for Class A. 
Uh, Damien Hammond, I think, will wrap up class B, if I'm not mistaken. And then it'll be Marius Jackson just beating out Ricky John Acaro and Mark Tatoy. Roy O'Brien and Ed Blunt also finish up. And, of course, don't forget uh, the man who used to be the big sponsor behind the series for a long, long time, the Jimbo John Acaro, out for the first time in his Audi, joining the MJR team for uh, the, the, the season. And uh, in the, the silver liveried uh, Audi um, R8 out there, in GT4 spec, not in GT3 spec. Silver Dream Racer, Mark Toy makes its way to the line. Toy will be wrapping up his class. I think that's class D going to go to Mark Toy in the uh, F430. F. Let's run there from there. But that wraps up our coverage, of course, of the extreme supercars driven by Dunlop here at Kailami. And the combination of regional and national championship extreme festival here today. And, uh, as we were talking about during the, the race and uh, in between the races as well, Brent, 293 competitors, a record amount of entries at Kyle Army ever. There's Jimbo making his way around the final corner. We're going to take that checkered flag. But also, just the amount of support that this event has been given on all forms of social media and media alike. And then take take nothing away from the fact that we had uh, is there nine or ten, you know, nine or ten journalists in the Toyota Gazoo Racing stable today, which of course we're also going to go and do all their stories after this just keep promoting the fact that we've got what is now going to be has, has to be the premier road uh, road show for circuit racing in the country no absolutely and uh, it's, it's such a fantastic uh, fantastic initiative to to involve the journalists uh, not uh, may, maybe one day i'll i'll you know find a I seat there a, uh, but i get a lot of yeah I, know. I, did, uh, I did sort of uh, throw a hint in in cape town to rion saying listen you know I do do a thing called live on the drive where I can go live in the car and do some commentary from the car if you wanted me to. But uh, no, they haven't taken me up on that offer just yet. Yeah, <laughs> no, myself included. Uh, so we'll see. But it is it's it's it's, it's fantastic. And and those guys are having are having such a such a great time oh, yeah. out there as well. And 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 just going the extra mile to to promote motorsport. So it's it's definitely definitely working. And and as you know, go around the country, I can just feel and 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 see um, how how the events are growing. So, um, yeah, lots of lots of work behind the scenes, uh, and uh, a massive congratulations to Tanya Himan and the team once again. So we've got a short break in proceedings now before we get ZX10 R Masters Cup on circuit. Sunbet and Red Square class will be out shortly. Until then, we'll just leave you with the sights and sounds here from Kyle Army, and we'll be back shortly with commentary here from the Kyle Army Grand Prix circuit and Extreme Festival. We, are we done, Portio? Are we on mute? Thank you, brother.
It is indeed. We're just chatting about prize giving here between myself and Brendan Kelly in between the races, saying that prize giving must be mandatory and in the regs it says it is. Yep. I think I agree 100% with you. You know, you you spent an entire day risking your life and limb and uh, you've been racing with competitors. It's, it also creates the camaraderie. I know down in PE, Terry had a very uh, sort of um, stern rule on that and said that... <laughs> He would charge you double for the next time if you didn't attend the prize giving. So there was a lot of prizes uh, givings that had plenty of support down at, uh, at your circuit. Yeah. No, and I think the same should apply at every single circuit. Maybe. Absolutely. I mean, I've watched the Africa um, Africa karting, Africa Open karting down at Kalani the other day, uh, the live stream from that. And one of the competitors went up onto the podium with a vape and it looked like a brandy and coke in his hand. Yeah. Um, and... You know, then once he got his trophy, the other guys wanted to shake hands with him. And he had and, no and hands and to do it. He didn't have any hands. And, and I just thought, you know, where the, the hell, you know, <laughs> that, it, that should be a celebration. And, you know, exactly. whether, whether you've come flipping stone last, you need to go up there, not go and, and support your fellow racers. And it's to me that they, and, and, and the other thing that they need to, to do at prize giving is, is, is get a, a, a decent PA system because yeah. there's nothing worse than after commentating a whole day and then you must go and MC the prize giving and you've got to shout. Well, I can tell you we got a good one. DJ Rob will be here today, so we should be good at Kyle Army. So but uh, you've joined me once again, this time for some two-wheeled action. And absolutely. I know that you, you've got a certain number 42 you might have a little bit of uh, bias towards. Absolutely, Mr. Jason Lamb. <laughs> But he's got his work cut out for him because uh, since the inception of the new rule that's allowed that man, yep. Tinsilla, to join the party, unfortunately his other rival is on international duties at the Red Bull Rookie Cup this weekend in Alan John Fenter, helping out uh, one of the two South African boys over there. So um, it's basically up to Clint here to uh, go for the double. He wasn't troubled in any form or uh, even came close to any form of trouble whatsoever in race number one but as we can see as they line up there it's uh, like a like the TikTok I made yesterday for one of the teams uh, in the shadows is always a big problem because uh, the shadows that now come over the circuit cool that part of the circuit down and then you go from cool tire temperatures and uh, track temperatures to warm track temperatures so the Bridgestones on these motorcycles are going to have to be maybe just uh, played around with in terms of uh, the tire pressures and what they need to get them through this uh, final race of the two-wheeled action. Yeah, well, the, the ZX10 Masters, I mean, this class has grown uh, grown on me. And I've, I've just watched uh, the, and enjoyed the growth that, that it's had in their, in their numbers and that. And it's, it's, it's a nice bunch of, I'm not going to call them old torpies, but uh, it's a nice bunch of, of guys that are, are not yet past their sell-by date that are going out there and having, so they're putting on a great show and having some close racing. And, and there are some, some very competitive guys out there and, and having Clinton Seller in the mix now as well. Yes, he's dominating. He's in a, in a class of his own, two seconds a lap quicker but it's um, just uh, having a chat to Jason in the in the pits earlier and, and I posed the question to him and he says no, no the guys are enjoying it They've, it's forcing them to up the game um, that's exactly what I want to go with as we get away now down towards turn one what's going to happen here is with a fast rider out front um, like we saw with Graham Van Bredal for two seasons where he was so dominant eventually everybody had to start upping their game to try and close that gap down and that's exactly what Clint Seller is going to do and Trevor Westman has done as well as bringing in the likes of Graham Van Bredar and, and the other Cape Town based riders that were all in the mix there, you know. Um, it just basically made everybody else look at their motorcycles and go, okay, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to make this, I need to make this change, I need to get fitter. These guys are not the yeah. fittest guys out yeah. there because they are slightly elderly, as we, as we mentioned. That's why they're known as the Masters. You've got guys over the age of 35 up to the age of 65. In JLR and JLR is running top 10 at 65 yeah. years of age absolutely and then the the classes you know I, I only only realized today that the the, the different classes that's and all the bikes are all identical it's just it's just age your your class your age determines your your class yep. so um, you know I, I, I commented on the fact that Jason you know, I said you running you you in class C but you you ahead of class B and you just, you know, it's just because of the age so the age thing, uh, yep. yeah I, I, I didn't realize that so I've learned something learned something today as well and uh, it, it is certainly uh, 
always a spectacle to watch with these guys. I think guys if you and I don't circuit. walk away from a race day learning something, yeah. then we haven't done our job properly. Absolutely, and and then also pass that that information on to to all the viewers as well. So we we all learn in as we exactly, go along. Exactly, exactly. Well, coming down through the sweep for the first time into crocodiles, you can see this field streaming out there. Steve Golgotchi had a fantastic run in the first one. You can see he's having another good one there. Just tucked in behind. We've got yellow flags coming out of uh, the, the kick there. But I think that might just be for the tricky conditions that might be there. Let's just have a look and see. Or did we have a rider go down? Sheller's gone across the line and he's completed the, uh, the first lap in anger. And it's a, it's a six lapper that they're going here for. And I think those double yellows might just be to warn the riders. That remember, they're coming into where there was some very slippery conditions. They don't want to so show, show a change of surface, but they want to just warn the riders that there might be some problems with them as they go flying through. So as they go up into Yuxia uh, and Barbecue for the first time, uh, in anger, because the first time down there, they still got cold tires. Now they've got some warm bridge stones. They should be able to throw those motorcycles around a bit easier than what they did in the first lap. Damien Purificati running in second. He's uh, got Trevor Westman behind him, and then in up in fourth place, uh, Jason Lamb. Hein McMahon running in fifth, followed by Graham van Breda. So from Br uh, Breda uh, finds himself down in sixth at the moment, uh, just slightly off the pace this weekend. Challenging for uh, fifth place, though, as we've got, got the, the shot coming there on the change of camera, though, and looking for a way through on Hein McMahon. Now, Hein McMahon, Slucky has had a, a superb run in his championship uh, attempt here at ZX10s. Came in two years ago and was kind of in the top ten. He's now running top five consistently. Jason Lamb all over the back of that wayward Kawasaki of uh, the Killer Westman. Double yellows, yeah. Are, yeah, it's purely out there just to warn the riders that they're not going to let them overtake through that kink. I think they're going to keep those yellow flags out there the whole time. So you'll have to try and find another way around your arch rival if you want to at some point on the circuit. Cello already enjoying an almost three second lead over Damien Purificati. Um, and then Trevor Westman still third, Jason Lamb fourth. Watch out for this battle as well. This one was ranging all of race number one when you didn't join me. Keith Agliotti on the Ridgeway bike in 10th. Teddy Brook on the Brook Refrigeration Kawasaki. And just behind them, the big man, Dita Hazeman. He's had a fantastic run. Here you can see him coming up there under braking. But interesting to see the seven bikes not there. Now, that's Trevor Westman's teammate. And uh, he's not even in the top 16 if you look at the, the timing at this point in time. Pierce Knut must have had an absolute nightmare of a start. And that, that's a man who comes all the way from London. He travels to South Africa to race at X10s every single time we go racing. And spends some time a couple of days before with uh, Trevor Westman getting a little bit extra time out on uh, Kalani International, learning the skills of motorcycle racing. So as they come through into barbecuing Yuxke, you can see just a couple of battles starting to come together. That's Byron Rothkall, Mag Magic Machine, closing things down on Hazerman. And uh, if we look at that, it's a Renatus Vinico just behind them. Lubabalo, a little bit better this time out from Lubes. He's up into the top 16. But uh, some work to do now to try and close that gap down on this little fight as they come through. And that fight, of course, is Teddy Brook with Adrian Vandalen. Now, Vandalen's the man who went down and had a high side out of uh, turn four in the first one. Great to see. And that's kind of the camaraderie we see in zx 10 Brent, is uh, the guys will get together and they've got spare parts. They'll chuck it on the bike just to have the bike on the track. Absolutely. Yeah, I watched I watched what was going on behind the scenes there with the repairs going on. And uh, as you say, just great, great camaraderie and fantastic to see how these these guys, I mean, they, they put so close together um, and, and they always, they, 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 they just the, as you say, the, uh, the camaraderie and fun that happens in that, in that pit area is always a pleasure to see. And this is Graham Van Bredon now ahead of Hein McMahon. So he's made up one place and he's looking to try and close things down on your boy, Jason Lamb. And I can tell you something, Jason Lamb could be in a bit of trouble here because as they come down into the final corner, Van Bredo is closing. Yeah, yeah. The issue Van Bredo had, Bren, just to give you a heads up, um, chatting to him yesterday and Peter, his uh, mechanic, they, the crash in Cape Town has actually bent the chassis. So it's a slightly bent chassis they're working with. So they've had to try and adjust everything to make to the bike fire in yeah. a straight line. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Well, he's certainly performing well out there on that uh, that skew machine. Coming through now as they go into Yuxke, this is Westman, who hasn't had the answer to Purificati or to Seller. Those two have got away, and uh, Damien Purificati could be moving himself up nicely, possibly into second place in this championship, and uh, securing some valuable points with AJ being away on duties. And in fact, I don't think AJ is going to make it back in time 
for Swatkops either because uh, remember he's going to be sort of uh, making his way to the Isle of Isle Man, of Man as along well, yeah. with uh, Magic Mark White. So those two will be concentrating their efforts to uh, look to throw a bike around a 60 kilometer now, a 60 kilometer <laughs> circuit <laughs> as opposed to uh, a five and a half kilometer circuit. Three laps left in the race and the lead that Seller has over Purificati sitting at 7.8 seconds now. So yet another absolutely dominant performance. You can see lonely, lonely out in front there. Chatted to Seller yesterday. He did have a couple of issues with the front end, which uh, Steve Cannon had to work on, but uh, eventually got that sorted out. Um, and also, remember, this is the first season he's ever ridden a Kawasaki. So, uh, stepping up into Masters Cup for the first race in uh, Kilani, he actually had a big crash on the practice day, and they had to rebuild the motorcycle because he's not used to the, uh, the geometry of the bike and the look and feel of how it all works, having been on Yamahas and Hondas previously to uh, that. And that's where he won most of his South African championships on. And uh, there's seven of those under that belt. So certainly knows what to do on a motorcycle. But having not been on a Kawasaki, it hasn't taken him too long to get to the front to get used to it, has it? Yeah, just watching the guys coming down there, the shadow is certainly starting to get a lot longer. And uh, as you mentioned, the, the, the shadows behind the, the that are on the, the main straight there, uh, that, that section completely, completely under shadow now. So it is going to get tricky for these guys, but uh, they've only got two laps left uh, in the in the, the two-wheeled action. So... They, they have enjoyed a good day out there. They had to wait a little bit due to the fact that they were supposed to come out after pay by Volkswagen Challenge. Uh, but uh, massive thanks to the, the single-seaters, the V8s, and to the Extreme Supercars for cleaning up the track for them. Give them a little bit of a, an easier run here in their second heat after all the debris was thrown out of the big crash. Once again, here we see that is uh, Keith Agliotti trying to get away from Teddy Brook. Hasn't been able to shake the Silver Surfer. As he heads down towards uh, Sunset Corner, he's still applying pressure, as is opponent Gunner Puffy, trying to get up yep. on the inside of the oldest man out <laughs> oh. there, JLR. Backs off at the sure, last minute. <laughs> the epic. Love the fact that uh, you get JLR still able to run with these boys at the front end at 65 years of age. Uh, opponent Gunner Puffy, also I always pick up on that, that orange lens of his. Yeah. That's probably the ideal lens to have right now, no, because he's absolutely. going into shade and sun all of uh, the rest of the afternoon. It's uh, that persimmon lens that'll certainly help him out to give him a better vision. Oh, Van Bredaar, Van Bredaar's moved up a position as well. He's managed to get past uh, Jason Lamb. So up into fourth place goes uh, Graham Van Bredaar and uh, leads out Class B. Trying to close in on Westman as well, but I don't know if uh, one and a half laps is going to be enough. So as he comes down here, they're going to complete lap five of six. They're going to start the final one. Westman's just up the road. Seller is miles away. Yes. How's that? You're looking at third fourth and fifth place going into the final corner as Seller's going into turn two <laughs> that's a massive margin that Clinton Seller's got here on this King Price Kawasaki he just makes it look so easy yeah. just uh, as you said come to he's come to grips with the bike now and uh, just such a such a fluid uh, driving a uh, riding style that he has got uh, doesn't matter what he's on he is always always a top performer coming into sunset he will be feeling what sunset's all about and why it's known as sunset not quite at the the sunset point just yet, but a couple of cars will certainly get to feel that a bit later on as they go in there. It's a blinding light when that sun drops just above the Kailami Castle, and you've got to go into that corner and try and negotiate your way through one of the fastest right-handers in the country. Uh, Not the fastest, but uh, certainly a very quick one. I see that Jason Lamb's dropped another position as well, Hein McMahon having got past him. So Jason Lamb dropping down to sixth now. Seller through uh, Leo Kopp for the last time. He's probably going to have his uh, traditional look over the shoulder as he comes down into the bowl. And he'll have one more look over the shoulder coming towards the final corner just to make sure and uh, just ensure that no one has found some additional pace right in the closing stages. But another... Oh, there's a wave uh, to the guard the even. Way. There we go. Oh, there's a look over <laughs> right your on shoulder. Cue. Yeah. Thanks for that, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kind of thought that might happen. Got an earpiece in there listening to the, to the live stream. Yeah, he's probably got his uh, phone in his pocket. He's got the live stream commentary with the two of us talking about him. So it's set up for a double on the day. That's exactly what he wants. Another double on the day there. That's six out of six for Clint Seller in his attempt to win out his first ZX R Masters Cup Championship. Damien Purificati take nothing away from this man. He has had a fantastic run in second. And uh, if Seller hadn't been there, it would be a pretty spectacular run to get away from Trevor the Killer Westman and the champion 
with the number one plate for the next for the last three seasons, Graham Van Breda. So Van Breda for fourth. Hein McMahon just behind him for fifth place. He'll be coming through for a nice uh, third in class A there. I think if uh, if I get that right with Hein McMahon. Uh, no, it'll be fourth. It'll be fourth. Yeah, it'll be fourth in class. Fourth place in class. Van Breda wins out class B. B. Yep. Jason Lamb will win out class C. And that will wrap up our ZX 10R Masters Cup coverage here from the combined extreme festivals of nationals and regionals at the bumper day at Kyle Army. Brent, thank you so much for joining me, buddy. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's great to have you in studio with me, mate. Possibly pop in later for the, for the BMs. The, That'll the be awesome. BMs go out again. And if you, okay, if you want to stick around for the last one as well, uh, yep. Triple One Sports and Saloons is always a nice one to watch, too. Uh, it's always good to have someone to bang off and uh, get some information from as well. Great stuff. I'll go and see if I can uh, track down uh, Naomi Schiff as well, see if she's still around. And possibly bring her, bring her up. Yeah, to that's bring a great her. idea. Let me go. Great idea. Make, make, make way well for Daniel it. Rowe. He'll be coming in for the uh, touring cars. So we'll catch up a bit later. Greg, thanks very much. Awesome stuff there, Brent. Thank you so much for that and for the insights as well. As we finish up uh, the day's racing for the two wheeled side of things, Seller with a double victory and uh, certainly cementing himself a massive championship lead now in the overalls because it's six out of six for Clint Seller as he uh, goes and does the uh, unthinkable. There has been two other riders, as I mentioned in the past, who have gone an entire season with victories at every single round. One of them was Gavin Lightfoot. The other one was the Mac Attack, Stuart McLeod. And uh, those two riders, of course, took uh, victories all the way through the season. It looks like Clint Seller is well on his way to becoming the third one to do that in the Sunbet zx R Masters Cup, powered by Red Square. They run Bridgestone tyres. They're all on Kawasaki's. And uh, the boys from TRP, of course, are big supporters of this category as well. So a massive thanks to all of them for their support. And, of course, all the supporters of each of those motorcycle riders and racers out there. We're moving into the South African Touring Cars. And, of course, up next, it's SA Touring Cars and the Super Cup. That'll be on track. And we'll be back shortly with action here with myself and Daniel Rowe on the mic. There you go. The traditional stand-up from Evil Knievel. Well done, Clint Seller.
Daniel Sun, it's time to go racing again for uh, Touring Cars and Super Cup. And it's a big field of Super Cars that, uh, Super Cup competitors that have joined us here this weekend and we had a fantastic outing in the first one. But now with the reverse grid, uh, we're going to see some Toyotas in front of those uh, BMs and uh, your favourite GTI. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting race. Um, as you've seen, the Toyotas don't have the pace this weekend, but uh, no, you never know. You never know. Maybe they found something for race two, and maybe now that they, they're starting in the front, um, they can work with something. So it's going to be an interesting race, interesting battle, um, but definitely looking forward to the VW working through the pack. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I chatted to uh, Julian van der Vat, and I'm not quite sure if you know the story about the weekend. Um, you know, he came from that big crash in the Ford the last time we were here. Yeah. And he's turned his luck around with a victory. Mm -hmm. And that was also with the death of his grandfather last night. So uh, I think he's got some motivation there to maybe go for the double. And uh, he's already sort of um, given that victory up to the man upstairs now. And, of course, he's looking to do the same here in race number two. He has got pace. He says that both the BMWs and his GTI seem to have a little bit of a margin over the Toyotas. The one car he's concerned about, though, was Anthony Pretorius. Yeah, yeah. obviously, Anthony does look a little bit uh, stronger than the other Toyotas. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he has anything to worry about. When they were fighting, Anthony was able to close up. But the minute they, 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 you know, they stopped fighting, they managed to pull a gap quite easily. Yeah. So... I don't think he needs to, to be too concerned, he just needs to focus on his race, keep it clean, um, stay composed and uh, yeah, chase forward. Alright, so here they come, Michael van Rooyen and Saud Variawa on the front row, alongside uh, each other. Second row is made up of Michael Steven, who could be a big threat here in the second one I think, <laughs> if he's uh, got anything to do with uh, the front end of the race as they head down towards turn one. Yeah. He's got Anthony Pretorius alongside him. Then it's Volk and Van der Vat, And at the back will be Nati and Samunga. They're now going to form up and get a little bit closer. Yeah. He's also got no teammates in front of him. So he's got free you know, freedom to just go and, and, and try and get to the front right now. Lights on, lights off. Here we go. As they head down towards turn one, it's the drop coming from Saud Variawa in the starlet. Going to try and get ahead of the Corolla of uh, Michael van Roo and his teammate as the lights go out for Super Cup. Oh, shot. Just left and right dodging. <laughs> the guys and girls went across the line. Down into turn one. It is Pretorius who's putting the pressure on. Into second place there for Anthony Pretorius. And tucks in behind Saud Variawa. He's got Michael van Roo behind him who's trying to keep out the intentions coming from all three of those WCT cars. Couple of cars running wide there. Uh, Franco completely off track almost. Has to try oh. and get onto the curbs and oh, oh. there's a little touch. Tato Carrillo. Oh, Carrillo oh, sideways. Oh, together. Well done. And he kept it on track. Uh, I think that all came from his paddle training. Brilliant, eh? brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Get together. <laughs> inside line from Robert Volk following Anthony Pretorius round and on the inside of Marco van Rooyen. Van Rooyen goes defensive to keep out uh, Van Avat. It's Saud Variawa using the advantage that uh, Pretorius has given him by holding up the rest of the pack to get away. And then we go back to the Super Cup class where Tata Carello just managed to hang on. He's side by side there. Nicky Vistanis oh, higher up. JP's getting up there with Nicky, giving yeah. him a little uh, little nudge on the back wheel. Between the two of them. Keegan's got some damage on the front bumper, it seems. So uh, something's happened in, uh, in the first few corners again. Diaz out front, dude. Diaz out front. Got pole. He just needed to keep it together. And uh, at the moment... If he keeps it together in this race, based on his race pace in race exactly. one, I don't think anybody's going to catch him. It's going to be a, he's going to be a hard man to beat, that's for sure. Kyle now Andy we look at uh, be, Volk uh, ahead. Seems to be the track for Diaz. Yeah, oh, Volk has got ahead now of Pretorius. Pretorius goes defensive. Oh, and Van Rooyen inside of Pretorius. Oh. Touching and forcing oh, Pretorius Julian's wide. Got the drive. Julian's got the drive on both of them. He's got that inside line. He's got the drive, as you say. Can he get uh, ahead of Michael Van Rooyen as they go side by side across the line? This is Diaz versus Campos. Campos squared in terms of the Campos and turn one team. And that is that uh, Fissa up into well, what is fifth place? I think it is. My timing monitor's gone on the blink here, so I'm not quite sure who's who in the zoo there. We'll wait and see if we can get it to refresh. I think he's down into sixth, actually. So that must be Mahotsi then. Let's have a look and see. There we go. He's down behind Calvin Diaz. So. Yeah. It is Jono. Jono behind the two camp high. And then uh, Fisser in six behind uh, Calvin Diaz. 
Sardvari Hour in the Toyota Starlet ahead of Robert Volk. Volk ahead of Pretorius who runs wide off the circuit putting wheels on the dirt. Okay, I, I was told differently Paulie. I believe that uh, the two Corollas of Michael van Rooyen and Nati and Samunga are the Corollas and I believe that Sawood is in a Toyota Starlet. Daniel, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I was told that from the from the word go. I might be wrong. So as they come down the road now and into uh, the mine shaft, Diaz under attack from Fissa. Fissa trying to find a way through there. That's Calvin versus the uh, Astron Energy Volkswagen Motorsport car of Charles Fissa. His, uh, his brother up front though, doing an amazing job and uh, hanging on to the lead of the race at this stage for the Super Cup class with the two Campos brothers behind that. Watching for this gap to come down. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, think, I think they are in the Corollas. I think Brad is the one in the Starlet. Okay. Brad is the could one be, in the Starlet be for the Super Cup class. But the, the Touring Car class, they are running the Corollas. I might be wrong there, but I just, I stand to be corrected. I thought I heard from uh, him in the first outing at Kidani that uh, they've changed that one up into a starlet for this for the seat as well. You may be right. You may we'll be see right. if I can find it on their now. post, but uh, needless to say, let's continue yes. with what's happening on track. Could well be. So as they come down onto braking, it's Diaz from Campos. Campos squared in second and third. And then it's Mahotsi trying to close things down on them. Yeah, Mahotsi looks like he's pushing. He wants to get through. I don't think he's happy with uh, how his weekend panned out, so he's pushing. Pushing it very hard. Trying to stay out front and uh, see if he can change his luck around here. Because remember, he took a victory down in Cape Town, so certainly would be uh, looking for a chance now, if he can, to uh, be in the mix at the front end and at least uh, try and salvage some points, if he can, for the... Uh, the championship that he's uh, looking to try and take here in 2024. His teammate is now right on the bumper of Diaz. Somebody running white. Oh, is that Franco? It is. David Franco just running completely off track there. And a nice recovery. It looked like the throttle might have stuck open there as he went onto the grass. I'm not sure. I think he just uh, just got a bit crossed up going into the corner. Maybe he ran, he ran in a little bit too wide. But we've got Jono putting the pressure on Jason. Really needs to get past Jason as soon as possible if he has a if he wants a chance of getting to Kudin. So it uh, looks like uh, Dominic is absolutely destroying the field at the moment. Uh, it's just just hanging on there at the front end and with that, with that pace he's found in race one, as you said, then uh, you got to just stay there. Uh, Dominic driving really really well at the stage. Just trying to find that post if I can while we were looking through the boards here but uh, here comes the move from the GTI uh, Julian's had a few a few tussles but uh, eventually dropping down the order I'm not sure what happened at the top of the hill he was fighting big time with the uh, uh, look at that oh, getting real behind there between uh, Cora Hill Getting side by side and a little bit of touching and rubbing is racing happening there too. Now we see the two Michaels together. Yeah, Michael, Stephen, Michael van Rooyen. How many times in the past have we mentioned those two in the same uh, sentence? And oh, their Michael. abilities to sort of uh, give each other a good run for their money in the yeah. past have been pretty spectacular. Yeah, so who's definitely, I think he is in the starlet. It does look like a starlet. I'm just trying to find that. I know there was a post about it, so yeah. I just want to double check like on that. Have changed. That is a style of running out there. In the front the I know that they've got the Corollas and they've got the Corolla patches that Michael van Rooyen and uh, Natiem Samunga are it's running. Starlet? Looks like a Starlet. Yeah. As I said, I'll try and find it quickly before we get to the end of the race. But more importantly, right now is that race action is about to heat up for third place here. I think in Super Cup. Because here comes Mahotsi and along for the ride, he's brought four cars. Right on the tail of Mahotsi is Calvin Diaz. Fiss is there as well. And Tate Bishop is uh, now joined the party. Uh, just behind that, we're also watching for uh, 
Tata Carello, who had an off-track excursion that uh, nearly cost him dearly, but uh, fortunately he, ha he hung on. So very lucky there to uh, um, not go into a couple of other cars that were alongside him and uh, managed to survive that. Now as we come into the closing stages, somebody running off the track, it's Bishop giving him the commentator's curse there, unfortunately. But now you've got, is that Volkswagen Motorsport? Yeah, and there we go, Charles inside line inside. for Fisser. But oh, a push to pass. Push to pass. Is that going to help Fisser out, or is it uh, Calvin going to be able to stay ahead of him? It doesn't look like it's doing much for him. Charles seems to be holding him. Yep, Charles holding him. Door slip all the way down the main straight. I think he's going to have the inside line over over Calvin. Interesting. Now we've got Mike Stevens go. still putting pressure on Michael van Rooyen. Definitely got a lot more pace in this race. see that they are just not giving anything up here at all. Robert Volk fastest at this stage as we're getting into the closing stages. We've got halfway stage done. We're into the second half of this uh, final heat of Touring Cars and Super Cup. It's four done and four to go. Saud Variawa is the man that they have to catch at this stage and uh, he's just trying to keep it uh, all together at the front end. In the Super Cups, we've actually got Jason Campos hitting fastest lap of their, uh, their cars at the moment. Mm -hmm. Very close. Can Michaels even find a gap? Is he going to make a move? Oh, looks like he's put the nose there. Van Rooyen keeps him honest. And just yeah, squeezes enough. him out. Just not enough. No. Is this a starlet? I'd like to see the back end. No, I think that's still a Corolla. Could be. I think that is still a Corolla. So we'll uh, go with the Corolla, because that's what uh, Paul's telling me in my ear. And I did see some post. Uh, he's put it as a Corolla in race one's results as well, so it must be. Yeah, I think it is a Corolla, yeah. Okay. And with the livery they're running, it's difficult to tell. Well, they've all gone with the, the new look and feel of... Uh, Kazoo racing worldwide with the black livery and the GR yeah. on the side of the cars. Yeah, it's definitely not the style, it's rear light, so I think that's a Corolla for sure. Mm. Okay, my bad. As I said, sometimes we get it right, sometimes I see posts and I might have missed the mistake in the post that uh, it was Brad Liebenberg in the style as opposed to Saud. Tano's dropped off Jason, I'm not sure what's happened there. And Charles closed down on Jono. Just closing down rapidly onto the back end of his teammate, as you said. So there's a good possibility that Jonathan Mahotzi's uh, race is not done just yet. He's got to try and still find a way ahead of uh, the two Campos brothers, which he's desperately trying to do. And you can see sliding out of sunset. But uh, at this stage of the race, I've got to mention, uh, I mentioned it to Brendan earlier on. What you're seeing here is you're seeing uh, track conditions varying uh, at the different parts of the circuit because you've got shadow over the track. You've got some places that are still in uh, the sunshine and a lot of places that are in full shadow. Oh, Ooh. that's a starlet blowing up big time. That's right. definitely the starlet of Brad Liebenberg out of this one. Yeah, I saw something smoking as he exited the uh, clubhouse and I was wondering if it was not something rubbing, but something looks like it's let go there. Let go in a big way there, unfortunately, for Brad Liebenberg, who was on pole in the first heat for his first victory it also didn't quite work out for him in the first one I'm not quite sure what happened there I don't know if you found out any information that uh, was there a touch between the there was, and him? There was oh there was a touch between a few cars um, okay. there is a there, is, there was a, a hearing I think there is a protest and uh, we'll probably hear about that after race two yeah so there is still a chance that Dominic Diaz can be a double winner today if he wins this race because if Keegan does get a penalty for race one Dominic Diaz will be a winner for race one too. Sure. So, yeah, it's all, it all depends on the hearing, but Dominic's still got work to do in this race. Still got two laps to go. Needs to try and keep it in first place. So would worry our doing everything he can to keep uh, yeah, Robert Paul from getting all past him. The, yeah, all over the show. Guy is definitely not looking uh, Bit of smoke out of that stage. Corolla as well. And now, uh, watch for the cutback from Robert Volk. He'll try and go defensive, I'm sure, Saud, as they go into Crocodiles. 
Pulls a little margin on the on the acceleration there, but I think that was because Robert Volk went for the late apex, so it compromised his drive out ever so slightly, but it might help him here. Not quite. So he's now tucked right underneath the wing of no, Saud Variao. He's struggling with, those, with the rear traction there. All the traction zones, Robert, uh, even in the braking zones, he's able to attack the corners a lot easier, get some more power, a lot more traction yep. all over the back end of that uh, Now looking for a way to get past him as they head down towards Kuroch for, for the last time in anger. They start the final lap. It's one to go. Crowthorn could possibly see a change up here, but uh, the inside line is being defended by Saud. Here comes Robert Volk going to try to go even further to the inside. Not enough space. Daniel, he's, he's just been trying down to turn one, but how much space? How much more space do you want? Yeah, it's hey? unfortunate. It's like a rugby field there to play on. <laughs> you want that inside line, but <laughs> the drivers need to need to explore a little bit more with the outside line. If you you know if you take that outside line, try and run around the outside, or if if it looks like they're going to open up to 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 block that maneuver, you still got an undercut. So I think there's a lot more you can do in in turn one. Yeah, I think Robert just committed to that inside line, and Saud saw him coming. Shut the door. Let's see whether he's able to do anything to the S's. He'll go immediately to the left-hand side. Force Rob onto the wide line into the S's. If Volk hangs on, no, he won't. He tucks in line astern. I thought he might try something around the outside into the first S. Yeah, seen that on to, a few occasions. He needs to keep putting the pressure on. Try different things all the time because uh, you know. Staying in the same positions all the time tends to make it a lot easier for for the driver in front to defend you. So you, you really need to try and get him out of position. Yeah, get him out of your ring mirrors as well so he can't see you. Yeah. Uh, try and guess where you are and hopefully get the guess wrong. He goes defensive down into Crocodiles. Robert Volk yeah. tries to go the inside line. He maintains that inside line. It'll compromise him slightly, but he can position the car so that Robert can't get past him. And that's exactly what he's done. One more opportunity here for Volk. It's into the final corner. He's on the inside, but so is Sowood. Sowood goes inside. And now comes side by side. Watch for the cutback. Yeah. Drag to the line. Use your money on. Oh. Oh, a touch. There's a big touch oh, there. Oh, that's going to spoil it there for Robert Volk, I think. Yeah, Sowood going to come across the line just ahead and win things out there. So that little touch between the two cars coming out of the final corner allowed Sowood Variawa to come across the line in the front. Nine hundredth of a second behind. Robert Volk in second. Yeah, I think um, I think Robert was trying the undercut, but Saud kept kept it nice and tight in the exit. So you know, it didn't make it that easy enough for him to to just get that undercut. So he decided to go to the outside. But yes, he was so close. Why? All oh, the pressures on you, and Dom. It's Super Cup time, and it's Campos looking for the victory. Dominic oh, Diaz going to try and hang on. The Hotsi runs onto the grass. I think he's got enough here. Unless there's a push to pass to play with. Has Keegan got one more push to pass to use? No. Jason does. And so does Mahotsi. They both go for push to passes to the line to see if they can get there. But they no. stay the same. Very close. But Dominic Diaz, a winner. A race winner in Super there Cup. There you go. First win for Dominic Diaz in Super Cup. That's definitely what he'd love. And a great result. Said, yeah. possibility of two. Possibility of a double victory at Kalami. I mean, what an what interesting season. And what a way to come back. I mean, they exactly. haven't been here for a while. If he gets a double win this doubles. weekend, I mean, he's got to come back for the rest of the series. You, know, you never know what can happen. Exactly. Although you've missed one round, the double victory is a lot of points. Oh, stacking up those points ahead of the Campos boys. I think, as you said, Keegan will still remain at the top of the championship in the Super Cup class. Also, just to mention the fact that the rest of the car is coming through there. Uh, right at the back, didn't see him in race number one, or only saw him once in race number one, but there he comes in race number two, your Masters winner, and that's uh, on every side note for Team Perfect Circle. So he'll take the double on the day for the Masters Championship, just outside of that top 18 overall though, uh, but also getting down, he was hoping just to get down underneath the two minute bracket and uh, shake up some cobwebs so that he preps himself and uh, feels good for the hill climb in three weeks time in Meisner. Daniel Sun, once again, thank you so much, mate. The insight is uh, always good to have you alongside. And uh, of course you bring in the racing aspect that uh, my, my own experience in racing certainly is nowhere near what you've had experienced out there. So a massive thanks to you for joining me for commentary and uh, hopefully we'll see you back at uh, Swatkops yeah, for, for sure. some more time yeah. behind the mic. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, 
Yeah, Yo, nice teamwork, yeah. <laughs> Love it, bro. As, long Love as, it. as much as there's teamwork on the track, there's teamwork on the commentary. So we try. We do yeah, try. We, do, we try, but we've done a great job. I think thank you for having me and thank you uh, for an awesome day. That's been a great day. Thanks, What's Daniel. Son. There you go, Daniel Rowe, who's joined me there for the final oh. bit of Supercars and uh, our uh, Super Cup category as well. Uh, amazing effort there from uh, South African Touring Cars. And congratulations there. Saad Varia are hanging on for the win. And it looks like it's going to be a double on the day, possibly there for Dominic Diaz, as he has wrapped up the second heat and possibly could be getting the first heat after the protest is all sorted. So uh, we've got two more races to go. It's the BMW M Performance Racing Series. And then car well, it's the Triple One Sports and Saloons and GT Sports and Saloons that have still got to come out onto the circuit for their final heat of the day here at Kyle Army. Uh, Brendan Kelly will be joining me shortly. But until then, I think we were the sights and sounds of Kyle Army. And as soon as we've got cars on track, we'll be back with commentary. Paul?
race of the BMW M Performance Racing Series. And uh, cars on track at the moment. A big field, the biggest field of the weekend. Brendan Kelly will be joining me for commentary for hopefully both of the, the last two races. and going to stick around for Triple Ones as well. But Brendan, the first one, we had a couple of uh, little interesting battles that raged all the way through. And with the big mix of cars, of 47 cars on track, you've kind of got classes getting mixed up as well, which of course is going to be an interesting turn of events here. They've waited almost all day long to come back out again. It's been a long wait for the BMWs to come back onto the track, but uh, they're now back out again. And uh, let's see whether or not Bob Neal can see, see if he can keep out uh, Fabio Fedetto for at least Class A. And then it was all about Garbini. But now, remember, you've got an inverted grid. So uh, the top cars will be a little bit further back in each class, which means it could uh, turn things around a little bit for uh, guys that weren't quite there in the first heat. And uh, missing in the mix... Uh is it missing? We just have a look through the number. Uh, the Rarira cars, uh, both of them have uh, had gearbox uh, gearbox failures okay. on both of the cars. So those massively powerful cars, the gearboxes are not not surviving. So they they, as far as I know, they are both out. Um, the Devon Robinson in the in the mix there in the uh, Canary yellow car coming through there now. Uh, nice to see him back behind the behind the wheel of a car. You're actually jumping into Jagger's old car. Correct, yeah. <laughs> that was the car that Jagger Robertson uh, piloted in this class for a while. He's now, as you heard, and uh, really had a chat with him earlier on in the day, decided that single-seaters might be the way that he's uh, looking to take his racing career. So uh, it's been sitting in the big boss stable for a while, and uh, Dev said, listen, he actually said to me, he said, I got the old donkey out, and we're <laughs> going to give it a run. So here they come, through Ingwe for... Uh, the race procedure of course it's a rolling start but with a 47 car field it means that the cars at the back are probably at full race pace by the time the uh, leaders cross the line to start the race and get the official race action underway for BMW in performance racing series it's an eight lapper so we've gone for eight laps of action and down towards turn one getting the whole shot Oof, a little bit out of shape there in for performance BMW just a little bit squirrely there but let's see what uh, Fabio Fedetta can do. And Bob Neal dropping down into third place by the looks of it behind the German. So the Delmont Mining BMW didn't get the start he wanted, that is for sure. The rest of the pack from streaming through Yuxka and Barbecue and up to the top of the hill here. It's a, it's a big climb. Uh, I can tell you if you've ever done 947, you'll know that this is not a small climb, it's a big climb up the hill. It starts to level out as you come over the, the crest there and in towards sunset. And uh, what these cars are going to find is exactly what we're finding here with a bit of glare coming off the boxes outside of our commentary booth. Sunset is in full effect. Uh, absolutely. And uh, just what, an, uh, what, a, what a privilege to see so many uh, top-notch BMWs out on track at the same time. 47 cars out there, inverted grid. Uh, I think we're going to be in for an action-packed eight laps of racing. I love the fact that you say it's a big field of 47. At the M Performance Festival last year, there were 52 cars on the grid. <laughs> so they've, they've got a couple in reserve if yeah. needed, you know? Yeah, well, there's a whole lot in the Eastern Cape that need to come and race up here as well. We need to get those guys hint, hint. up here. <laughs> I hope they're all listening. So. Yeah, so Maria and yourself are going to go down there and uh, convince those boys to come. A couple of the Cape Town boys didn't make it, but of course it is Eid. That's why some of the Muslim drivers didn't make it up here too. Um, the uh, I'm just trying to remember the name of the... the Jar Bunny cars then didn't make it up here unfortunately for this one because of Eid and them celebrating the uh, Muslim holiday so we uh, wish them all the very best but uh, they are certainly missed here this weekend and uh, looking forward to seeing them back in action by the time we get to uh, the next round of uh, BMW and Performance Racing Series uh, taking a walk around the uh, BMW pits and the open pits on the, the top side of the circuit uh, what a mix of cars um, there's some purpose-built uh, race cars absolutely uh, down to the bare minimum and uh, then there's cars that are full instrumentation still in them air conditioning radio in some of the cars as well then they're uh, going out to practice to qualify last night one of the guys went out there and he had the music turned up loud and the air conditioner on and he's that's going out to practice to go. that's the way to go <laughs> love it love it that's the way to go it just it kind of reminds me of uh, uh, the old story with uh, some of the the sports cars that used to race uh, a couple of seasons ago and um, <laughs> of course there was a one in particular it was a GT40 that uh, was uh, finding it a bit hot 
So the driver decided, no, listen, you know what? How much would it cost to put an aircon in? Put the aircon in and used to drive the entire race with aircon on just to enjoy the, the race. He wasn't worried about where he came. Just more importantly, to be comfortable in the race car. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Devin Robinson up into, up into eighth place. He's made up a place already, so he's having a good out in, in the uh, canary yellow BMW that we saw on screen earlier. The car that we mentioned into turn one there, I was trying to pick up uh, the name. It's JP Nokia in that N4 Autocraft car. And uh, he wasn't really in the mix at all in the first race. So they must have done some work between now and uh, the first race earlier on. He's tucked in behind Bob Neal with the German on his tail and Garbini looking for a victory once again um, in his class. But uh, Andreas Mayer is ahead of Carlo Garbini. So uh, as I say that, it's changed up though coming through. So the uh, timing monitor will of course refresh as they cross the line. But I was just watching the German staying ahead of Carlo Garbini is uh, pretty spectacular and then further back we see likes of Rob Gearing, Nishal Singh and Jan Eberstein having little battles Alan Hillegen just behind them and in fact I think Hillegen just got through there and made up one position so throughout this race of uh, eight, six laps or eight laps I should say, we've done two of the, the, uh, the eight now uh, we're going to see some chopping and changing and uh, Devin Robinson now fighting with uh, the diesel powered BMW and having his own little fight there with Gary Martins in that uh, M2 diesel, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just having a look at the left times of all the guys seem to have, uh, they've definitely dropped off the cooler conditions out there, the track conditions. So the guy's running about two seconds a lap slower than uh, what we saw in, in heat number one. But um, it's the same for everybody. So the quickest car out on track at the moment, Bob Neal, a 156.1. So... Uh, the time certainly having, having dropped down. Carlo Cobini still second, followed by JP uh, Nordkia in third place. Now, Nordkia in that in for autocraft car getting a little bit squirrely into turn one as we saw on that first lap. But he's now seemed to settle down and he's up into uh, his third spot overall. We've also got Andreas Mann, Nick Macris and Fabio Fedetto still fighting hard. Remember Fedetto is the second of the Class A cars but he's a little bit further back in sixth place at this stage. And then that uh, BMW diesel power taking on Devin Robertson. Further back, nice to see battles right through the field, of course. And, of course, the battles that have raged in race number one will resume now in race number two because they should have sorted themselves out in terms of where they were. Yeah, Devin Robertson leading Class C, as we said. Uh, and uh, they've actually, he was, he was on the brink of breaking into, into Class B. So they just uh, took a little bit of power away from him to keep him in, in uh, the C class. So... Uh, but uh, leading Class C, Gary Martin's currently second, and uh, Nichel Singh running in third in, in Class C. Uh, Carlo Carbini leading Class A at the moment, uh, second overall. That's what we like to hear. So it's uh, a big fight on. The Delmon Mining BMW leading them out, of course, is Bob Neal. As we watch uh, the Warden's machine coming through there, there's a couple of cars that, of course, are uh, the usual con con contenders in each of their categories. Um, and uh, I would usually have alongside me Nick Herbst for one of the races and the boss man, the, uh, the Portuguese uh, patrolman who looks after all of the cars here in the M Performance Racing Series as part of the BMW Karting Racing Club. And I can tell you, I think uh, he's had a fantastic day in the saddle as well as uh, Bernard de Gavea. Yeah, Nick Herb's running in 26th at the moment, uh, or just the uh, positions have just changed. He's up to 25th and looks like he's about third in uh, Class D at the moment. So a good outing for, for Nicholas Herb's in the 31 car. The German trying to close things down. Doesn't seem to have an answer as he heads up the hill. corbini has got uh, a nice margin over him. So you might have to settle for third overall. And I think that's what he'll probably be looking to do. Having won this championship overall on uh, numerous occasions, he also realizes that sometimes on certain tracks, consistency is more important than uh, taking the podiums. Yeah, chatting to a couple of the drivers, they, and they've given that exact, that exact same feedback, saying, you know, Kyle Army, it's a different circuit. Uh, just one mistake and your, your, comp your lap is completely ruined. So they'll just take, take what they can get uh, coming to this round of the championships. They'll just take what they can get, hope for the, hope for the best, and, and take the car home in one piece. Andy Wadley there in the track taxi, making his way onto the back straight away. A whole bunch of cars behind him that are starting to close down on him. So Wadley's day is not done just yet. He'll be coming through Sunset Corner and experiencing exactly what Sunset is all about. 
as uh, he's into the mix there with uh, a couple of these uh, cars. You mentioned the fact that there's an array of BMWs. It is great to see that, isn't it? Oh, lock up lock into up. turn uh, seven there, clubhouse. Or is it a lock up? It might be a bit of a brake issue there, I think. Uh, definitely so seems to seems to be a problem with that back right. I think that was. Yeah, just watching uh, Devin Robertson in the Class C battle. Uh, he's he's lost two places. Uh, Gary Martins and uh, Nishal Singh having got ahead there. So uh, Robertson having dropped back a little. Singh hits the front. Martins into second. So the diesel beam into second place. Devin, maybe going to try and just get up to the back end of them and put some pressure on into the closing stages. We're at the halfway stage. Four are done. Four to go. Make it three and a half as they get up towards Diakop. Oh, Devin got yeah. some good pace out of yeah, there. Yeah, he's carrying some nice speed through there. Running a completely different line. Whoa, oh, big spinner. Karin Ninoba. Again. That's a second spin through. That's a much bigger one though. And you can see just how out of shape that car got coming to the bottom end of the circuit. And through the kitty litter at the bottom of the mine shaft. So Karin Ninoba's day has gone from bad to worse. A spin in race one. And an even bigger spin here now in race two. And the lap completed. No changes at the front end. Those uh, first nine, ten cars staying the same. Devin Robinson, I think, is the man on the move, though. Let's keep an eye out on his progress. That is the leader right now, the Delmon Mining BMW of uh, Bob Neal. And as I said to you earlier today in the commentary, screen, uh, having to run that car at between 2.30 and 2.35. Can't go over 2.40. Otherwise, the front end starts yeah. to squirrel a bit so he's had to uh, just uh, tap off slightly in terms of his normal pace They're doing an absolutely great job out there running constant uh, constantly in the 155s or consistently in the 155s i mean to say and uh, as our race leader still gobini in second uh, leads leads out class b followed by andreas uh, mayer third overall and second in class b nick mack is just behind them as we watch bob neal through the s's Delmon Mining BMW that's prepped by Fast Developments and if you if you do want to find a car that uh, can run at the front end of particularly this category oh, oh that's that a is one. another massive moment similar situation to what we had earlier on in uh, Class C of the Pay by Volkswagen Challenge 104 is the car that's in question and uh, that's certainly not what uh, you want to be doing Stefano Cavalleri that's uh, Paolo Cavalleri's son He's got it completely out of shape and he's stuck in a very dangerous position. So I would expect either a possibility of a safety car or uh, maybe even red flags in a couple of minutes time once the COC is seen where that car's stuck. I stand by to see which decision the COC makes on that. But uh, as they head down to the S's, Troy Cochran's not even aware of that situation just yet. He's in his own little fight uh, further up there. Cochran, of course, in one of the arrow cars there with Benny Late and Yako Storm Jr. behind him. It's safety car that's been called. There's the SC yeah. board and the yellow flags being waved. So they're going to try and uh, get that car out of harm's way as quickly as possible. Good to see um, Cavalieri out the car, though. It's always a big one and always a nice thing to see that the driver's out and okay. That is a big moment, though. Yeah, they're going to battle to move that car, but the back, uh, the back left uh, wheel has collapsed by the look of things. So... It's going to take a while, possibly have to get the low, uh, the low bed out onto the circuit to get that one out the way. So um, I just wonder if this race will probably finish under, under safety car conditions. Well, we've done six of the eight. There were two to go, which means we would have had enough for, to have the 75% uh, yeah. sorted. So they may stay under safety car, keep them out there. Or are they possibly going to have to maybe red flag it? They might just give them one more lap and then red flag it and say, right, now we've done enough. Sometimes that's the case. It didn't pick up on Bob Neal though, as the lead car. So those cars behind the safety car should be waved through. Um, but of course they realize, I think they've all gone past the situation. So that's why they're just sitting there and saying, well, let's just get the job done. There is the lead car, but seventh in the queue behind the safety car. That is a Toyota Corolla. That is provided by Pretoria Nort, of course, to Swartkops. But of course, the home of Extreme Festival is Swartkops Raceway. And they'll bring their uh, preferred safety car to be part and parcel of the Extreme Festival here at uh, Kyle Army as well. I don't think we're going to see this race 
finish up the, the entire amount of laps that were scheduled here, Brett. Yeah. Just looking looking at the at the marks on the on the track, uh, the tire marks and that, and as you said, it looks like they're very similar to the to the uh, situation we saw earlier on in the uh, Pava VW Challenge, uh, with a car going across and hitting the wall. So, yeah, sad sad way to to end what has been an epic day for these guys. I mean, to have to have such a big field out there, um, it is it's it's been such an honour to be part and parcel of of this. Well, let's wait and see what they do here as they come past and finish up this lap. Uh, we have got some recovery vehicles down there. The medical team are down there as well, just to double check. You see the doc there checking on uh, the driver, making sure he's okay. But as that uh, safety car crosses the line, I can potentially even predict a red flag coming out. I think they just wanted to get one more lap in the bag so they can certify the 75% completed otherwise they may have to restart it and there's definitely not enough time to restart this race well that's one thing we certainly have seen today is some is some, some big ones some yeah. some massive accidents and um yeah, just, i'm trying to think who it was one of the the uh, polo cup drivers said to me so that's one thing about kyle army you see it, yeah. it lends if, itself to big accidents if it's big it's going to happen to yeah. kyle army yeah. that's exactly it so safety car continues on its way at the moment. It's got six cars, one, two, three, four, five cars between itself and Bob Neal, the actual race leader. Carlo Gabini's two cars back from him. And then it's uh, Nick Macris, about two cars back from that. So yeah, I think we are going to finish under safety car, unfortunately. And then we're going to have a little bit of a break to try and get this car recovered and Karin Ninaba's car as well. That shouldn't be too much of an issue, but uh, the Kili Litter here at Kyle Army is pretty thick. So that they're back to get the low slung cars out. I don't think Ninaba's car is too low slung. That uh, box shape E30 of hers. I didn't see the. Oh, Morion didn't make it out this time. So Morion Eminis, the second lady driver in the M Performance Racing Series, didn't make it out for this outing at Kyle Army. Um, I know that she's on quite a tight budget though, so possibilities that uh, she maybe not have enough for the entry fee because the entry fees were substantially bigger but understandably you come into Kyle Army and it is a big day on the circuit as well with uh, the double header of extreme festivals regionals and nationals but, uh, I can tell you something it has been a spectacular day's racing as you said Greg. yeah I mean you, you mentioned the the entry fee but still to to attract 293 uh, competitors uh, certainly certainly takes some doing and uh, you know, just once again, I, I can't stop saying, you know, congratulating Tanya uh, Himan from Swartkorps Raceway enough on, on putting together what has been a really spectacular event and um, it has just been absolutely fantastic to be part of it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened with my part two there. <laughs> Went uh, to the end of part two. Seems to be battling to pick up there. I think we might even go to part three. I don't know. If, did we run out of uh, Facebook again, Paul? Because uh, oh, it doesn't like us. Uh, so I, I think it might have picked up on some of the music in the background that uh, DJ Robbie is picking up. So that's why we've uh, lost the Facebook feed. Apologies for that, but of course we do have a YouTube feed running. So uh, if you missed out on that, uh, you can uh, give us a chance to get back again. Paul's definitely going to try and get a part three up as quickly as possible I thought why have I gone to Formula V's on my screen and then I realized that something must have gone wrong with uh, with the Facebook feed that we've had um, it gives us eight hours which is why we had to go to part two we started so early in the morning but uh, yeah this one unfortunately Brent he's gonna finish under safety car yeah red flags having come out come out so this one done and dusted hmm. Bob Neal taking the win Carlo Cobini second uh, first in class B so that is the end of the BMWs for the day. Just one, one race left. I'm going to shoot away for two seconds and then I will come back and join you for the last race. Oh, awesome. I'm going to do Thank some, you so much, man. Do some media work quickly and then I'll be back to join you for the last race. So there you have it. Brendan Kelly joining me there for the BMW M Performance Racing Series, as he said. A little bit of work to be done for him and then hopefully he'll be back for Triple Ones and the Super Hatch class, which will wrap up the day's racing here at the uh, Bumper Extreme Festival at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. Uh, as you can see, Red Flag is out. That's the BMW M Performance Racing Series brought to a preliminary stop 
due to a big crash there for Mr. Cavallari, who came out of turn 13 a little bit too hot and ended up putting it into the inside wall and outside wall and uh, bringing out the safety car for two laps and then the red flag eventually coming out as well. There you go. That's the car we're talking about. They're going to wave the cars through. And while they do that, we'll take a quick break and get back to you as soon as we've got our Triple One GD Sports and Saloons back on track for the final race of this incredible day at Kailani.
there a reason why we're waiting? Is there something wrong that the race can't start? It's Triple One GD Sports and Saloons and race two of that action coming away shortly. They've had a long wait. It's been a long time since they've been on track. But needless to say, expect big action as always amongst the uh, Class GT, Class A, B, C and D. And uh, I think we're going to see some uh, a couple of turnarounds here. Okay. Uh, particularly I think in Class A. Mal Spur wasn't too happy about being clipped right at the end by uh, Lucas Besaid note. And I think we may also see some action in the Super Hatch category with uh, Jonathan Detroit taking the first victory. But uh, a couple of uh, the contenders in Super Hatch definitely looking to come into the mix for the final race of the day now. As they get ready to rock and roll, it is uh, a rolling start, of course, for these cars. So that Pretoria North Toyota will pull just to the sideline and into pit lane before we get into the uh, start procedure. The reason we are running a little bit later than what was scheduled, of course, is because of a big crash in the BMW class just before this. So Leonard Archer in his ACD BMW lines up alongside George Economides in the Wealth Avenue Martini Racing Golf 1. It's International Race Supplies BMW of Derby Willifu who will be behind that as the lights go out. And we go into the final couple of laps of race action here. This incredible bumper day at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit for the Extreme Festival of National and Regional Championships all combined. Heading down into turn one, you can see them all just starting to sort out. What you're going to do is probably find that a couple of guys and girls in this class are not going to push it to the limit now. They know conditions have changed dramatically um, compared to when they were out earlier on. And there are sections where they are completely in shade and there are sections where there is completely sunshine as well. So what happens with that is you get uh, changeable conditions in terms of the track temperatures provided. And uh, of course that also changes up your strategy in how you want to try and uh, fight and fend for positions. Sometimes discretion could be the better part of valor by the time we get into a race stage like this. And of course, Sunset, the infamous corner here at Kyle Army, will catch a couple of drivers out if they haven't got uh, tinted visors or at least uh, some sunglasses on. But the problem that you have with that though is when you get into the shade like here in the S's and down into the bowl and into the uh, main straightaway, your visibility of course changes up dramatically once again into the shade so uh, ooh, late braking coming out of the Subaru there Charlie Folds just getting it a little bit out of shape and uh, getting around the outside of the Porsche there and I can tell you something uh, Philip Mayer probably not too happy about that the uh, people Porsche having to uh, just take a slightly different line into Leo Kopp due to the fact that he saw in his rearview mirrors the uh, Subaru getting a little bit uh, wayward inside line also coming from uh, further back in the pack as they start to sort themselves out now and uh, get into their usual positions of uh, fighting you can see that is the Wayne Lobotsky in the Shield Golf he's ahead now of Pete Portita similar to what we saw in race number one and right behind him is Jonathan Detoy 
Mal leads out in Class A. She's got uh, Lucas Poseidon closing her down in the uh, Lexus out of Pretoria no Toyota. Behind him it should be Lindsay Kluwer and is. So Lindsay Kluwer resumes position there for uh, the Class A battle. Lobotsky, Wayne Robb, Pete Portita and Mike Krobler with Charles Vayers at this stage just tucked in behind that. Vayers in the, the Opal behind Vayers of course is the second of the Porsches of Chris Smith as they head down towards turn one again and complete the first lap of six here. So a six lap race just going to be sorting things out here to finalise the day's racing. Subaru looks a little bit out of shape I'm going to tell you. Not like it was earlier on. Portikita's found a way through there. And puts the Polo just up ahead. And, uh, in fact, the, sorry, the Golf, not the Polo. Getting ahead there of the Golf 1 of Wayne Nabochki. So keep an eye on that. Look out for Charlie Folds as I see closing down now on that Porsche. And looking for a way through. He's uh, definitely got some smoke coming out of the back of that car. So it's not 100% correct on that uh, setup for, for Kyle Lamy, I would say. Which is why I think Philip Bayer wanted to get ahead of him as quickly as possible in that uh, 944. Well, it's actually the 924R. It's not the 944, I beg your pardon. And then uh, coming up onto uh, breaking point for the top of the hill, the Subaru closes him down. Triple five out of shape and uh, off the circuit completely. So uh, some problems there for the second of the Subarus. It's definitely not the way that uh, that car wanted to finish up, I'm sure. Ron Miller, I think, is at the wheel of that machine. So, uh, didn't go quite according to plan there for the second one. That is now Vota getting through. Pit Portkita falling by the wayside. Looks like there might be a bit of an issue there on Portkita's car. So, he's dropped uh, out of the top 10 and even out of the top 15 by the looks of things. <coughs> yeah, there we go. Ron Miller, triple five in the Subaru with uh, a little bit of issues there on that car on the sideline. Mal Spur is starting to uh, now get away from the initial charge that was being given to her by um, Lucas Poseidon Note and thinks she wants to get away and get the job done early so she doesn't have to worry about Poseidon Note in the latter part of the day's racing. 75X car coming through there as well just making a move on the inside of Ishmael Beloy. Here's Carl Watt. And further back, Super Hatch competitors all in the mix there some fun and games amongst the class D and C competitors of Triple Ones. So remember you've got Triple One Sports and Saloons. The birthplace of that of course was at Swartkops and the Triple One meaning a 1 minute 11 around Swartkops. If you were faster than that then you were not able to participate in Triple One Sports and Saloons until they decided to introduce the GT side of that category. And the GT Sports and Saloons of course are allowed to run slightly higher lap times at Swartkops. And they get adjusted at every circuit we go to, depending on how they qualify. So adjustments on those times, according to sort of the breakout times that are allowed at SWAT Cups, are done at each circuit when these cars go to race at other circuits other than the one we're at today. So seeing a little bit of a battle starting to rage there in that mid-pack with the Stringer, Didi Machila, Carl Watt and Ishmael Beloy. Lindsay Kluwer closing down onto the back end of Lucas Poseidon. Poseidon notes Lexus doesn't seem to have the same amount of straight line speed as it did in the first heat. Krobler closing in just in the background as well on Jonathan Detoy. Keep an eye on that one. Vayers goes through and it's Detoy. And it looks like Vayers might be hanging on to the lead of Super Hatch at this point in time as well. If I've got that right. So uh, nice little fight right the way through. But uh, Economides is the man to beat at this stage right out front and uh, controlling things from that front end ahead of Leonard Archer. Here we go. Jono under a bit of pressure from Krubler. Trying to close down on Vayers and on Lobotsky. Portkita is still circulating but uh, right at the back of the pack and about to be caught and passed by the two leaders. So we spoke about sunset being a bit of an issue. Looks like uh, Barbecue and Yuxke also might have a bit of a sunset issue there come out of turn one Crowthorn and go into barbecue. You can see the sun also affecting the drivers there ever so slightly. Carl Spur with her lights on just to warn any slower cars that she'll be coming up for Class A's win potentially. He's got a nice margin over Besaid Note and Besaid Note has as I said dropped back into the clutches 
of Lindsay Kluwer. So Kluwer might be able to help out in terms of the Golf Battle versus the uh, Lexus Battle. Speaking of Toyotas, there's the second one behind Votarus. That's uh, Carl Stoltz. And uh, he's trying to get uh, a little bit closer to Votarus at this point. If he's able to do anything about that, that's what he'll definitely be trying to do, is to find a way past on Voti and uh, spoil his day ever so slightly. Jaden Kluwer is just behind that in the X53 machine. And then you've got Mark Detoy, uh, one of the super hatch competitors for cars as well, just ahead of Set and Naidu. So, uh, interesting uh, spread of cars here amongst these categories. Remember, it's Triple One Sports and Saloons, which are classes A to D. You've got class A, B, and C in Super Hatch, but mainly class A competitors in the Super Hatch class today. And then you've got the GT Sports and Saloons out front, and there is only two of them participating today, as we've uh, lost a couple. In fact, make it, uh, sorry, there's five of them, not two of them because I uh, also mentioned Philip Mayer, Darby Olifier and Charlie Fault in that category. So your first five cars on track come out of the GT class. Class A's leader is Miles Spur, Class A second place is Mercedes Note and third is Lindsay Kluwer. Wayne Nabotchki will lead out Class B. Charles Vaz I think is hanging on for at this point the lead of uh, Super Hatch. Now coming into the mix into there as well is Wayne Robb in the Ford Focus. So he's also thrown in a bit of a cat amongst the pigeons there. Four laps completed. We're going to complete lap five and start the final one right now. So coming down into the closing stages here. Players we get through on the watch key. Maybe we just spoil his day a little bit. So in fact, in fact no, one, two, lap four of six are bigger part because I'm looking at that lap. Those guys going across the line and not realizing the leaders already crossed the line earlier on. So it's Economides on his penultimate lap. Distance there, 2.6 seconds to Leonard Archer in the ACD Valcom BMW. <coughs> As they get into the S's for that uh, second last time. Tough car to beat is this uh, Economides Golf. Got a real great turn of pace and uh, of course as a season campaigner behind the wheel in f many formats of uh, racing is George Economides. To Express Jetta further back in that pack. Fight on between those categories as well. Wilson ahead of the Porsche. So Smith behind him, then it's Mark Toy. He's in the BMW, remember? It's the uh, one series. Mark Detoy, it's Setonadu, Jonathan Fisser, Quintus Villun, and the Bat Lady. We'll fight things out there for uh, the top 20. Probler's got through ahead of Jonathan Detoy. He's now set his sights onto the shield golf of Wayne Lobotchki. That's the difference between Mal Spur in the lead of Class A and Lucas Poseidonote in second. Poseidon note slowing up here, and Lindsay Kluwer going to have a look and see if he can find a way past. Has Poseidon not got enough in hand here to maybe hang on for the next lap in two corners? Or are we going to see a possibility of, uh, as I said, Wayne Robb joining the party? Spoiling the day possibly for a couple of those competitors. Charlie Folds looks like he might be caught in pasture by Mel, uh, and is. Subaru pulling to the sideline and slowing up dramatically across the line as they start the final lap. So blue flags waving frantically to warn the cars coming from behind that there is a slow car on circuit. I'm also just telling them that, uh, well the blue flags are telling the faster cars, or the slower cars that the faster cars are coming. So that was Charlie Fogg getting that blue flag. They'll, they'll probably warn the rest of the pack of those cars that uh, that Subaru has had a problem and has got some problems of its own. Top of the hill for the final time there for Economides. Peels into Leokop. And that's the perfect line for Leokop. Followed by Leonard Archer. Big gap down to Philip Mayer. Uh, 10 seconds to Mayer in third. Kind of been a two-way fight in this category, but uh, not really any answer from Archer or uh, in the first race from Philip Mayer. 
to the pace of this uh, GT leader. Triple One GT Sports and Saloons. Two corners to go. And Economy is going to wrap it all up for this second heat of the day. Let's see those practice sliding up as well. Maybe we don't have a couple more laps out there. To see them starting to heat up and go red under braking. No worries at all now. He can hit the brakes and pull them down as he heads back to pit lane. Second place for Leonard Archer, third place for Philip Mayer. And a great run there from Mayer as uh, he comes through. Oh, Michael Krobler with some problems having to reverse into the uh, safety of that zone. Looks like he might have had a coming together there. I wonder if it was with uh, Wayne Lobotsky because he was fighting hard there with Lobotsky in the closing stages. It's uh, Mal Spur who's come through for the winning class, eh? Lucas Poseidon it looks like he's been able to just hang on for a second and keep Lindsay Kluwer behind him. Let's wait and see as they come to the line now. There is Mal. Lobotsky still on track. And the rest of the pack there. There's Voti coming down as well. The second of the car care clinic polos. That's the polo as opposed to the golf. Coral Stoltz behind him. Freya is heading to the line as well. So this is going to wrap things up here for our coverage, of course, of this bumper day here at Carl Army Grand Prix Circuit. So he's crosses the line. He's going to finish up in 14th overall. Carl Stoltz behind him and then Jalen Person not too far behind that. In fact, it's Chris Smith who's got crew on person right in the closing stages. So as we see the cars rolling back into pit lane, that will wrap up our coverage here of the Extreme Festival Bumper Race Day here at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. National Championship and Regional Championships. 13 classes and 293 competitors participating at a record-breaking event at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit for the Extreme Festival. Massive shout-outs got to go to the Kyle Army and Marshall Ding team. The medical team today, they were called into action on numerous occasions and as always did an admirable job to keep us on track and uh, keep us almost on time all the way through the day's racing. Also a shout out to the race control and of course probably the biggest shout out must go to Tanya and her team from Extreme Festival for the incredible job they've done to ensure that we can come here to Kyle Army and participate at the Kyle Army Grand Prix circuit in a race day like we've had today. The entire team behind uh, the uh, Extreme Festival, of course, will be moving to the home circuit in a couple of weekends' time as we go back to Swatkops for round three of uh, the uh, national championships and, of course, uh, regional championships heading to Red Star Raceway for their next round. But, uh, we, of course, we'll be bringing you all of that action in the very near future. Uh, from our side, a massive thanks to Dave Peterson and to uh, Paul Bedford for the direction in the, the, the studio today. Joining me in commentary was Brendan Kelly. Great to have Motormouth with me. And Daniel Sun came and joined me as, along with Rion Esterhazen from uh, Toyota. It's great to have those guys alongside and get the insight that they can bring to uh, the motorsport aspect and uh, a great day's racing that we've had here at Kyle Army. And then, of course, to our camera crew and uh, the, scene, the, the team behind the scenes that make the live stream possible. We can't do it without them. So uh, a big thanks to all of those guys that were out on track giving you all of the race action. To the friends, fans, and family of Extreme Festival, thank you so much for your support all day long. We do appreciate all that support, and we want to see more of you at the circuit. But uh, we also want to see the amount of effort that's put in on our social media being appreciated by you guys all around the world. So from Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit, on behalf of the team here of Two Wheels TV and up to 60 seconds from the voice of choice, Greg Maloney. Take care then. Bye-bye now. My pleasure, brother. Are we done, Paulie? Paul's still wrapping up. We're not done yet. <laughs> we had to go to part three, Paul.